the Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. Depending upon when you started counting years, this show begins now. Yeah. YouTube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. Can't thank you all enough. I assume the comment section should be fantastic today because we have a slew of guests. Ooh. Hashtag J New J Glazer in about 10 minutes. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. I think he's down at, um, I think he's at Strahan's birthday celebration that is currently in a Caribbean island. Oh, that's okay. Diesel. Yeah. And who's who? I think Strahan has hey, turned 50, maybe. I, don't know, I think he's, would he be 50? Uh, that's yeah, right about. Right, probably. So it's a big one. It's, it's one of the big ones. So he, he wouldn't be 60. He's definitely older definitely than not. 40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's 50. So, 50. so it's probably the 50th celebration is happening yep, down true. there. Jay Glazer's calling in. He's got a book coming out January 25th, I guess, called Unbreakable. And also, he knew to OBJ was guiding this ship the entire time it was going to end up in the Rams. What else can we potentially look forward to or know about? Hashtag Jay New is always known. He joins us. Chuck Pagano obviously joins us in the second hour to coach us up on all the situations happening around the NFL and coaches, seats, and a vision from a guy that's actually been there and had to deal with the entire onslaught of bullshit that is an NFL season for the head coach of NFL teams. LaShawn McCoy Ooh, will join hey. us. Okay. Yeah. Hey, he, he joined us uh, one time previously. Great conversation. Uh-huh. Great. I'm a big LaShawn McCoy fan. Can't wait to chat with him about all things happening in his world. How about the Buccaneers, Shady? What do you think's Ooh. going on down there? He was in that locker room. He was also in the Chiefs locker room yeah. Yeah. a couple years ago. His records and numbers speak for themselves. An absolute superstar on the field. Can't wait to chat with him. And then Jordan Poyer will also join us. Whoa. Okay, another Four. friend of the program. That's a lot of people. Jordan Poyer, great conversation. He uh, he talked to us about his life and the decisions he made in his personal life and how the football life's gotten better. And now he plays for the Bills, obviously. Mm-hmm. Colts going in Buffalo to beat the fuck Whoa. out of them this week. Whoa. Potentially the best safety tandem in the league. Legit. And he flies around and hits the hell out of people. Yeah. Public He's a great out. conversation yet on the field. Perhaps. Bet. Bet. But what if he makes a massive play and then just like dances on my grave in there? No, nah, not with Jonathan Taylor. In yeah, by the way, Jonathan Taylor, he, he, I'm going to ask him if he even knows what he's getting into with Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, have you, have you just had like maybe a, a cow that runs a 4-4 run into your face <laughs> mm-hmm. this week? Is that what old Sean McDermott's got you guys doing on the defensive side to prepare for Jonathan Taylor? Can't wait to talk about That's, by the way, massive game of the weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah. Colts, Bills is huge. Colts are hot. Bills have found themselves after potentially disappearing there against Jacksonville. What happened? We'll ask Jordan. They're always an incredible. I really enjoy this Bills team. Yeah. yeah. The way they go about their business, the way they act, the way they handle it. I really like the way this Bills team has been constructed from old Bean and McDermott and the patience and everything like that. I hate to break to you, boys. Old Frank Reich and Jonathan Taylor got some things to say. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I, and this can't, because Hard Knocks is tonight. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. And it's the Colts in season Hard Knocks. Uh-huh. And I think they're potentially sending me over a clip that we can run on this. Really? Ooh. Oh, nice. I think. I don't know. Sneak I, preview. So yeah. I got a text from somebody at HBO and was like, hey, Pat, insert name here from Hard Knocks. We have a clip that we have cut specifically for you and your show, if you wouldn't mind running it, to preview tonight's Hard Knocks or whatever. And I was like, very nice of you. How the fuck did you get my number? Yeah. Sure. (laughs) Fair 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 question. (laughs) I would like to know who is potentially, and uh, I was explained that the way it went about is a good friend of mine in the building. Uh You know, so all of my friends that work in a building still, whether it's the equipment staff, the athletic training staff, the marketing people, the sales people, the people that I've known for a long time that are cooks, like the people that 
They said that this Hard Knocks crew is like the nicest crew of all time. Really? Wow. Yeah, they, they said it, incredible to work with. They understand that there's probably a lot of hesitancy from the teams because they've mm -hmm. been there, done that for so long because it's so much secrecy. Like the amount of, in NFL films obviously owns it. So it's the league is ultimately in charge of what goes out and what doesn't go out. But you got to remember teams thought that planes flying too low were potentially other teams trying to scout and yeah. steal mm -hmm. information. That is how competitive and and those are things that would be done by teams, by the way, to try to get a little bit of intel on a team to potentially beat them because there's billions and billions of dollars at play. So you can't think that billionaires won't be able to do anything they possibly can do to get an edge. Which leads me to the New England Patriots. Hell yeah. Okay. And the reason why I tell that story is because when I was young in the NFL, my first couple years, I was standing on the sideline like this during a training camp practice, and it was an open practice, so there was fans there. And uh, I don't remember if it was in Terre Haute or Anderson, depending upon which training camp location it was, but it was hot as hell. And there was a bunch of fans there, and it was like, shout out to you guys coming and watching. It was a walkthrough period, maybe. I don't uh, even know. Damn. I, I don't know how anybody does it, but Peyton's on the team, so right. you're getting a chance to watch Peyton Manning do what he does. There was a conversation happening right behind me by Bill Polian in a couple, Bill Polian, general Hall of Fame general manager, mm -hmm. where he and somebody else, and I don't remember if it was Bill that broached the subject or somebody to Bill broached the subject. And if if they did that, that means that they felt comfortable enough to tell Bill this, and, and maybe Bill Polian thought this could be real. They thought there was a New England scout in the crowd documenting the practice. Mm, might have been. In, in which, by the way. Checks out might have been oh, yeah. and it might not have just been new england by the way at that point colts in new england were going at it at tom payton i was at the tail end of that thing it was a big storyline so i think new england was just the natural team to potentially put that on but they're not the only squad that would potentially do that so hard knocks coming into a building and say hey we're gonna film everything yeah, your, your team meetings, your discussions about who you're going to cut, who you're going to keep, uh, trade talks. We're going to get all the intel that could potentially, if lands in somebody else's hands, fuck you over outright. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. So there's a lot of trust. So I think the crew that has to go in there, and I think a lot of the camera is like a big brother situation yeah. where it's just some PTZs that are being controlled from somewhere else. But all those people have to have the trust of every everybody in the building. I think it's a real good relationship, and I haven't heard a single bad thing from any of the people at the Colts about it. Who knows how the show's going to go? Because if it's at the beginning of the season, this team stunk. Uh-huh. And if it's at the current time, yeah. this team is wildly hot right now. And I know Actually, like in a lot of the promos, they've showed the win over San Francisco. So I'm wondering if tonight's episode will, will go. Because I, I think they were there at the start of the season, right? Like they were might, filming a bunch of stuff. Right, so it might cover like the first five or six weeks of the season. Who knows? Colts hey. are actually kind of the perfect team for it. Because I don't think you want to see a team that's fucking terrible. And I don't know if you want to see a team that's just... Casually just rolling through the season, like which, by the way, this year nobody. Correct. You know, so anybody would have got it. But you're right. There's there's a real uh -huh. Hollywood type yeah. run that is happening because if you look at the Colts in training camp, everybody was hurt. Yep. Brand new team, new quarterback. Yep. Weren't able to gel. And I mean, I guess this is hindsight looking back because we were riding the wave of them being one and four too. And I was thinking to myself into this microphone every single day, like this roster is very fucking good. Yeah. This team is, why are they losing? And it got hot in the streets for Chris Boward and Frank Reich. I mean, it got hot. So much so that even Jim was being asked about it. Ursa as he's touring around this whole thing. If they caught all that on camera and then this team is doing what they're doing right now, and a superstar like Jonathan Taylor is about to be thrusted into the national spotlight even more so than he was when he was at Wisconsin or whatever, I think it could be the perfect story. To your point, Tone Diggs, it could be the great team. But how will this story end? TBD. Ooh. Speaking of TB, as opposed to just TBD, TB12 story, mm -hmm. I completely forgot how this thing began. Got a chance to watch Man in the Arena last night on ESPN+. Plus. I guess it wasn't supposed to go live until 9, but they accidentally put it live at midnight last night. So we could have oh. watched it before yesterday's show. Oh, damn it. Oh, nice. yeah, I, I, think we, I think we could. I did not know that either. I actually got a call from Connor, and Connor said, hey, it's up on ESPN Plus right now. And I think Connor might have done a little searching around on the internet to find out it's been up since midnight yeah. last night or whatever. So maybe ESPN Plus did that on purpose. Like, hey, let's just go ahead and get this out here whenever you want to get it. I was incredibly impressed with the way it's going to be done, I think. Now, mocking the... Um, 
like the still shot, the still frame that they used for the man in the arena. And then they had that guy who was presented by yeah. Under Armour, mm -hmm. whatever that photo. It is just a still shot of a motion graphic. That is why Tom looks that way. So that was Makes interesting sense. that that is what they chose to have. Yeah, be the title, you know, picture, basically the face of it all. But that story, I did not remember and obviously i was very young 14 13 years old i lived in pittsburgh a city that hated new england just yeah. like every other city basically that had to play against new england on a regular basis or got in the way there i thought drew bledsoe died okay mm -hmm. on the field which that shot looking at it again i mean that was a square awkward yeah. shot oh, yeah. i mean just absolutely crushed i thought in my head drew bledsoe dies Tom Brady comes in, wins that game, and, and never looks back. Yeah. I had no idea that Drew Bledsoe had to come back in like five, six weeks. He had the internal bleeding, and then he gets his all uh, gets all the way back. He's a hundred and three million dollar quarterback for the New England Patriots, the future of the New England Patriots, the highest paid quarterback in the NFL at that time. Yeah. And then Bill Belichick's like, "Nah, I'm gonna stick with Tom Brady, who has not done that great, by the way. He won yeah. a couple games, mm -hmm. lost a couple games. It wasn't like that. Bill Belichick made a decision to go with the young guy as opposed to the person that they just paid the biggest. I didn't know that happened. If that was happening in the middle of this social media world that we're in Ooh. it would have been so absurd the wow. things that are being said because i think bill belichick would have been buried for picking tom over uh -huh. drew bledsoe oh, especially yeah. when drew bledsoe came back in in relief of tom in the afc championship game <laughs> wins them that game and then the super bowl two weeks later tom is he healthy his ankle is he healthy it wasn't until tuesday night of super bowl week that they found out who was the starting fucking quarterback mm -hmm. for a super bowl team it was insane now i thought the way they covered it vinatieri obviously hit wow two of the best balls in the history of football in that particular yeah. season. I mean, the snow game, and then obviously the Super Bowl winner. But taking a dive back into that whole story, I didn't remember it like that at all. I did not know how that was. That's insane to think about. And I, I assume that's why Bill Belichick forever thought, hey, Tommy, Remember what I did for you 25 years ago. You remember. You shut the fuck up, all right? I make the right decisions around here. You just play. You could see how that maybe became the way that relationship was built because the amount of faith that Bill had in Tom in that year, that I guess it was his second year in the yeah. league or third year in the league out of Michigan, insane. What were your thoughts as a Patriots fan? I mean, as a Patriots fan, it was unbelievable, obviously. I mean, that's just Pat's porn, and it's going to be for the first probably eight episodes till Tampa. Watching the game and how it was played then, like that hit on Bledsoe, it was so much better. And granted, probably safety-wise, it wasn't. Yeah, but not as hits, healthy future. Of course, right? yeah. well, but the hits that they were showing were unbelievable. Slow, that, by the way. Yeah, very slow. And also, I thought it was... I don't remember this either, but his first game being against the Colts and Peyton Manning, Brady's first starting first start, game, yeah. yeah, which was insane. And Parcells goes to the Super Bowl and then leaves. Could you imagine that today yeah, too? Yeah, and they were talking about this is probably his last game. He's going to go coach <laughs> yeah. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. it, it, like completely different time. And also even the little things. Um, Patriots are playing the Falcons, uh -huh. and they were showing the ball the entire top – of the stadium was empty. Oh yeah, Gillette. The entire top of the stadium was no. It was in Atlanta. In Atlanta, it, it, it was but in Atlanta. The Gillette Stadium. But then also, into, there was empty seats everywhere, and yeah. I'm like, the NFL has to watch this and think we have come so far <laughs> yeah. business wise. We have captivated the world. Twenty two and a half million people allegedly watched the Seattle Seahawks mm -hmm. Packers game right. on Sunday. I wonder what those numbers were back in the day. The, the game, the NFL has just evolved so much, and there's been one person. That has been through it all. Oh, yeah. And I'm still fucking doing it. Yeah. It's literally how Unreal. episode one ended last night was Tom Brady saying, yeah, it's been crazy and I'm still fucking doing it. And then going in the next one. It's I think it's going to be amazing. Tone, yesterday you said you don't want to watch it because you don't want to like Tom. Yeah. Did you watch it? And do you like Tom? I'm a big uh, let other people watch first and then tell me if I should watch it. So I'll watch it now because you guys said it was good. Hey, it's going to be hard not to love him. He does yeah. seem to come from like the classic rich white uh -huh. family. Uh -huh. But uh, the hard work. 
like the backup in the dream and the team, the team, the team mantra that he has. And, you know, whenever in the, we've seen these interviews in the past, but there's a lot from him as a younger person, like oh, high yeah. schooler. Him saying, I, have, I think I have a pretty good work ethic, so that'll be good or whatever. Yeah, I need and it's to get like, faster. Hey, you don't. I need to get faster. That <laughs> needs to happen. But I think you will like him a lot more. And that seems to happen anytime you learn something about somebody. Well, my, my question is, because I don't remember exactly at the time, was it Bill who paid Drew? Or was Drew paid by somebody else, and then this was an opportunity for Bill to be like... So, Bill was a part of the team. Yeah. Bill Belichick was a part of the team. He was the defense coordinator, the secondaries coach, or something like that. And Parcells was the head yeah. coach. And I think Parcells' era paid Drew. Gotcha. Then Pete Carroll was in between, uh -huh. and he was terrible, I guess, for two yeah. years. And then Belichick comes in, and now he's the guy. So I think he was still a part of the Drew. Mm -hmm. Joining us now is probably a man who does know the answers to these questions, because hashtag Jay hey. New. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who has a book coming out on January 25th called Unbreakable, uh, who has been you know, a leader in the conversation about mental health and not being a stigma. Uh, NFL Fox Senior Insider. Jay Glazer. Yeah. What's up, dude? Wait, when did I get the title of Senior Insider? That's that's new. I had no idea. <laughs> well, I didn't know either, but I know at other places they try to throw around those words to make people feel better. I just want to let people know. You don't need titles. Who it, gives a shit? titles hey I, I agree by the way i completely agree where are you this is this your house is this stray hands house this is beautiful no, i'm in north dakota yeah yeah i bet <laughs> yeah yeah i bet stray hands 50th we decided i'm like where do you want to go take you anywhere in the world you want to go being the best friend that i am he's like man i really really love north dakota <laughs> in november i'm like done so I gave an all expense paid trip here to North Dakota. Yeah, well, North Dakota is beautiful. I mean, it created uh, Carson Wentz, who's an absolute <laughs> superstar. Uh, Strahan's 50th, I assume. Is it a who's who down there? Is it a bunch of stars? And how how did the no. relationship – hold on, Joe. The, how did the relationship between you and Strahan start? Because I think the whole world knows, like, hey, Jay and Strahan are boys. How did it start, and how long has that been? That's a very close friendship, I assume. Very first week ever on our – Every sorry about that. Very short first week ever on our jobs, 1993. Uh, I was covering the Giants. He signed with the Giants. And by the way, he signs with the Giants. He's from Germany, and he gets drafted to pretty much replace Lawrence Taylor. And LT still on the team. <laughs> Not a really good thing. And you know, for me, man, I had um, this was the mecca, and the reporters and I didn't really get along that well. I know it's probably hard to imagine that. Um, and then Michael, again, he was there trying to replace LT. So kind of no one talked to me. Nobody really talked to him. And we're like, hey, we're both morons. We just kind of, you know, latched on each other. But this was literally July of 1993. And, um, man, if someone, if a Hollywood script writer wanted to write our write our, our story, right, Michael's like whole thing with his Hall of Fame was, you know, in – Probable, but not impossible. If we went to a Hollywood scriptwriter and said, hey, yeah, this man, he's going to become a Hall of Famer. I'm going to become this NFL insider. I'm going to become a freaking actor. He's going to become a uh, the king of daytime TV. I'm going to train players in MMA. They would get laughed out of the room. Like, There's no way this could happen. You know, it's almost as crazy as, um, I guess, uh, you know, Matt Damon, you know, solving all the problems on the board and uh oh <laughs> yeah, 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 about, yeah yeah good will hunting by the way hey yeah. hey will yeah. hunting was very good yeah. at what he did oh yeah will, will hunting had a big brain but it is it's an improbable story that has created massive amounts of success you guys are thicker than thieves and i know you're a big uh advocate for mental health and yep. not being scared to speak about it is michael strahan one of your tag team partners in that thing i'd assume the bro man seems to be like as tight as anybody in the history of friends yeah so here, here's the, the crazy part and look i owe michael man i owe him everything as far as he you've been around me for a while he validated me early on uh when i came in that giant locker room I'm like man how could i be different like how could i be different than everybody else like i'm, I'm not going to use my pen as a weapon i'm going to start relationships and i will be the last dude standing here i will outwork everybody by not a little by by a lot yeah and he validated me to players and coaches like hey this dude's crazy but he's loyal as hell you could trust him so without him i wouldn't be where i am and conversely he's leaned on me for a bunch of stuff over the years also but it's been perfect but it's so funny man um when i did the the lane johnson interview a couple weeks ago 
that Friday, I had uh, a mental health breakdown about three o'clock in the morning. It woke me up, which doesn't happen often. And it woke me up with this feeling of dread and doom, like, man, like my world is just coming to an end. And I don't dictate the rules of this thing. You know, I just fight back against it. And I just want to be a voice that gets other people to understand whether you're successful, whether you're not successful, whether you're this, whether you're that. We all deal with it. And um, I was supposed to go to dinner with Michael that night and called him. And I said, hey, dude, I can't go to dinner. He said, why? I said, man, this thing has kicked my ass, bro. I'm just man, I'm just, I'm just wiped out. I just need to get to bed. And he said, um, you want me to come over and talk about it? I said, no. And then he said, why have you never talked to me about it? So this guy's been my best friend for 30 years. Uh-huh. And I never, ever, ever in 30 years went to him until two weeks ago and said, hey, I'm having a bad day. I'm struggling. And he's like, why haven't you talked to me about it? And I said, I don't make the rules of this thing. Do you think, like, hey, Jay, do you think it's because you... It's crazy. Jay, do you think it's because you never wanted to bring him down, right? Because you're good vibes, you're good energy, you didn't want to bring it into anybody else, but that's kind of the entire mission statement, right? Like, it's not a yeah. stigma. It, well, but here's the thing. Had I... Had I, had I, you know, think then the way I do now, I would have had... I want to get emotional here, but I would have had somebody for 30 years, my best friend... I could have turned him for 30 years going, hey, man, I'm struggling today. Hey, man, I'm going through this today. Hey, I'm doing this. And I had somebody right by my side for 30 years, and I never said anything. And that's, unfortunately, the shame that this thing brings on you. And one of the reasons I wrote the book, to show everybody there's no shame. Like, I'm fucked up, but I'm good with my fucked upness now. And in order to get to where we are, man, we've got to be good with it. And you got to tell, like, your people. you got to tell your best friends. you got to tell your family. And now, like, man, his reaction to me that day was, can I come over? That's awesome. You want to talk about it. You want something to do. And he was like, why have you never told me? And I don't, I don't know why, man. I, I, yeah. <laughs> you see me get choked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, like, it's awesome. Damn, there was a lot of pain all those years. I wish I did. I wish I did. And now he's there for me. We talk about it. And, you know, some of those guys, like Howie Long, that's the guy I lean on. He, because, you know, Howie got that darkness. It's made him who he is. All of us. You, to get to everybody. The you, hey, out, listen, yeah, you got what, that darkness. That's what I was about to say to you is you said you're like, I'm fucked up. I'm okay with my fucked upness. It's like everybody's fucked up, though. Like, And I think yeah. that is the thing that you are trying to put a spotlight on is don't be scared. Don't feel shame. Do your thing. I'm happy that Strahan is as cool of a dude as we all assumed he was. And I'm happy yeah. to hear that you feel comfort in chit-chatting with him. And by the way, thanks for being a face for this. You're affecting a lot of people's thoughts and change. Uh, and it's good for the world, Jay. So, hey, I good on you, Jay. 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 I appreciate it, gang. It's a hard world, man. You know, we're all comparing ourselves to everybody else's filtered fraction of a second these days on Instagram and Facebook. So we all feel left out. We feel shittier. We see so much hate on Twitter. Like, man, the human condition is not meant to go through all this. So as long as we got a team, we can walk this walk together with, with all of us. And that's what this book is. I'm like, I'm trying to round up all of us crazies together. And everybody who's going through something and fight back is like, I'm tired of this thing kicking my ass over the years. I'm ready to fight this thing back. Like, fuck this thing. I'm going to go back and beat the gray now with everybody else. That's awesome, Jay. Uh, how many pages is that book? Um, well, I talk about my depression and my anxiety and my ADD, so fuck, I don't remember. <laughs> 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 ah, I can't wait to check it out. January but I will 25th. tell you this. I tackle the hard shit. Man, you'll laugh your ass off. Like, I, I, I write the way I, I speak. Um, I'm out there, but, man, it's funny as shit. Some of the stuff I'll tell you guys in there, you will laugh your ass off, man. It's 224 pages. I was just told in the by uh, Zito. That's an incredible penmanship. Congratulations. Can't wait and to read I got, it. And The Rock wrote the forward for me, which is like, yes. hell yeah. Oh, oh, which is incredible. Oh, and, yes. and, you know, to his credit, too, he's like, Jay, man, this message is too important. And, you know, we talked about it. He's like, man, everybody gets mad when you do one forward for somebody and not for somebody else. But he's like, dude, this is too important. Your what do you call him? For this. What do you call him? Do you call him DJ, Dwayne, Dewey, The Rock? Oh, we call each other a lot of shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to read it. I appreciate you uh, sharing that message with the world. Hell yeah. It's going to help a lot of people. It's awesome. Also, small ego art. We got a painting in the office. It oh, is, you did? Yeah, it's beautiful. We bought it. It's beautiful. I mean, it is really awesome. I'm Isn't not a big, incredible? Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big art guy, but Good it is for awesome. You, man. Yeah, it's cool, man. Good for you. Thank you for, you That's know. That's awesome, man. Yeah, John Schneider and his son, Ben, who's autistic and, uh, again, some of those. You know, the proceeds go to help out other families who, who have children who are autistic. 
incredible. I mean, look at that, dude. Man, it's look, unbelievable. It has so texture on it. Look, it's like putting, uh, you know, chips on a sandwich. That's right. right. There's yeah. texture to it. He got a little addition to it. It's beautiful. He's right. a genius. Yeah, he's a genius, man. Like it's just incredible. Oh, Look, we all have our, we all have things about us that make us special and great. You got to find what they are, <laughs> and that Ben found out what his is. It's incredible. Yep, I agree. Okay, let's move. You guys to some- are awesome, dude. No, you're awesome, dude. Let's go to, uh, let's go to some football, uh, shall we? Before you enjoy the hell out of that North Dakota beach and bar behind you. <laughs> um, the you said on I think Thursday night football you were standing on that fake field alongside Olsen, um, and you get it. Good show. Love the show interesting show you talked about how la was in it all along right you i don't know how you no 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 the other way the other way la was not in it at all no so so the other teams were courting odell odell wanted to go to la the whole time and it was jalen ramsey jalen got a lot of juice in this league so jalen is the one who brought it to mcveigh like on wednesday and odell looked at it like he didn't care if he's going to make a league minimum because he'd make more money off the field in L.A. than he would on the field somewhere else. But the other teams were courting him. But as he was on, you know, kind of FaceTime with Jalen, he was doing that with a lot of the locker rooms there. Um, but it wasn't, you know, I know they have this about a jersey and all that. And Odell's been trying to go to the Rams for a long time. And okay. even, like, after he got traded to the Browns, I remember talking to him. He's like, dude, you got to help me, like, get traded back. He, Trading out to the to the Rams. I'm like, really? It don't work like that, bro. You can't do it like twice <laughs> in like four days. Hey, man, I just it don't work here. like that, dude. This lake is windy. <laughs> it is cold. Can we get to LA out here? That's wild. So Odell Beckham Jr. He's rela- uh, releasing a video. I am who I am on his YouTube. I can't wait to watch it. I've obviously been an incredible fan of his for all of his off the field stuff. On the field, he's insane. He, he, what was it in Cleveland? Was it the, the, I mean, OBS putting out that video, pretty damning. Is, yeah. is that when Cleveland was like, we have to get rid of him? Has it been a long time coming over there that we didn't know about? So originally, he actually asked for his release when they didn't trade him. And they said no. Originally, they said no. Kevin Stefanski didn't want to trade him. And then when the video came out and the LeBron tweet and all that, <laughs> his silence was deafening in there. So they just said, okay, let's we don't want this to become an even bigger issue as we're trying to kind of fight along. So that's when they, they agree. You know what? I'll say this too. Cleveland kind of, Cleveland could have screwed them because they could have done it where they dropped the salary down in order to do it. And anybody could have claimed them and a team with a losing record. Instead, they did it where teams wouldn't be able to really claim them because they didn't have salary cap space. And then he was able to go sign with, you know, where he wanted to go. So, and look, I, I know the other night was, People are, are looking at going like, oh, my gosh, they, you know, why didn't they just put him in for Robert Woods? Like, he doesn't play Robert Woods' position. And, Pat, you know this. Like, these receivers don't all play the same position. You couldn't just put him in there for Robert Woods, yeah. who is in, like, on every play. And it does so much more than just receiving. Yeah. Right? So, that wasn't, you know, I think McV- Sean just said, hey, these next 12 days will be big for guys like Vaughn and, and Odell and getting caught up to speed. Go ahead, Ty. Jay, are you hearing anything about when David Bakhtiari might play? I, I mean, I feel like at this you point... You keep asking me that fucking question. Well, yeah, I, I, want, an I want to know hey, you're the fucking play. Hoda, who's it out there? <laughs> Best we just need to hear if the giraffe is coming back. When's the guy going to fucking he, play? I think he's starting he started to work again, I, but they were taking him along slowly. I got to be honest with you. When I'm talking to my guys in the Packers, I'm bot. It's I mean, I love David, great, but it's not what I'm. Man, I gotta. Next time I call, I gotta be like, "Fuck, I gotta, I gotta ask about Bakhtiari." Hey, can you? What? When I did, when I did ask you after that show a few weeks ago, I kind of got the answer of, "Ah, it could be one week, could be three weeks." We just want to make sure he's healthy and strong, so I kind of got that. Okay, just real quick, another offensive lineman that I know has ties to you, Kyle Long. Remember before the season, he had an injury, and Ian Rappaport. Hey, Jay, listen, I know you guys are all in the insider's waters, but we actually talked. Ian Rappaport said, so I guess that means that Kyle Long's going to make the team? (laughs) That's good news. They're like, Ian, shut up. Ian, what are you even talking about? Kyle Long, where is he at in the uh, recovery rehab? I think that's a game changer for the Chiefs. Not that the Chiefs didn't just get hot, but Kyle Long's a guy. Everybody knows he's a guy in the locker room, on the field, Everything and if he's back happy in football, is he coming back yeah. anytime soon? Do you know? Yeah, I mean his re- his rehab went so much faster and better than I thought when it first happened. When it first happened, I was like, oh man. And Kyle's a different look. I've I've trained me and Randy Couture and, and Chuck Liddell trained probably a thousand NFL players over the years. 
Kyle Long has is the strongest son of a bitch who's ever put his hands on me in my entire <laughs> oh, yeah. life. Like he is so next level. Oh my god! And hey, you guys want to hear? I don't know if I ever told you a great Kyle Long story. Love him. Would love to hear. So it. I started training Kyle. I've known him since he was like nine or eleven. You know, those it's my family, and we are that close at at Fox. Like we are. Man, godfathers of each other's kids, godfathers. best man at each other's weddings. This has been a lot of freaking weddings. How's your family? Um, for the six <laughs> of us. And so Kyle, when he was coming out of college, he, he lived with me. He was my son's manny, my son Sammy. He was his manny, and we trained him. And a couple of years into his career, he comes back to L.A. to come train. He goes, hey, so I'm going to I'll drop the bags off at the house, and I'll come meet you at this bar up in uh, Sunset. He said, I'll come mess with Sammy, and I'll come up there and see you. I said, great. All of a sudden, I get a call from Kyle like an hour later, and he goes, you moved? I said, yeah, did I not tell you? Kyle went and kicked in the door to the house that I used to live at. Oh, with glasses. Jimmy, like screaming and coming in. So Sasquatch comes walking to this house, and they're like these two like senior citizens <laughs> who live there now. <laughs> And here comes Sasquatch, boom, kicking <laughs> in the door, like scaring the shit out of these poor people. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is amazing. Breaking and entering for Kyle would have been amazing. <laughs> and that would have been great media coverage there, especially. He thought it was uh, Jay Glazer's home. <laughs> Turns yes. out it was, is he back there? They're like, no, 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 your friend doesn't live here anymore. Oh, that's a, and that's... he said, this guy is like on the phone with like a, the phone with the, 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 the I'm on TV right now. No, it's not so, TV. The internet. The internet. He's on. He's on the, the internet. internet. He's on the internet right now. I'm on the internet right now. Yeah, thank you, Joe. So, Appreciate that. He said this guy, <laughs> this poor guy, like they want to go call 911, but he had one of those old phones with the cords on it, and he's like, you know, all the way out here with the cord. Kyle's like, hey, buddy, it's okay. By the way. We're good. I got <laughs> the wrong house. Okay. I am so sorry. Let me get out of here. It's like Tom Brady looking for uh, Leftwich's house and yeah. going in the neighbors. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it's awesome. And I had a friend that went into the wrong house. At like two, three a.m. and end up with a shotgun. In his oh, face. really? Yeah, just a little. That's toxic. not good. Yeah, that. See, those are those types of situations that happen <laughs> as well. We're talking to Jay Glazer, Kyle Long. When's, is he coming back though? Do we think he's going to? Yeah, come it looks like it. Yeah, I mean, his, his rehab. Again, his rehab is going so great. So I, I, yeah, absolutely. I think he's coming back. That's awesome. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Jay. Is there any thought as of right now of what's going to happen with Baker Mayfield and the Browns? Because Obviously, the season hasn't gone as planned for them. Yeah. Uh, do people know if he's going to get like a massive contract, or maybe he'll take a team-friendly deal? I don't. I think the Browns are going to kind of, at the end of the year, kind of look at all their options and make a decision and kind of wait. Who can we get? Who can I? Is he our best option? And it's kind of a sticky, sticky situation, right? Because you know, half them they look at it like, okay, we can win with this guy. He can be our guy because he has that different. I mean, he has Baker's a little different, right? He got some shit in him. Um, but there'll be a lot of veterans that are, you know, perhaps up for grabs there um, in the offseason. But it's that's probably the who who the who's going to be up for grabs. Who's going to be up for grabs in the offseason? Your guy. Oh, you're not going let's, to Cleveland. Let's, let's see if Russell, you know, starts doing that again. Who's Ooh, my uh, guy? Who's my guy? Hold on, uh, Peyton's playing. Huh? Andrew Luck. Who's my guy? <laughs> who's my guy? <laughs> <laughs> you got A Rod. Oh, Aaron oh, Rodgers. Right. Oh my yeah. God! Could you imagine oh, no. him going to Cleveland? He's not going in the to dog. Oh, <laughs> oh right? my God! These I'm new shock or uh, stock shareholders. No for comment. Teams. All right, I'm sorry, but right, so when they're looking at it and they go, "Who's available? What guys can we get in trade? What guys are in the draft? Is Baker a better option than all of them long term?" And if they think yes, then they got to go long term with them. That's an. They're gonna, especially Jarvis Landry was just doing some incredible work for the community, and he was doing an interview. And at the beginning of the clip, I don't know how the whole interview went. At the beginning of the clip, he's saying, "I'm not getting the ball that much, but I'm trying to make the most of my opportunities." And this whole thing is there a, a discontentment going on in Cleveland, and is that because of what happened with OBS and everything that no, went on there? No, I don't there? think so. No, don't you don't think, think so. so. No, I just you know, Cleveland's still they're tough. They're in it. It's just man, the running backs keep going down. That's a team that you know you need. To, you need that run again, right? So Baker, who has those injuries, he's going to need him. Here's the other thing about this, though, gang. He's going to need shoulder surgery in the offseason. But he's going to have to get this thing fixed. Yeah. So you want to try and, okay, he's going to be a long-term deal, but he needs surgery. So that's what I'm saying. It's a, th That one's pretty murky. Yeah. If all is said and done, you know, he's fully healthy and, man, we continue to win, then, yeah, I think. And, look, they are a winning team with them these last two years that I, I think 
all is said and done, yeah, you go and try and re-sign Baker because when you look, when you don't have a quarterback at all in this league, you know, man, oh, yeah. it's miserable. It's yeah. awful. You stink. And also, and I was thinking maybe the football gods would potentially dump on Cleveland if they finally get a quarterback after that jersey was created mm-hmm. with 700 names on it that wins for them. And then you decide to move on. Maybe the football gods would be like, oh, you guys, you guys started to win, then you fucked it up. But the football gods did the complete opposite to Drew Bledsoe uh-huh. and Tom Brady way back. I just learned last night in the a man in the arena. I completely forgot how that whole thing went. I don't believe in the football oh, gods anymore. Paul Lewis knocked out Drew Bledsoe and then started Tom Brady. No, that is not what happened, Jay. I watched the man in the arena last night. Did, Drew, you were there, obviously. You know this. You're inside. Drew came all the way back from that was then benched, basically, for Tom Brady. Tom Brady wasn't, like, taking over the world. They were winning. They were losing. And then Drew comes in in the AFC Championship game yep. after getting paid $100 million, the biggest money in the history of the NFL, wins the game for them. Tom comes back still, by the way, a completely different Tom Brady. That, oh, I mean, yeah. that was a very different-looking Tom Brady. I did not know that that happened. Bill Belichick, I think he was testing the football gods a little bit, and then what he got in return was the greatest dynasty in the history of professional yep. sports. So I don't even believe in the football gods anymore. Like, I honestly you don't. Okay, good. <laughs> right, you shouldn't. Tell it, definitely not. Go Jay, ahead. speaking of teams, and if you don't have a quarterback, you stink. Um, our guy, your guy, Coach T, Mike Tomlin, uh, is it just a lack of options that he just keeps trotting Mason Rudolph out there when, when Ben's not in the game? And there's there's no way, like if Ben's done after this season, that – that Mason's the quarterback next year, right? I don't think. I don't no, think that. I don't think that. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They don't want to start. They don't want to start over from scratch for a rookie. But I think even this year, look, the reason why they're doing this, it would, I mean, it's kind of up to Ben, kind of like how it was up to Drew Brees with the Saints too. It's like we're not going to push him out as long as he wants to go. He's going to just keep going. I think they were a little surprised that he came back. Um, oh. But no, Ben wants to go. Ben's going to go. But I, I don't see him going back after this year so again it's another team like it's going to be interesting and this isn't you know this isn't a great draft for quarterbacks right so it's going to be more of these other you know the deshaun watson's if russell be out there aaron i mean those type of guys there's going to be a huge market aaron Rodgers is going to cleveland and pittsburgh oh Oh my god maybe san francisco too or denver Um, all right, Jay, what's a story we should look forward to going on the rest of the season you think that maybe hasn't been talked about at all? Oh, Anything? Man. You kind of put me on the spot there. I can't think about it. I've had about 14 cocktails this morning. All right, all right. Well, hey, enjoy yourself. We hey, appreciate it. Hey, hey, being honest with you. Yeah, and tell Michael Strand we said happy birthday, even though we've never met. I hope you have a great time over there in North Dakota. I appreciate it. Hey, do me a favor. Show that little book cover. You could, it's on uh, pre order right now on Amazon. Yeah, you, you uh, I mean, I didn't forward it to the group. I should have forced it. Come sure. on, what the fuck? Well, you sent me six of them. I, I mean, you sent me six of them in between <laughs> cocktail seven and nine. And you said the second one is the newest one. It comes in clusters now. I know, the, I know, I know. Again, the, hey, the 14 cocktails. Yeah. Uh, right. What is uh, your uh, drink you of could, choice, you could, uh, Jay? What do you read, drink? Read, what it, read, read the title there. Well, you, I mean, we'll zoom in close enough. I can't show it in. There, there it is. Got it. Bam. How I turn my depression and anxiety into motivation, and you can too. Lessons Go. for Living from a Mental Health Warrior, Unbreakable by Jay Bam. Glazer, with a forward by Dwayne DJ Dewey The Rock Johnson. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Huh? How about that? Good hey, push. my guys, my friends and I, man, we're loyal to each other, man. You know, you got to. You gotta lift each other up. Hell, so, yeah. hell yeah, it, man! You lifted and, up and our show today. You we, you lifted up our show today a lot. Have a great birthday party down there. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. I Jay love Glazer. y'all, man. Thank hey, you. you too, Jay. You too, Bob. Hey. Hey. All right. Quarterbacks on the move. Wow. Aaron Rodgers going to Cleveland. Why? Why? Denver? Why? Denver? Why? Green Bay? Why? No comment. <laughs> San wow. Fran. Oh. No, oh. no, no time. No, no time. time. No, 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 
I'm not sure Jay knows anyone in Green Bay because he hasn't been able to tell us anything about fucking Bakhtiari for five weeks in a row now. I mean, who, who the hell are you talking to it's up there? Oh, he's he asking different questions. He's wondering about Aaron yeah. and well, everything else. He's he, big it, picture. It skips his mind to talk yeah. about Bakhtiari. I mean, geez. Get on it, Jay. He'll get that answer today. Yeah. Cocktail 17. What? 18. What? 20. What? what? Goot. What? what? Goot. What? what? Murphy. What? what? Murphy. What? what? That's a transactional <laughs> question. He's more of a big picture guy. Yeah. No, he's Jay a transactional knew, guy as well. And that's not a transactional. That's a when's he coming back from injury. <laughs> he probably trained Bakhtiar in the offseason. He can't get shit out of him now. Come on, Jay. You know. Let's get to a break. I mean, we did learn a lot about the Green Bay Packers, though, in that conversation yeah, with Jay. A lot. A lot. Yeah, we sure did. It's not looking good, <laughs> Ty. Uh, Jared Goff, day to day, it has yeah, been yeah. announced up there okay. in Detroit. Ha- good good season, guys. Hi, yeah. Jared. Good, good, all right. good season. They all, good they're season. on the hook for another year, paying him That's 20 right. plus million. Uh, Ian Rappaport, the man who was befuddled by the fact that the Chiefs were going to try to rehab Kyle Long <laughs> yep. uh-huh. as opposed to just cutting Kyle Long when initially chatted about says Coach Dan Campbell told reporters that quarterback Jared Goff with an oblique won't practice today. Reserve Timmy Boyle. Here we go. go. What happened to Drew Blah? Tim Boyle still on IR but with his window open will take first team reps potentially opening the door to Boyle season. Let's wow. go. Hey, further Here we go boys. that uh, physically Mentally, metaphorically, <laughs> all of the above. There were no winners in that game on Sunday. None. Nah. We're back in four minutes. And there's no winners listening to this show either. <laughs> uh-huh. There's a lot of other things you could be listening and watching. And we appreciate the fact that you're spending time with us. And on the other side of this break, we go to one eight three three four McAfee, the five hour energy phone line. Can't wait to hear what people are thinking. Let's get to it. The 17-game season, I talked to Pat earlier. I, I, I've seen some people try to say players may be pacing themselves or whatever. They can't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Do you ever feel that with anybody? Is like your day-to-day change or anyone's mindset change with the 17-game season? And also, what are the chances that you're going to be playing in Green Bay next year? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's good journalism! Yeah. It's a two for I, uh, Yeah, thank you for that, too, for that. I find it hard to... <laughs> To imagine anybody's pacing themselves. We're talking about one more game. You know, we've played 16 games for so many years in a row now. One extra game. You're talking about, you know, a, a 6.25 percent increase in playing. Like, I don't think anybody's actually really pacing themselves uh, with the extra game now. Um, Did you just do that. Did you just do that math in your head right there? Do you have the? Uh, are you one of those guys? Like, oh, let me get the one. Forty-two times. Yeah, they, they have this cover two defense yeah. right now. I've seen this forty. Is that you? Is that real? That's real. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Seven uh, times two. I do, have, I do have some good mental math tricks I can do another time. Another time. Let's, another time. Another show. Another <laughs> show. Uh, let's another uh, show. Another show. Uh, age. No comment. Oh Whoa. shit! Hey, that's hey, they're gonna have to bleep me out of a lot. Of, they're gonna have to bleep that's a good thing. My reaction now. I just wanted to no comment, you age. I just I, I, that's fun for me. Now you're a media person. Now you're a big media guy. Isn't that the first thing they tell you though when they sit you down your rookie year? Don't say no comment. That's what they told us. Yeah, I wasn't part of that conversation. But you are you are a rebel though, so you can say oh, it. a maverick. Welcome back to the Pat Maxi. Oh, 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 oh. Unreal. Oh, yeah. Unreal. Foxy's added some new tools to the arsenal. Hell yeah. <laughs> A couple transitions. Some new shots to the bag. Wow. I assume we've had access to these for a long time. I've known about them forever. Yeah. <laughs> Why not today? I guess. I mean, you just found out about them, so let's go. Can we hit one more of those? Yeah, things? here we go. We'll go to the boys. Yeah. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Back. Um, really, I'm a green, I'm a I'm a green, I'm a I'm a green, 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 I'
That one doesn't do anything. Oh, no. Fox, is there no, a dissolve no. one? See, this is where pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. Oh, we got that's too right. That's right. right. We had a good right. run on three or four transitions. We tried to reach into five or six, mm-hmm. and we just didn't have them in the pack. Bucket didn't ran the dry. Keep working over there. Yeah, the well ran dry. That is 100% case. Yeah. Some more water. Yeah, we need to call them in maybe next week. We'll find some new ones in there. But we appreciate you for joining us. It is this show, by the way, that we'll be talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the show that you just watched right there. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Coach Us Up Truck Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. Hell yeah. Jay Glazer joined us uh, from North Dakota. Yep. Thank you, Jay. Gorgeous. Had Strahan's 50th birthday celebration. 21st is his birthday. By the way, shout out to you guys doing that. If I make the 50, just rent out an island. Hey, you got it. Don't you worry. In North Dakota. You think Jay rented out? He said, yeah, I'll take you anywhere in the world. Yeah, that's what, what yeah he but said. I think he meant like, you know, but with your money straight. No. Oh, Come on, on Jay Glazer's got his own if, money. I know anything from the morning show. Jay He's Glazer's a fucking actor. Backyard. Yeah. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but if you know anything from the morning show and just from public knowledge, those morning show hosts get fucking paid. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Strahan's making good cake, as is uh, Nate Burleson, who went from yeah. covering tow drag swag to uh, Baghdad bombing. That's yeah. right. In 24 hours. That's I have right. no he idea there. how he did it. We got nothing but incredible pride that two ex-NFLers are taking over the world in the morning show. Nickelodeon, and I, too. Yeah, Nick, I mean, Nickelodeon had been had by Gronk, I think, years ago already. So, yeah, congrats to everybody on TV. But- yeah, but they asked Gronk to uh, run up the aggro crack, and he was too afraid to do it. So... <laughs> Did that actually happen? Yeah. Vince, and then Vince McMahon fucking ran up the aggro crag. No, no. Like, hey, <laughs> no, that was, I was about to say, if, if you got a chance to run up the aggro crag, oh, God. Uh-huh. and you said no to that, I would have to change the way I view you completely. He's, you're talking about jumping off a 75-foot oh, fucking thing. Oh, is that what it was? Was it 75, 75? or was it 7.5? I, I think it was, oh, yeah. It was, it was like at it where was your 10. eye level was, It was right? 10 feet. It was a hoop. 75 feet. But inches. still, this guy. Back injuries throughout his entire yeah. career, and then you guys just want him to jump off a ledge, basically? Yeah, jump off a ledge onto 85 people whoa, waiting to catch whoa, him whoa, down whoa, there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, he's taking those people out, dude. Yeah, They're not catching him. taking him out. No. What sure. are you talking about? You didn't get caught. I mean, There's you, a much bigger yeah. You fucking okay? flat-backed off the top yeah. of the cage, you know? I didn't see you Hey, how cotton. about that? That was on purpose, by the way. I mean, obviously, I tried to take them all out. I wasn't yeah. as... As honed in or whatever, but it sure seemed like I was way off from where... You should have never walked again after that. Yeah. No, you were right on the money. I think they all thought, okay, we can't do this. No, we're going to move. Yeah, let's just let him fall. Well, I was trying to take him out, you know? Uh A little behind the scenes here. Actually got a crash pad delivered to the office. Mm -hmm. Mm. uh, Whenever it was very comfortable. It's now a pseudo bed for the office (laughs) every once in a while. Um because I knew potential war games was going to happen, you know, whenever uh, Regal came out and I, war games. War games. games. And, and I said, well, one of my strategies is going to be that I'm willing to go where not a lot of people are. If I have to take these sons of bitches out from the top of the cage, I'll do it. And then I thought to myself, there's probably some sort of coordination that has to happen whenever you're falling from that high. Mm-hmm. So I obviously got on trampoline again, started doing right. trampoline stuff. Notice that as I've gotten older, I do have to take Dramamine when I get on the trampo- <laughs> uh, trampoline now, which sure. is... Here part of life change. Part of life, yeah. That's part of life. I do that. Uh, and then I was like, you know, I, I would like to know what it's like maybe to fly off that thing. And in our office, we have a mezzanine, a mezzanine that uh-huh. has basically a, a, a banister at the top of it yep. that we just thought was potentially about the same height up there. I'm not maybe 15, 17, yeah. 20 feet. I, mm-hmm. I don't know how high it is or whatever. 30, 40. Yeah, 30, 40, 50. And then we put the thing down. And I had been practicing to make sure it was the most devastating blow for mm-hmm. all the people that I was going to hit. Mm-hmm. If I had not practiced, by the way, oh, God. that could have been very yeah, yeah. hindsight, time. very good decision because I didn't hit anybody. Uh, I somehow missed an entire crew of people. You know, Although I thought I had pretty good aim, I didn't hit a single person. The only thing that hit was uh, old back and hip <laughs> to ring, oh, oh yeah, which very, very hard there. I have to mention the toe later on, too. Well, that was early, well, actually. I, mean, I, I had a broken toe at that point. Uh-huh. But I, we we lost, too. 
which makes no sense hindsight, by the yeah. way. Interesting. Not, not no sense at all. Yeah. Should have won that one. I mean, I kicked out of a Panama Sunrise. Obviously, you fooled me once. You're not going to get me the next time. Right. Though. Plus, you're still standing. I don't. I don't know if everyone else is. Right. What are you talking about? Just not sure if everyone who was in war games made it out of the war. Oh, oh, well, also, yeah. I don't think I had enough fear at all going into war games. It's probably a good thing. It also yeah. should have helped you get the tables out from under before. Oh, that was how it started. Yeah. Yeah. It starts with me being a Tim McAfee mover, uh -huh. uh, dragging tables out and going in. Obviously, but I want, hey, boys. Let's go ahead and use this. And obviously, I believe that was quite a rib, probably, uh -huh. for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm exhausted already. And for, the, um, for my first match against Adam Cole, I was training very, very... I was in the middle of a time where I had nothing else to do but train. So cardio-wise, I was good. For war games, I had not been doing nearly as much exercising mm. as I probably should have, hindsight looking back. Mm. But those tables almost took me out. Oh, I I mean, lifting four tables and throwing them in an awkward <laughs> tiny door, yeah. I was winded going in to the match. Mm -hmm. And I break my toe at first move I make in match. Oh, yep. Still should have won that thing. It makes no sense that we didn't. Nah, no, is uh, Adam Cole still a scumbag? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Fox. Is yeah. the fucking sky green. blue? Get a tiger yeah. change in stripes. No, dude. he can't, by the way. Jesus. Uh, speaking of bullshit, though. Speaking of. Yeah. 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 Bullshit. Pittsburgh Penguins were sold. Oh, jeez. Yesterday, Pittsburgh yeah. Penguins are the only team that I've ever been a fucking fan of. Welcome home. See, that can't happen. It's happening. What you're listening to right there is a Boston stooch mm -hmm. dancing on all of Pittsburgh because the Pittsburgh Penguins, the organization that is Hockey Tan's founder, mm -hmm. sold to a group called the Fenway Sports Group. Yeah. Fenway no. is literally, you might as well just say the Boston Sports Ooh. Group. Welcome. Could these people now they own the Red Sox and Liverpool and allegedly they're an ownership group that goes all in. I'm pumped about it. I bet you fucking Bezos would have or Cuban would have yeah. as well if we could do this. And could they not just make up a fake entity? I heard the guy that founded this is from Illinois. His first team he bought was the Red Sox or the Fenway Sports Group. Can we not make up a fake entity like Three Rivers Sports Group or like sure. the Igloo Sports Group or anything revolving around Pittsburgh? As opposed to making it feel and very much look like yeah. it's the Boston-owned Penguins. Don't right? you yeah, worry. this is bullshit, dude. And you know who's one of the owners of that group is? It's LeBron. And if LeBron ever went into a goddamn steel mill, it would be like Zoolander when he went into the coal mines and came out with the black lung within five minutes. Okay? He doesn't belong in our time. Oh, so what Tony's saying is Boston and LeBron. Well, LeBron right. also Ohio, like Cleveland, yeah, Akron. Cleveland. Well, so now we and got Dallas Cleveland, Akron. No, LA. no, no. I'm talking about where he's actually from. Oh. And Boston and Illinois now. But listen, Nick, our hockey expert, That's Hockey Talk, live tonight, youtube.com forward slash That's Hockey Talk, oh, yeah. 8 p.m. He, Mike Rupp, Stanley Cup champion, goon, goon I think, by uh -huh. the way, and Gumpy go live. And, you know, it's a great. You said, not this is good news. You said this is good news. I didn't know the pens were for sale because all that Pirates talk about the sport that doesn't matter would have been directed immediately at the team that I've only known to be a fan of my entire life. I didn't know they were for sale. And how is this a good thing, Frank? Pat, the team's been for sale for oh, six, seven years. Who, how now? come nobody told us? Yeah, what? Well, there was no sales for sale sign on console. You that's drove. That's because the team does not own console arena. That's owned by the city. For now, we'll, well, we'll at take least, care of I that. mean, at least have uh, old Iceberg up there holding a yeah. sign. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is for sale. That's the mascot. Listen, Mario Lemieux is a man who saved that franchise countless Thank times. Thank you, Mario. 630 Thank you, home Mario. game sellout streak. Three Stanley Cups as an owner. Thank okay, you, he's not just going to hand this organization over to some nobody, some Boston stooge. Okay, these people are going to come in with Dude. a proven track record yeah. of success. And I don't care if the company is Donkey McFuck's dick, LLC. I that would rather. Yeah. As long yeah. as we the, would rather. As long as the money. He's green and the checks cash, and they keep giving the guys what they need to win. That's all that matters to me. All right, and if they win, I guess you know I will celebrate. Yeah, but I wish there was a at least ghost company name. Mm -hmm. oh, Look at that guy's Henry. Oh, we're gonna Is take care of the little brother penguins like yeah. no other. I'm just telling you <laughs> oh, right now. Oh my! Is that the John Henry it. that cut down all the redwoods? No, and, Tony, it, no. it's not. I'm gonna say it. 
This is why you guys aren't hockey town. Oh, shut up. This is it. Nobody would fucking buy your team. You hear me? We your don't team. sell our team. Nobody, no, nobody goes to your town. games. Nobody knows your team we even exists anymore. You guys stink. Why don't stink. you stop abusing Octopi? Oh, you don't abuse them anymore because you don't score or win. <laughs> your team is basically Shinigami's car, dude. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. That's your Whoa. team. We're back in six minutes. See you then. Jesus. So I'm going to give my weekly story when Pat comes on. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Oh, so, this is my bedtime story right now. <laughs> There's a couple refs that you just have it out for, or they have it out for you. And I'm like, before the game, I get the, I get the paper, yeah, I look, I see who the referees are. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get a penalty call against me for sure in this game. <laughs> and uh, so, so I'll just say this, Bill McCreary. Where, oh, Wild Bill. We Wild fucking Bill. hate that guy. <laughs> oh, he's, a good dude. he's a good dude. I run into him actually in Pittsburgh all the time. So <laughs> I'm playing in New Jersey. And Bill, there's like a, whatever, they, the other team trips one of our guys. Like a blatant call that's missed. I stand up on the bench. What you do is to be an asshole. I stand up on the bench, take my stick over the board. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, you can hear it through the arena, right? Just boom, boom, boom. Like, come on. It just, it shows them up, right? I'm like, come on. And all of a sudden, I see Bill just look across. He goes, boom. And he's got like this heavy mustache like this. This mustache just eyeballing me across the way. And I, he looks at me. I'm standing up. I'm banging my stick. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so then... The play goes on, and I'm tying my skates. I'm on the bench. I'm going like this. I bend down. I'm tying my skates. So like the top of the boards is right here. My head's down. TV timeout. All of a sudden, I hear Shh. someone stops right here, and I look up, and Bill McCreary's like eyeball to eyeball, with me. and he goes, he goes, "Are you showing me up? You want to fucking go? You want to go?" And he goes like this. I swear to God, he goes like this. He backs away from me. I grab my mic. He backs away from me from the bench and he goes like this come on come on <laughs> and, and i stand up and i go bill are you challenging me to a fucking fight i'm like you asshole you think i can't if i fight you i'll never play a game in this league again he goes let's go come on let's go tough guy <laughs> and i'm like i know my mind is going like in circles i'm like do i fight this guy like come back <laughs> what do i have to do like i was like and like he totally won he totally won he knew i couldn't do anything and i'm just like i just got by i was like you know what I'm like, fuck you. And I sat down and then it was like, I was like, he totally just dominated me right there. Yeah. And then <laughs> the next game, the next game we played, I was taking the opening face off of the game. He's dropping the puck. He's standing there before the puck drop. I look at him, he looks at me. I look at him, he looks at me. And finally I go, hey, Bill. I go, Billy, let's bury the hatchet, man. I'm sorry. I got away from myself last game. I go, I got away from myself last game. Like this isn't, I, I don't, I don't treat referees like that. And he goes, no, I did too. I let the, you know, the heat of the moment get the best of me. All right, man. Truce. All right, cool. Truce. Drops the puck by the end of the first period. We're, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> this seems to be a thing with you. This and seems I, run to be him, I run into him all the time. He's a great dude, but that's how it is, man. They, he's got to fight his fights out there too to save face. Oh, Rob, should I have fought him? Yeah. Maybe probably not. Probably not. I mean, pretty good content. You fight a ref, but also like, um, probably banned forever. I assume. Yeah, probably. You actually had a chance to coach one of the smartest humans to ever play in the NFL and Andrew Luck. And I've told this story before where he made a check in the OTAs in the walkthrough, like the first one he was at, that the rest of the team didn't even know what it was. It was his first day on the practice field, his first day of practice, and he like checked out of a blitz. Was it at that, mo was that true? And it was it at that moment you're like, oh, okay, we got like, we got the guy. Like, is that immediately how that thing happened? And did that thing actually happen with Andrew Luck? Yeah, so he shows, finally shows up and he's missed the lion's share of the whole offseason. Season. No offseason program, no OT. He's made one rookie mini camp, and then he's gone. And he finally shows up. We get out to practice, and we're like you said, we're we're in a walkthrough. And BA calls a play, and he goes to the line of scrimmage. He's getting everything set up, and all of a sudden it was alert, alert, opposite, opposite. Makes us check, and Ty, Reggie, Dwayne Allen, everybody in the back. You know, we had the whole offense over here, the whole defense over here, three lines and chains. I spent the whole day, get the F back, get the F back. I was the get back coach. And all of a sudden he rips out this, this check, check, alert, alert, you know, and changes the whole play, changes the protection. You know, we go from a run to pass, pass to run, and there and everybody's like, did he, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> what is that? We had, to, we had to blow the whistle, 
get him back in the huddle because nobody knew what he was checking to. And we're figuring, okay, this guy is a genius. He is a brainiac. <laughs> Joseph Montana, Italian American out of Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. It, was a, it was a it was a kidnapping attempt of his infant grandchild. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the house. They came into the house, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was sitting on top of the stairs. <laughs> yeah. He was like, put the baby down. And they said no. And he said, ah. And they said, no, I'm taking your granddaughter. He said, ah. And they said, I'm taking it. And he goes, you asked for it. Sketchers up, <laughs> sketchers down. <laughs> yeah. Dark. There's no way. Then he yeah. ran down the stairs, yep. and the baby yeah. caught the baby, <laughs> caught the granddaughter after the beak of the lady that was trying to snatch the baby mm -hmm. passed out. It was like one of those, boom, and they like dropped it. And Joe Montana, he actually slid down the stairs. At yeah. first. You know how like that, how people surf almost down the stairs? He did that and caught his granddaughter like this, and then he picked up the ball, and he actually put foot on kidnapping uh, suspect. Mm -hmm. Called the police with his Bluetooth and waited there. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's fucking Joe Montana, dude. That's right. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee fuck? Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show. Coach, what's up, Chuck? Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. Hour two begins right now. Yeah. We ended hour one bickering and yelling about two hockey teams that matter and one that doesn't. And mm -hmm. if the fine folks of Detroit would like to stay the fuck out of this, that would sure. be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? That's okay. Just had to chime in. That's what I was saying, though. Just got done saying is now is not the time for you guys to speak. TJ Lang is coming in oh. on, on Twitter saying uh, we would never. Exactly. This is. <laughs> hey, TJ, this is your squad. <laughs> All right. So TJ tweeted me, TJ Lang. Uh huh. He tweeted and said, uh, hey, Evan Foxy, way to remind them that, you know, he was on Evan's side. You know? Sure, of course. Hey, of course. A way to remind yeah, yeah. them that the Red Wings would never be sold to some out-of-state, out-of-town ownership group that's going to come and dance. That, that's why Detroit is hockey town or whatever. TJ, I get you guys have played hockey for a long time, and it's cold as shit in Michigan, I, and you're close to Canada and all that stuff. Hockey Town is Pittsburgh, and although it is currently being leased by the Fenway Sports Group, oh, we man. will run them out of town. Wait until Cuban finds out yeah. about this. Yeah, I, I, think I didn't even that. know they were for sale. I didn't even know they were for fucking sale. I'm How's sorry. it even happen? I mean, the way it happens is Pittsburgh says we need help from a greater city like Boston. That's and right. can come. <laughs> See, that's the problem. Nick, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about, Nick. Nick. That's just the thought process. John Henry's from sense. Illinois, okay? It has nothing to do with the city of Boston. Let's get, yeah, like let's get to tell uh, Pat. At least I was going to say, hey, look on the bright side. At least now you'll have Keslowski driving the Zamboni on the ice because I believe he is somehow <laughs> Clean affiliated. Yeah. With he is. We also is Kyle Bush Bush running. I, I, we'll I think get it's going to be Keslowski driving the Zamboni. I can't watch. What's that gum? You get the Liverpool lads out to a game. Oh, oh great, okay. Pat. Uh -huh. Now the super alliance of fandom that we've created in the office. Hell We've got yeah. Gumpy with Liverpool. Us as Penguins fans. Us. Ty. Foxy Whoa. as LeBron Stooges. Hey, Kazlaski. That's how I Connor's mean. a Red Sox fan. Mitt, he's a LeBron guy. Zito loves Illinois. The owners from Illinois. <laughs> We've got pretty much everybody on one team here. Oh, let's go Pets. <laughs> let's go Pets. Yeah. Let's go Pets, right? Hey, I'll cheer for Back little up. brother yeah, when you know, yeah, the Bruins exactly. are out. Okay. Right, let's, let's bring in a guy who probably could have helped. Like, literally just call this guy. Have him go to a bank, yeah. get a loan, sure. buy the pens for what I'm hearing. Yeah, he could have. Yeah. Could have. Super Bowl champion, college football national champion. I, who? Why are they for sale? Are we not generating massive amounts of capital? Can we not no. delegate and just ride? The, the pandemic really put a hurting on the yeah. NHL. They were uh, not generating a lot of 
Boston. You need the Bruins. You Joining need us, Boston. Uh, uh, the Bruins have nothing to do with this. The this Bruins. Guy, older right. brother does. This guy from Boston supposedly didn't even want the Bruins. He's in the same city as him. Well, he said, fuck them. We don't know if the team. Bruins are for sale. I mean, They'll <laughs> never be for sale. Uh, joining us now, AJ Hawk. Yeah. 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 What the fuck, dude? Hey, from the little... Little bit that I know of the situation, I hate to admit it, but Connor's right. He really is. Uh huh. What? This would never happen in Boston. It would never happen. Never. Well, or, well he didn't even say that. Okay. Yeah, he did. Then, he he did. did. Yeah, he did. He, older Detroit. brother would never let go of the reins. We we assist others, and little brother Pittsburgh has our help now. Don't this is unfucking believable. This is a tough day. I mean, Nick is happy about it, right? Nick yeah. knows that there's going to be a lot of money poured into the Penguins, which is good for everybody. Which I. Concur completely. Uh -huh. Mario's still there. He's going to sell a majority of his shares. He p bought in for $100 million, which wasn't even actually $100 million because of deferred payments from the team and the bankruptcy issues. He's getting a big payday. He deserved it. Oh, who cares? Hey, way to go, dude, Mario. Have you, this is like a Dana White situation yeah. where uh -huh. new team, hey, we need you to keep around the, or stick around because we don't know anything about this city or team or fan base or anything like that. But let's talk. Congrats to Mary Lemieux, though. That Mario. is real. That's good Ready business. Mario. Does that mean family. Sid's going to be gone, Don't too? Don't nope. Don't they live together? So, uh, Mario's not going anywhere, buffoon. He's got to work for the next few years. That is literally what we just said. They're shipping Crosby to Boston. No, no, no. See, no, they shipping Malcolm anything too. off to Boston. We don't want We're LePage. going to get pasta. We're getting pasta. Sorry, the no. Fenway Sports Group is actually saying, hey, we got good friends up there in Boston. They won't let us buy the team, but we can make some moves. We're taking pasta. Down they are the not friends with the scumbag Bruins ownership, oh, the no, worst no, owners no, in hockey. No, Terrible no, people. Go look at what some of the things with. they've done. So we're going to be real. Is yeah, Billy yeah. Bean going to be the GM? <laughs> it seems like it feels like it is just a dollar cutting situation, but uh, let's congrats to Mary Lemieux though. I love when ex professional athletes make great business decisions and cash out. So I'm thank very you, Mario. 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 Thank you. Second greatest hockey player of all time. I am very, very proud right behind Sidney Crosby, by the way, for those that are wondering who was number one, it was not Wayne Gretzky. Okay. Wayne Thanks for the team. He's How would you know? Did you watch Wayne play? I've seen enough highlights to think, oh, okay, yeah, Sydney could do all of this if he had six feet of room around him at all times because there was a goon on every one of his teams threatening to actually try to CTE people if you were to touch them. In the pads that they were wearing, they look, the goalies looked like, hey, rest in peace, dude. They had no pads on. The, the goal yeah. was about three times as big as it was back. Mm -hmm. Sid would have... Now, I'm not saying Wayne wouldn't have been able to adjust in this era as well, okay? And if Sid focused just on goal scoring, like Ovechkin has, I assume he would be the all-time leading scorer and whatever. Sid's just the ultimate player. Defense. Playmaking. Sniping. Just, just a, a humble superstar. Mm -hmm. Greatest of all time. Living in Mario's house. Mario cashes out probably hand the house over for free because he's probably make a few hundred million off of this. Uh, John, yeah. John Henry will probably take the house and then he'll take cross. No, no, no. John Henry ain't fucking buying Mary Lemieux's house, all right? I don't know. I think it was part of the uh, whole agreement, so. Oh, no. Take it all in. Anyways, Russell Wilson just talked about a similar situation as what Mary Lemieux has been able to accomplish. Russell Wilson said he wants to play for 20 years and then own an NFL team or an NFL franchise. I think a lot of people have that in mind once they get into the NFL, whenever you see how it's being run, some of the people that are making some of the decisions, and also the massive amounts of cash that are just flowing in to the entire game. I don't know if 20 years will put you in a position enough to become a majority owner, but I like the fact that he's putting out in the universe, hey, if you guys are going to buy a team, I, would mi I wouldn't mind joining your little group, you know? Mm -hmm. Like LeBron joined the Fenway Sports Group. Sure. Like um, um, A-Rod, uh, Alex Rodriguez joined that group that bought the Minnesota Wild. Yep. And uh, then, <laughs> you know, a lot of people have done this in the past. It feels like that's potentially what Russell wants. I enjoy the business move. It's going to be a tall task, but I think it's all just who you know, right? I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a very tall task. It also, to play 20-plus years, from what that headline says, that is uh, yeah. another thing that's very difficult, especially someone like Russell that runs around and, and gets blasted so often. But he, he recovers quicker than anybody else, Wolverine. I guess, the 19 hour a day thing. Great he, he's a Wolverine. Did you watch The Man in the Arena, episode one yesterday? Presented I seen by Under Was it good? <laughs> Huh? I haven't seen it yet. Was it good? Yes, I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. Willie McGinnis was in there talking a little bit. Drew Bledsoe did some acting in it and some talking in it. I mean, that was that was some interesting moments. But going back into the story 
of how it all began for Tom. I didn't remember that. I didn't know that. And it's like, I what think- year was, What year did this happen? 2001 or 96? I don't remember which one. 96 is when Butso was drafted one overall. Uh, Brady was drafted in 2000, and the year that he came in was 2001. Okay, yeah, because they do a couple different years, and I think Bledsoe, and I don't know when he signed the biggest contract in the history of the NFL for a $103 million deal over 10 years. I think it might have been 2000, I guess, maybe yeah. a year before when Pete Carroll was, I don't know. Bill Belichick making the decision for Tom Brady whenever Drew Bledsoe was willing and able to play and it just won them the AFC championship and was the highest paid guy and it won in the past so it was supposed to be the future. Bill Belichick saying, I'm going with Brady and uh, you just need to shut the fuck up basically to Drew Bledsoe. And to Drew Bledsoe's credit, it did not seem like he was that much of a cancer to the situation, which would be very understandable, by the way. Although if his interviews were done nowadays that they showed last night oh. oh my god social media would have called drew bledsoe a distraction they would have said that uh bill belichick has a uh, 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 split locker room and they're not going to be able to do it there have been so many distractions with the way everything is covered now as if it's a fishbowl you know you zoomed in on everything that story though i i didn't recall it going the way it did a lot of people are going to love tom brady after watching this i think i think and feel bad for drew bledsoe yeah i think that is just episode one in my eyes yeah, would they show when, when Bledsoe got blasted and then he's hurt? And But then Bledsoe had to step in what game and actually win a game for him in the playoffs. AFC Championship. That's right. What happened to Tom there? Tom ankle. sprained his ankle. Yeah, it's a pretty bad tackle, actually. He goes down like this. He uh, Drew Bledsoe comes in, throws two touchdowns. I mean, it yeah. would have been so loud. It would, and they weren't supposed to win. It was against the Steelers, right? Yeah, yeah it was yeah, against the Pittsburgh. Steelers. Weren't supposed to win. Not, like, <sighs> not supposed to do this whole thing. Bledsoe comes in, dominates. And then everybody just assumes, okay, now it's Bledsoe's time. And Belichick was like, no, no, let's see how this, an let's see how this ankle gets on this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This seems like this is going to be my guy or whatever. And I honestly believe that is how the Tom-Bill relationship became the way it became 20 years later. Because I think Bill Belichick always viewed Tom as, hey, I was your guy. Like, I picked you over a $100 million dude. And I'd assume that is why Tom, you'll never hear him publicly saying anything about Bill, even though there's always going to be the chance for those stories, you know? Yeah, it is weird to see. Like, there's not really a comparable situation, is there, where a guy was a legit vet, like you said, highest paid guy, and a six-round pick gets put in for him. Seventh round, whatever Tom was. Yeah, 199. He was late in there. Uh, joining us now? No, not joining us now. I was going to ask Chuck about that. That's a massive decision that Bill Belichick yeah. made. I mean, that is... Is Chuck coming on now, soon? Yeah, he's coming on uh, a couple minutes here. Cool. Is there Cordell highlights in there? Uh, I didn't see any Cordell. Not many, no. Yeah, I didn't see any. By the way, Slash, a, lot of the, he was a, good. a lot of the highlights they were showing, he was. Slash was unbelievable. And he was good on the show, too. He gave us a great interview. He, um, a lot of the highlights were... The the Patriots beating the Colts, though. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the highlights were, it was like Colts, Dolphins, some other team, Colts, some other team, Atlanta. Dolphins, Atlanta, Colts. It was like the Colts were just in yeah. there every single time because the Peyton Tom thing was so massive. Speaking of the Colts real quick before we get to Chuck Pagano, we have been given approval. Ooh. Ooh. Here we go. Okay, so they had they had to whitelist our YouTube page, which means they're giving our page an okay to run clips. And if it's NFL Films giving us the whitelist of our we could abuse this right now. We could run a top 5 highlights right now uh, -huh. uh from the 2021 NFL season because they had to take put us on a list that they won't give us a strike and try to take down our video and our business if we run this clip from Hard Knocks that they just sent to us. Does that make sense, AJ? Yeah, the, the Colts gave you permission. No. No. NFL Films. Oh, okay. I'm all right, continue. Very nice of them, by the way, to do that. Now, my immediate thought was, okay, run the clip Grab and then the <laughs> top five highlights real quick, and then we just kind of get into that thing. Could you imagine if we had NFL rights, by the way? I have numerous times. Takes this show to a hilarious level. If we were able to have our own top five, top ten, and everything like that. But ladies and gentlemen, that'll be one day down the road. There's a lot of money for those things. Mm -hmm. Hard Knocks with the Colts is tonight. Here is a glimpse into the action that you'll be able to watch on HBO. A PMS exclusive. You had random, random drug testing today? Not yet. No, it's good. Get Gary, get Gary right. You saw your cartoon character on TV. Y'all saw, y'all saw his cartoon character. How big is all the other cartoons? Yeah, the heat for cartoons going crazy too. No, 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 not like yours. Though. Yours look like you. Yours look like you. Yeah, yeah. Naheem, Naheem, look, Naheem looked like he was like 6'2", 215. <laughs> In my head, that's what, that's what I am, though. 
in my hands. It's okay. You standing on your wallet. <laughs> hey, when you standing on your Ooh! wallet, you're 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Can't hide it. <laughs> <laughs> How about it? I didn't even know this was happening. Well, I think maybe you were in a majority. That's why they said, hey, can you, is there any way you could potentially talk about this a little bit? And that is, I like the thing about Hard Knocks is you get a chance to actually experience what a conversation is like. The trust that has to be built up, though, between the crew and the staff to have those natural environments and that you forget that that pan, tilt, zoom camera is even there is paramount. Joining us now, former head coach, of the team that is being spotlighted in Hard Knocks tonight has probably been in that exact room talking shit to who knows who. Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Pagano. Hey, Chuck. Wow. wow! Beautiful. Hey. We got a lot of gobbledygool. <laughs> Uh, I got the black out. I got the black on the sweatsuit. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I I'll send you a chain or two too. You know, I got I'm meeting uh Galante family this Friday. I'm gonna wear two pinky rings. I'm gonna have four of them on. I got two watches. I can't wait for the gobble ghoul coming out of Hartford, Connecticut. It's beautiful where you are. Is for uh this the first real snowfall of the year for you out there in Idaho? Yeah, we're up at the lake up in McCall, so they get a little bit this is a little bit over 5,000 elevation, so this is it. Yeah, first one. Will you ski or anything like that? Do you ski or snowboard or do anything? I grew up on skis. You know, growing up in Colorado, I grew up on them. And then with sports and everything, you get away from it. So I think I'm healthy enough, strong enough right now to go give it a shot and hopefully not tear myself up, take Tina up. There's a little mountain uh, up here called Brundage. There's one in Boise as well, so I might give it a shot. Oh, I'm getting back stay on, on this ski. On the, Stay on the bunny slopes. No, 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 no. Go to the Black Diamond, right? Double, yeah, double Black yeah, Diamond. Yeah, just see if you got it still. You know what I mean? Let's find out right now how the gobble ghoul is. You've been training on that Peloton. Those legs might be oh, stronger yeah. than ever right now. Chuck, go right to the top of the thing. Yeah, Peloton, you know, sitting in your living room, a little bit different than, you know, jumping off a chair and getting on a Black Diamond. Okay. Head, head down the hill. Well, I'm not I a skier, so that. I think you probably know more than I would. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Let's uh, dive into the week's conversation. Hard Knocks tonight in season. That has to be a tough sell to the coaches, and it feels like at some point in every Hard Knocks, all the coaches, all the players just are comfortable with it, and they forget the cameras are even there. What do you think we should look forward to? And if you were a coach, how do you think that entire process would go? Yeah, I think it's a lot better maybe now than it used to be. I think they've earned you know, people's trust uh, over the years because – like you were talking about before, uh, you don't want anything out. And, and so you're, you're basically letting these people um, have a front row seat to everything you're doing, uh, all your conversations, all your meetings, all your preparation to practice. And so you're really, you get really nervous about that. And it was like, hey, you know, they're talking to us about hard knocks. Uh, hell no, we ain't doing no hard knocks, you know, <laughs> just because of that. And you're so worried and guarded about what you want to say when the cameras are on. You know, and you and, and all those kind of things. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be cool. Uh, you know, they'll do a great job again. They've, they've, you know, come a long way with that stuff. And I think, you know, the great thing it gives, uh, you know, the fans, especially the Indianapolis fans, but everybody, the fans of the National Football League, just a, a, like I said, a front door seat. You know, you're behind closed doors and you get to see, you know, especially in season, you know, a team preparing you know, for, for a game and, and get to see the ins and outs of, of what's going on and team meetings and practice and individual meetings and all the things that the head coach is talking to the assistants about. So there's some really good stuff. And again, they'll do a great job of filtering out what they need to filter out. Chuck, why do you think, especially NFL coaches, college coaches too, college football, are some of the most paranoid people on the planet ever? Yeah, you know, it's so hard to win. Uh, you know, at this level, I remember being, I was in college for 17 years before I broke into the National Football League and we had the convention, National Coaches Convention. As staffs, we used to go visit other staffs that, you know, were either running the same, you know, schemes schematically. We were running offense, defense, mm -hmm. special teams, maybe some, uh, you know, a scheme that we wanted to go, but the doors were always open in college. People weren't, weren't nervous about it because, you know, there's so many teams and you probably visited teams that you weren't going to play, you know, uh, every year, you know, in huh. your conference, things like that. But the National Football League, I mean, paranoia, yeah, runs rampant. 
Um, you know, nobody talks. You know, you try to get on the phone. You've got friends and things, but you're not talking about football. You're not talking about X's and O's. I think everybody has, you know, one, maybe two guys that they can, you know, sit down and, and have a football conversation with, and it doesn't go any further uh, than that. Uh, but just, you know, it's so, so damn difficult to win in the league, and, and you're trying to, you know, uh, keep it a secret, you know, what you're doing in, in all three phases and how you're going to approach a game and what you're doing schematically. It, it's, it's bad because it's, it's hard to, you know, keep developing and keep learning, uh, you know, in that respect. But they count on you just to be able to look at the tape and figure it out on your own. Hey, Chuck, we've heard some hilarious stories about people trying to gain an edge. And obviously the Patriots are at the spotlight of – you know, all those investigations. But I remember some hilarious tales, not of anybody on our coaching staff, obviously. It always seemed to be, oh, a friend of mine who coaches or a friend of mine who coaches, whether it is at hotels and trash cans where other teams are staying trying to find anything that was potentially thrown away or left behind. How about in windy days where a call sheet is potentially blowing and somebody's sending and, hey, go get that fucking call <laughs> sheet. Like, that is something that's always being thought about, though, isn't it? Like, paranoia running rampant, but also on the other side, how can we gain an advantage out of it? There's going to be people watching this hard knocks from all the NFL teams that are just trying to pick up some sort of advantage to beat the Colts if they're playing against the Colts. Yeah, if they're inside, you know, the personnel room, um, a meeting room, a team room, a position room, and they happen to scan, you know, a board and it's got, you know, some plays on it, a call sheet, this, that, and the other, which I don't think is going to happen. You know, they're going to go wipe down all that stuff and make sure, you know, they're not giving them access to anything like that, but they'll try. And I remember, you know, Pat, (laughs) I was at the University of Miami and we were playing your team. West Virginia Mountaineers, All right, let's go. and we we go to because you we go to stadiums and and you'd be shocked on when we go to the uh, locker room. You know how we come and do the walkthrough the day before, yeah. You know on Fridays, do the walkthrough. Well, we'd send equipment guys, whoever. Hey, go search the place, look through the lockers, look through the trash cans. Let's see what we can sniff out. <laughs> you <laughs> fucking cheaters! Yeah. I mean, this guy yeah. my goal here. Yeah. Of course, no, they no, use doing I'm that to little old West Virginia. I mean, guys have left, you know, uh, play sheets in press boxes just by accident, you know, all these kind of things. And so, you know, we come across this deal and we come together and say, hey, look, we found, you know, the, the script. Here's here's the plays. Here's the first 15. Here's this. Here's that. We got in a meeting room, wiped down the board, whole new game plan, this, that, and the other. <laughs> And it helped we had Vinny Testaverde and yeah. Jerome Brown and yeah, yeah. Lonzo Highsmith and Mel Bratton and all, but 48 nothing. You know, it's, cra- <laughs> it's crazy. <all> that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we we oh. probably were going to do it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure, just, yeah. We Let's... just had better players, but you're always conscious of, you know, I know as the head football coach, I was paranoid after every practice. I would make sure, especially we went to Anderson or we went to, you know, wherever uh, for a preseason game. Remember how we used to tell you, don't don't leave your playbooks, you know, in your hotel room. Bring them to the meetings. You know, we're always scared at certain cities. Hey, they'll they got they they've hired you know the cleaning lady. They'll go through your luggage. They'll go through. They'll grab your playbook. All that stuff. We used to spend hours and hours on just making sure. Hey, follow us from practice. Make sure we've got all the practice scripts. Nobody leaves anything laying around. Um, you know, again, it just it just you know chalk it up to the paranoia. Yeah, it's awesome. It was so much fun just to think like you're telling me that they're gonna have a. A cleaning lady who has a master key go into everybody's room. <laughs> you never know. Hey, you never know. Yeah. I, I've heard it. That, that is always the you never know. They could. And then there's always players that are like, I'm not going out in this city and eating at any restaurant. Okay, there's no way. I have no idea what this uh, server, waiter, waitress, what? host, what? chef, whoever. What? I have no idea what their allegiances are. We don't know anything. All you got to do is just put a little something in there and make me shit my pants tomorrow. Mm. I'm not eating anywhere. That is just what it's like at the highest level. And let's talk about the highest level a little bit more in depth. OBJ and the Rams. We just got a chance to check Jay Glazer. I think he broke some news without even knowing it. He said even when OBJ got to Cleveland, he wanted to get to L.A. Like he wanted to get to L.A. Jay said it's always been that way. Um, 
him being in a place that he likes and wants to be at and loves and is fresh and looks like McVay. I mean, first play of the game, Stafford wasn't looking anywhere but OBJ. I think they want to give him in. How do you see that working out long term? And if you're McVay, how do you balance expectations, the locker room, and everything kind of, you know, continuing to go in an upward trend? Yeah, we would expect just from a talent standpoint, we know how talented this player is that, you know, he would, uh, you know, as he gets more comfortable uh, with the offense and things like that, you know, all, L.A., the shininess of this this new toy, all that stuff, again, at the end of the day, we want to win football games, and you got to catch passes, and you got to score touchdowns. So that's going to be up to Sean, the offensive coaches, uh, and OBJ to, to figure out that stuff because um, I don't care, you know, how, you know, all that great stuff about being in, you know, the, the city that you want to be in and LeBron and all the bright lights, it still comes down to execution, knowing your plays, going out and winning your one-on-ones, uh, you being on the same page, you know, with, with Matthew Stafford. I think we all root for, for him to do well, and we want him to do well and, and, and those kind of things. But it still comes down to your preparation. It comes down to execution. It comes down to making plays. Chuck, how, how have you been able to – kind of transition to real life and seem like you are a healthy, happy dude. We know a lot of coaches kind of get institutionalized and they, they can't get out in the real world because they've been out of the real world for so long. You seem to be doing great. He literally does this all fucking day. <laughs> Aren't you just on that Peloton all day? You know what you- yeah. I get a few miles. I get a few miles and it's like, I feel guilty. I, if I don't get it, I don't get it in. You know, it's just so I can eat and, and have my, you know, my crown and whatever, you know, just to break even and a gobble ghoul. But um, <laughs> the transition has, has been great, AJ. Um, you know, getting fired from Indy in 17 and having 18 off kind of gave me a, a little bit of a precursor, if you will, of, of what this would look like. You know, because it's, it, you know, 18, 20 hour days, seven days a week, the grind, go, go, go. And then all of a sudden, you know, you retire or you're out of football for a period of time. Those days, I mean, it's like what zero am I doing? to 60. You go from 60 miles an hour to zero. It's like, and and Tina and I had to figure stuff out. She's like, hey, hold on. I need a 20. <laughs> so we got to figure some stuff stuff out because you're driving me frigging crazy. Because I'd be like, okay, what do you want me to do today? Okay, go to the grocery store, good. Go to the cleaners, good. Get the workout in. We'll walk. We'll do the dog. Boom, boom, boom. And it's 12 o'clock. And it's like, <laughs> what the hell are we going to do now? <laughs> <You know? laughs> you know, so, um, so that, so the transition, um, you know, this time around has, has been really good. My whole family's here, as you know, in, in Idaho. I've got all my daughters, my grandkids, uh, you know, my son in laws, my grandson, Bear. Um, so I'm, I'm blessed. My Tina's side of her family, the whole family's in, in Boise. So, so we're all together, and you guys, you know, throwing me this olive branch, oh. uh, Pat, and, and let me do this show. This is my football family now. This gives me my football fix, and, and it's, it's, it's just enough, you know, uh, to give me that. Uh, and so you, I'm so appreciative of you guys letting me come on and be a part of the show. It, it, it makes uh, it makes this whole thing even better. No, no. We are incredibly lucky that you join us and thankful that you join us. But it is cool to hear. Hey. Team on three. Hey, team on three. This is the football team. Come on. Hands in. Can we please put it in? Please, please. Team on three. Team on me. One, two, three. Team. 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 Great to have you part of the team, Coach. Great to have you there. You had me break down the huddle early in practice, by the way. It was one of your first practices in the spring, and I don't think you knew exactly who I was at the time. And I I think you learned quickly immediately after that huddle breakdown. And I I am very thankful that I got a chance to play on a team that you were a coach because you were incredibly cool. And I think that is what we learn every single Wednesday is the mind of – a guy who is literally a football guy. You were in it for so long. And AJ's question about you transitioning out of it is a very good one because and normally guys like you can't do it. They got to go back. They got to go back to the institution. You know, they're like red almost. Mm-hmm. They got to get back into it because by noon, my life is crazy, let alone the family. Like, for instance, Bruce Arians. And this will lead right into the Bucks, which will be a perfect kind of conversation and segue here. B.A., in his retirement from the Arizona Cardinals, said, uh, my wife told me Jake turned 40.
40. And I said, 40? Where? <laughs> like 40 years is a long fucking time. That, that is a long time. And he didn't even realize because he was in the game. Then he got out of the game and he realized like, no, I'm supposed to still be in the game. Goes down to Tampa and they're obviously having the success they're having. And Tom Moore, he's never going to stop. And Bruce, I don't think he's ever going to stop either at this point. What do you think they are currently thinking in that building with what happened against the Washington football team? And uh, do you ever think to yourself, or were you thinking to yourself, I'm not going to be like those guys that can't get away at the end of this? Was this a decision that you had already made up, or is it something you're kind of going through now? Yeah, you, you know, they'll get it figured out, first of all, you know, the football part of it. They've had a couple tough losses. Um, it's nothing that's new to them. They went through this, uh, you know, a year ago. Uh, and got things figured out and obviously got hot, you know, in the playoffs and went on the road and then eventually won the Super Bowl. So they'll get that figured out. As far as, you know, coaching, uh, and Tom Moore's 84, 85 years old. Uh, BA is, 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 you know, coming up on 70, I think. I told myself a long time ago, I had a number in mind. And then going through uh, the circumstance that I've, I, I went through, I was like, you know what? There's more to life than this. Yeah. You know, the football is, is great and all that. And we used to talk all the time, Pat. Remember, we're coaching and playing a kid's game. Yeah, for a but king's the, ransom. At, you know, absolutely. Getting paid a king's ransom to do it. But, you know, to me, life's too short. And I don't want to, you know, those guys are big Bear Bryant guys, you know, through Alabama with B.A. And, and Tom Moore. And it's that Bear Bryant mentality. He said, you know, I'll probably be dead six months after I retire. And guess what? That thing manifested and, and Bear passed away six months after he, he retired. So I think some guys get in this deal and they hear those stories, whatever, and are like, what am I going to do, number one? What's my, my next life's work, number two? And, you know, if I do walk away from this game, uh, which I've done my entire life, my entire being, you know, is my life over? Am I going to pass? You know, so I think some guys get scared, to be honest with you, uh, about shutting that thing down. And, and where am I going to get my, neck, my next fix from? That adrenaline we talked about. Service, serve it, uh, you know, men and women who serve our country, they go through the same thing, whether they've been, you know, uh, however they, you know, had a bad wound, this, that, and the other, and, and can't serve anymore. We'd go to, you know, uh, hospitals and, and meet these vets, and they felt like they were letting their team down because they couldn't get back to them. And these people are rehabbing. They, they've, uh, you know, unfortunately lost limbs and things like that. Um, uh, and so it's like, where am I going to get this fix from? You know, I'm, I'm not going to get it running errands for my wife, running to the grocery store, going to the cleaners, you know, and I don't have the, the, that locker room, the camaraderie, the relationships with the coaches, game days, those five minutes after a huge win in the locker room, Pat. That, that is so – I get the hair on the back of my neck is standing up right now because – People that don't know that feeling, it's 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 amazing. It's exhilarating. You don't ever want to give that thing up. When you commit your entire life to something and then success happens, it is exhilarating. Now, obviously, the joys of defeat are also matched by the uh, devastated devastation of the losses. And, you know, also like losing your identity, I think is potentially something that a lot of guys battle through. So a lot of them, the camaraderie and the game plan strategy, something to do and focus and a life's work, but also an identity. And whenever you talk about the military folks that we got a chance to meet and talk to as well, it's a, uh, it's a crazy thing. This whole life is, and I want to let you know, we're very thankful you've been able to become the coach that you are, the retired ass man that you are now up in the mountains of Idaho at a lake. Cause, uh, every Every week we enjoy the hell out of it go ahead connor yeah chuck uh at this point we're about to go into week 11 and there are a couple teams most i mean mostly the jets and the texans that are kind of out of the playoff race now how can you keep that locker room together and keep them motivated to kind of finish the season strong because there really is no light at the end of the tunnel until uh december yeah that's a great question and, and a huge huge challenge you know for both those coaches and you know they're playing for their career. So let's keep in mind that, you know, all these guys have contracts. They want to be around uh, next year. So, you know, what you put on tape is, is who you are. So, and, and then you keep, you know, you talk about, the, the, you know, your culture, you talk about the foundation that you built uh, when you first went in there. And even though you're struggling and you're going through tough times, you know, all we really have is that name on the back of our jersey and that decal on the side of our helmets. And we owe it, you know, to ownership. We owe it to the fans. We owe it to the owe it to the Shield, the National Football League, to go out here, number one, prepare and get ready to play. 
but then go out on game day, you know, and play our asses off, you know, and, and give each other and play for, for our brothers. I mean, that brotherhood is, uh, brotherhood, excuse me, is, is huge, you know, and so you got to look those guys, you know, in the eye every single day in that locker room. And so you're playing for each other, you're playing for pride, and then you're playing for the future, you know, because you, you can get on a little bit of a roll at the end and win two, three, four games, and, and then go into the off season, you know, um, you know, with some with some excitement, uh, go out on a on a winning uh, winning note, and and then your fan base is like, okay, look, we we saw some life in these guys, you know, and they've got some football players, and we're going to be picking high in the draft, and we can we can get an old lineman, we can get a pass rusher, we can get a cover corner, we can add some pieces to help us in the future, but mostly, hey. These guys are playing. They like their contracts, and they, they like being in the National Football League, yeah. coaching and, and playing. You know, they got to go play their ass off, all right? Otherwise, it's going to be see you later. The job conversation is always funny. Like, you think the guy that is pouring cement right now could just take it off because it's a bad day? You're, do your job. You're getting paid to play in the NFL. Let's go ahead and do our jobs out there and make the money. The um, While you're talking about teams that are out of it, you know, and just kind of – kind of going for it and getting in there. It really does feel like I'm back in a team meeting with you. It, it is it is spectacular. I love whenever you get in. It's almost like you put your – we can go get a cover corner. We can go get a pass. It's almost like you have this ability to just go right back into the place that I got to see you in a lot, which is the, the head coaching position, which is why I think this is so awesome because I assume there's exact speeches like that happening all around the NFL. Go ahead, Ty. Coach, if you're a guy like Brandon Staley and going into this season with your first year as a uh, head coach, you know, you're getting everyone's he, – he was a, a betting favorite to win coach of the year. Everyone's talking about how good he is, and now they've hit a little bit of a slump. Like, in your first year, how difficult is that? Uh, I mean, obviously you can get humbled any week, but, like, do you think at any point he's thinking, like, oh, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. All these people are giving me all these flowers. And how does he turn that around with the Chargers? Because they're, they're kind of treading water right now. Yeah, Ty, that, that's real. You know, because, you know, a few weeks ago, like you said, you know, we couldn't talk enough about Brandon Staley and the job that he's done, you know, with that organization and that football team and, and how the quarterback's playing and, and how aggressive he is, uh, you know, on fourth down and all those stuff. And then a little bit of adversity strikes. And, you know, you, there's a lot of, you know, they say it's lonely at the top. So you got a lot of time to sit and reflect, you know, not only, you know, when the season's over, but during that season. So you do question yourself. Players question themselves. You have a tough day. You throw a bunch of interceptions. Uh, you you know you have a couple bad days back to back. But as a coach, you do the same thing, and you're thinking, you know, what do I got to do to get this thing back? You know, get the train back on the on the tracks and going in the right direction. You know, so you'll sit there and, and you'll question yourself, and you'll ask some, you know, your assistant coaches. You'll bring in some of your leaders on the team, and and you start, you know, doing a little bit of soul searching and trying to figure out, okay. What is it? Because you can just look to the X's and O's and you can look to the tape and you can look to the stats and say, hey, look, you know, we're turning the ball over too much. We're not taking the thing away. We can run the ball. All right. Or we can't run the ball. We can't stop the run right now. I mean, you look at the Rams last two weeks right now. Right. Somebody has found a recipe, you know, for, for stopping, you know, the Rams. And so Brandon, you know, in the same city, he's sitting there. He's going through the same thing. Um, you know, and asking himself all those tough questions, uh, you know, so uh, that that's real, you know, and, and I think anything we do in any life, when you have success, man, there's nothing like a front front runner, you know, and, and being on top and, and winning and all that shit, because <laughs> even, hey, even though, even though when you're winning, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff going on, but you just don't address it because you don't want to mess with that football car karma you know you just kind of brush it under you know the rug and you hope man i hope this don't catch up with us but but usually what happens it, it catches it up it does yeah catch up, catch up. <laughs> it's like winning is the nice band-aid over whatever sword is and then as soon as you lose all of those band-aids at one exact time whoosh, we haven't been able to run for eight fucking weeks we knew this was going to come the quarterback is this this decision's this it's it all comes that's why it is such a week-to-week -week league you have the highs are so high that you can't have the lows are so low but you can't ride the ebbs and flows you got to stay right here can't ride the ebbs and flows ain't that right coach go ahead aj Chuck, what's it like if to have what you you hear people talk about oh they if you get this lockdown corner you can line him up on their best receiver and then you can have so much freedom with the other 10. What's it like as a D coordinator, the guy calling the defense? Like, what can 
a shutdown corner do for you? It's a lot better uh, than not having that dude. <laughs> I, can tell you, I can I can tell you that because you know if you have that guy, you know Jalen Ramsey, so to speak, and you can go put that guy's out of the game because they may never even try him. You know, like that last game, I don't I don't know if the 49ers ever threw the ball over that way. You know, and he's playing in the slot and things like that. But you can take one half of the field away. Go back to Deion Sanders, the original. You know, when, when he went into Dallas, he told those guys, I play one coverage and one coverage only, and that's cat coverage. All right? And they're like, what, what's cat coverage? I got that cat. So don't <laughs> be talking to me about cover two and about quarters and, you know, playing shell and single high and – this bunch, this is how we're going to play this bunch. Just give me that dude. Give me Jerry Wright. Give me whoever, and I'm going to take him out of the game. And then it allows you, you know, play 10 on 10, however you want to play it, you know, and, and lean your post safety, so to speak. If you have a, a number two corner that's struggling and they're picking on him um, and they're going after him, now you can lean that post safety over the top of him and take him away. And then you force the opponent to try to find a weakness or a hole somewhere else. So um, it gives you great latitude if you like to pressure and you like to blitz, you got guys that can cover, you can put those guys on islands and get after a quarterback. Because if you if you don't have that, you know, then, you know, you don't really dictate the tempo uh, uh, of the game. You know, you can't dictate, you know, the tempo and, and get after quarterbacks and get after offenses like you want it. Cat coverage. Wouldn't it be cool to be that athletic, by the way? <laughs> like, Dion, what, is in the MLB in the fucking yeah. World Series hitting homers? And then he's in, hey, who's their most athletic guy? Yeah, I got him. Hey, listen. This dude ain't going to do a fucking thing today. <laughs> what a... That is why Dion, by the way, forever, in my eyes and a lot of people's eyes, can say and do whatever the hell he wants because he was that dude. There has been... Revis, obviously, Revis Island was something that was very, very real. I feel like Vontae had a lot of pressure, right? Vontae, whenever he was brought in to our Colts team, he was... That was kind of his thing too, right? Wasn't it? Or am I misreading that? No, he did a, he did a great job, and we asked uh, a ton from Vontae. You know, and he loved, you know, certain, hey, no, certain hey, guys no. don't. don't hey, no. <laughs> I call my mama. Ah. Hey, so anyway, <laughs> but no, but anyway, there's a lot of guys that, that don't like that, you know, but there's guys like Vontae who come in and say, hey, I got him, right? You know, give me, give me that dude. And then whatever we got to do, you know, we're going to do. But they relish that and they, they love to be in the spotlight. And he had some, he had some great, oh. you know, with D hop. You know, back in the day and, and guys like that, I mean, there were some great battles going on. He was an athletic dude, and, and, and what a good player and a good dude. I agree. Love that guy. I love Vontae. And whenever he retired at halftime, he said, hey, I don't got it like I once did, man. <laughs> it's a young man game. It's a young man game. I, I'm hurting the team out here. You know, like that is – I fucking love him. He's living his best life right now, too. I don't know if you follow him on Instagram. He is living his best life. I'm so happy for him. I love that, dude. Go ahead, Tone. Uh, coach, in the, in the recent weeks, a um, couple quarterbacks, game-changing players have ended up on the COVID reserve list the week of the game. Do you think coaches now are getting backups, more reps during the week because of the possibility of this happening, especially in the quarterback position? Yeah, no question. You know, you, you have to. You'd be totally ignorant not to prepare a guy in, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, hopefully you got a, a lot of teams, you know, have a veteran in there that's played a, a substantial amount of snaps over the course of his career and doesn't need a lot of snaps to go in and play a few innings, you know, if you will. But, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're not, you know, having that guy, you know, do some extra stuff, you know, from a film standpoint, uh, you know, practice is practice. You only get so many reps, and you're going to give your starter the lion's share of those reps. But you have to prepare. You know, just like all positions, you better you better have a plan. You know, we we ran into you know things in India as we talked about you know in the past of, of losing not one, not two, but but three guys, and and having to you know have a guy like Pat, you know whoever. You know, think about think about your punter goes down during the game, or your long snapper, you know, goes down. You know, we never talk about, you know, specialists enough and, and how important they are to winning and, and to a football team, you know. But you talk about you lose a long snapper because oh. Pat will tell you, we used to practice with, you know, a couple, maybe an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman. It's like all of a sudden you don't you don't have a second team guy to go in and, and you hate to lose that guy. I mean, you're going for it on every four. You can't even you can't even punt. You can't even get the snap back, let alone, you know, a, a point after try. So um, that's real, and you better have you better have a legitimate guy. I mean, Pittsburgh, you know, obviously going through it, 
you know, with Mason and Ben being out. And, oh, um, yeah, because you, you see what happens. You see what happens to a football time. team. You know, it costs you a couple games in the middle middle of the season, and and now all of a sudden, uh, you know, come playoff time, you lose you lose out on a tiebreaker of some sort because you didn't have your guy. Every game matters, especially in the AFC, with how the parity of the wins and losses is. Wow. Mason Rudolph, hopefully, he'll be able to turn it up. Uh, Chuck, can't wait to hear about the Bunny Hill with you and Tina getting out there on the lake and in the snow. We appreciate you for joining us, boss. Appreciate you guys. What Love a conversation. You, yeah, you too, boss. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Chuck Pagano. Yeah, yeah Chuck! What's that? What'd you say, Z? I was like, break it out. Break it. Oh, we should have. Is he still there? He's still here. No. Coach! <laughs> coach! Oh. Coach, you got Let's him. Go. You got him, coach. You got him on you. Let's go. Hey, family on three. One, two, three. Family. family. All right, get the hell out of here. Go to your family. <laughs> oh, man. I fucking learned so much. I enjoy listening to him speak like a lot. He'll, he'll, he'll literally transform himself in that Idaho lake house that he has there into head coach Chuck Pagano in the middle of things. Hey, listen, we're playing for the name on our back. I mean, let's come on. The full thing. That is the difference between the people that want to be coaches and the people that are actually coaches, though. His first natural reaction is coach speak. Mm -hmm. His first natural reaction is coach mindset. It's not like, oh, he learns these things and acts this way because it's like his first natural reaction is like, let's go, we don't have time. Like, yeah. it's just, I'm happy for him. Him retiring and enjoying his life is huge, too. That was a great, great, like, journalistic question by you two days in a row, Bob. Wow. There's not, there's not many guys that spend 30-plus years in the league as a coach, and then they transition out, and they are doing as well as Chuck. Yeah, and happy. Seem to be everybody. I just assumed the guys that don't come back and coach are literally just – sitting in a room somewhere yeah. miserable w watching film like yeah, that is <laughs> mike mccarthy allegedly had his whole basement set up as if he yeah. was still a head coach in the nfl there's different levels to commitment to the greatest game on earth in the highest league we can't thank chuck enough we'll be back in four minutes with some actual phone calls this time here we go then Lashawn mccoy will join us jordan Ooh. poyer will join us it's a big wednesday aj I know. I, I was unaware of that. I'm glad that both those guys are awesome. Awesome. Can't wait to chat with them. Can't wait to chat with the callers here. In four minutes, we'll see you then. I hate a lot of people for the way that they acted after that Friday thing. Do you? Is, there's no way you're isolated enough that you don't hear any. You, you had to have heard. There's some massive names politicians i mean your name has been spoke by a lot of people there are you just because you're like a hey love will cure this thing how are you not going to hold a grudge everybody and do you know that you're probably never going to win an mvp again that's probably never going to happen right i think that's, that's legitimate <laughs> legitimate statement <laughs> 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 legit though like that there's a lot of people that vote for that that i think are not faint like do you how do you isolate that how do you stay away from that because you're talking about everybody on earth talking about you that's not getting you down at all i don't know that's incredible mental toughness if that's the case well you know what i think first if you find your identity identity in yourself and you don't find your identity in the opinions of others mm. uh, you don't need that validation and that love from other people you can get it from yourself and that's not being selfish that's just learning how to uh in a healthy way love yourself and respect yourself um and believe in yourself and it definitely was tested you know by some of the comments that i that i heard and so i'm human i mean you know stuff can can definitely hurt your feelings but uh look i shared an opinion that is polarizing i get it and I misled some people about my status, which I take full responsibility of, those comments. But in the end, I have to stay true to who I am and what I'm about. And I stand behind the things that I said. And I you know, have a ton of empathy for people who have been going through the worst part of this pandemic, which has affected all of us in different ways, but so many people um, you know, like I said, with lives that were lost, lives that were forever changed. Um, and I have a ton of compassion and empathy for those people. Um, and I have tried to help out, you know, as much as I can. Yeah. Um, the, the other stuff is so out of my control and there's going to be people that don't like you and they don't, don't, and, and, and hate you for things you said, or might not even understand what you said or know what you said. It might just, you know, 
a headline, and that's fine. Um, I, I believe that people are entitled to their opinion, and even if it's an opinion that's unfavorable of me. But I'm going to continue to try and be the best version of me uh, moving forward, and I'm excited about uh, getting back on the field as soon as possible. Hey, do you know uh, if offense or defense is getting introduced this week uh, in your game? And have you thought about it all, like what the reaction may be if offense is introduced and you're the last guy out? Have you thought about that? I think it is offense, and I'm excited. There's nothing like running out of that tunnel last, especially. You think it'll be different one way anyway than your normal, uh, you know, how they normally respond? I'm not, I don't know. I'm, uh, I hope not. They should show that on, on, on the network. Oh, that'll, that clip will make its way. Oh, yeah. That clip will make its way around. To walk into any hall at the moon and go, Wish you were <laughs> straight from that ledge, my friend. Jumper. We Love could cut ties with all the lies that you've been living in. And, and if you do not want to see me again, I will not be Uh-huh. How at the moon is just pianos usually? Uh, no, no, no. You wouldn't get it. Welcome back to hour two of this Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. We have AJ Hawk with us. We're about to have a few guests uh, here coming up shortly, so let's hammer out the news that needs to be chatted about with old A.J. Hawk. A lot of people chatting about Aaron Rodgers and the chip on his shoulder mentality this morning. I do believe Mm -hmm. that was the largest um, conversation takeaway from this particular Aaron Rodgers Tuesday around the sports media world in which we are honored to help and add stuff to because we understand the day-to-day sports coverage grind. Uh, Your thoughts on that? And was that the answer you expected when he said, you know, if you look back, I've said I'm going to do stuff, I do stuff, whatever. I thought he was going to get into a little deeper about the motivation and dive into it but he acknowledged it right without really acknowledging it is that what your, your takeaway from it was yeah he did i mean i don't know if i took any more like the chip on the shoulder thing like i didn't even think about that at the time i mean well scorched earth is the way i asked yeah. the question uh-huh. and it's really like, because he is one guy that i think everybody goes oh pissed off this guy is gonna kill everybody because he is an assassin now granted that might be not giving enough credit to just regular guy who potentially just kills everybody anyways in these situations maybe just happen in his life like everybody else well that's what we said too though is like we're not just like making this he's done it like five or six times before so there you can point to something there's evidence yeah yeah, exactly point to data that shows right trends show this may happen again oh everyone was killing him yeah he threw 45 touchdowns and six picks that next year it's awesome that he yeah stats actually prove that one is right this is no punditry what you're asking me about here is almost what he said which is awesome let's move around there's anything we know is that everybody agrees on stats these days right that's well hey i'll tell you what i don't want to get into this right now because i'm having a pretty good little wednesday but stats is playing for every team in every sport in every event in every single life that's right yeah stats is the x factor for every single narrative Mm -hmm. if something is a narrative going one way and has stats as their number one team Guess what? Somehow, some way, if you dive deep enough, the opposite side, no matter how dumb it is, will have some sort of stat coming back. And I will say, as a sports stooge, we caused this shit. You know why? Because even back in the day before stats were a real thing, you would hear some commentator say, this guy is the best hitter post sixth inning with two outs and in the bases loaded Mm -hmm. in the history of this stat being found or something like there was always these obscure stats that helped paint a picture but now because there's so many people that are incredible with stats to tell the stories stats are on every fucking team they're on every single team i wonder if this situation with aaron and you know, being scorcher is the only thing where stats are on one side. And it's like, yeah, when he's pissed, he goes and kills everybody. Well, and often a lot of the stats are somehow contradictory of one another. So it's like, well, which stat is the accurate stat? Because they're both saying the same thing in opposite directions well, somehow. And, and I appreciate the time that you put in to do this math, but I'm going to be honest. I'm, too, I'm not going to look into it. No. So which one of you fucking stats is right? Yeah. 
It's wild. It's a crazy world we're in, but I appreciate you diving and throwing us into that conversation, AJ Hawk. Jeez. Why'd I mean, you even do that? You come knew on. you knew that was gonna happen. The stats it gets me worked up. Stats for sports. Like that's a thing. Like if you want to come up with a narrative, you can kind of manipulate all the random stats to make it look like you want. Every everything. And I mean that puts a lot of power in the statisticians. Mm -hmm. And I took a stats class, so mm -hmm. I understand the amount I of did. That's, that class sucks. Sucks. That's, oh, sucks. Oh, my God. oh my God, it was the worst. So if you're able to get through all that and become a stats expert, I have nothing but respect for your mental toughness because there had to be no less, and here's stats that probably back it up, two to 3,000 times where you thought about quitting because it fucking stinks uh -huh. to be numbers all the time. <laughs> and we appreciate you. We just wish we'd be a little bit better with which ones matter and which ones don't. Bingo. It's gonna be fair. We cover sports so we have no idea. The only thing we got is a scoreboard, which yeah. everybody should get because that helps out all stats. Bingo. Hour three on the other side. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But uh, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. You know, I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make. and. No hard feelings, and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. Boys, so, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leverage's house. <laughs> So besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what put the Bucks in this game today, and uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is, but uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. Nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Oh, yeah! Out of Philadelphia is one of the biggest inspirations walking around the internet. Geo, the podcast. Yeah! Okay, so you're 14 years old. Yep. You're from Philadelphia. Yep. Big time Eagles fan, podcaster. You were Carson Wentz's number one fan. Yeah. Yesterday, the A01 invited me, and Carson invited me to the game, and I got to go on the sideline and meet Carson again and he gave me a football. Let's go! Yeah. You're obviously full of energy, full of optimism, full of upbeat, good vibes. Yeah. What do you go through on a day-to-day? -day? I've had 20 surgeries in my life, so it hasn't been easy. Um, I have a uh, condition called SJS, um, Schwarz-Jampel Syndrome, um, and 
It's basically like muscular dystrophy with dwarfism. My elbows are dislocated. My left hip is dislocated. I had to get my right hip reconstructed. The reason I'm so optimistic is because life is too short to focus on the negativity. Let's go! <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that you have to be tougher than all of us on the day to day, but I am so incredibly thankful that you keep that mindset. How'd you develop a uh, love for football? We've always been a football family, but then when I started having surgeries, I started watching football, and then I just kind of fell in love. What does the rest of the season look like for the Indianapolis Colts, you think? Carson's gonna keep himself safe out there? Carson's gonna have his best NFL season here in Indy. Why is that? He loves it here and he's having fun. And when Carson Wentz is having fun, he plays his best. Okay, and how about the Philadelphia Eagles? I think they got a little developing to do with him. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any players that you'd like to get on your podcast? Brian Dawkins. Oh. Is he your favorite uh, Eagle of all time? Um, him, Carson, and Zach Ertz are my top three. Oh, oh Zach Ertz. Sorry. Damn, so sorry. Yeah. Why is everybody getting traded out that you like? What's the deal? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're really, really good at this. What's the name of the podcast? Uh, Philly Sports with Giovanni. One last message to somebody out there who maybe uh, doesn't view life the right way, you think? I'd just say find your happiness and find the thing that inspires you, like I found football, and just try to look on the optimistic side. Hey. You absolutely crush it every single day. You crush it in here. We appreciate you. We hope you loved Indianapolis, Indiana. Come back whenever you want. Ladies and gentlemen, Geo the podcast. Yeah. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show you? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to hour three of that show on this Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. It shall begin right meow. Yeah. LaShawn McCoy will join us here in a few moments. Uh, AJ Hawk here live from his attic in Ohio. A former college football national champion and Super Bowl champion right here, right now, texted me during the break and said, I, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, I, Kentucky Derby guest of the man, I, A.J. Hawk, will predict where Aaron Rodgers is playing football. Here we go. Yeah. The floor is AJ. yours, A.J. Wow. You asked for this time. Uh, do you have a one shot we can cut to? AJ, the floor is yours. Aaron Rodgers will This be is ridiculous. This is stupid. You know that. You're what? trying to buy what? some time while we're down. LaShawn up. I hope LaShawn is not on already and has to watch this garbage. But if I had to make a prediction, I would say Dwayne Johnson lures him away to the XFL. Oh, oh. Hi. Well, I That'd mean, awesome. put it on the ticker. Uh, best friend yeah. of Aaron Rodgers <laughs> uh -huh. thinks... Uh, DJ Dewey Johnson, Young Rock, founder and writer, mm -hmm. The Rock, uh, potentially brings Aaron Rodgers to the XFL. And great way of passing time right there, AJ. You, you did it magnificently <laughs> because joining us now is a man who's a former rushing leader of the NFL, a former touchdown leader, yearly touchdown leader of the NFL, six-time Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl champ, absolute stud. There's a stat that we just read that no other person gained more yards from scrimmage in the NFL than this man from the years 2010 to 2019. That's a Hall of Famer, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, LaShawn McCoy. Yeah! Hey, you guys made me sound pretty good. I like this, man. Appreciate that. Hey, it's not, it's no... 
That's no bullshit, brother. I mean, you were an absolute stud. And I don't think, you know, obviously the conversation wasn't this, but coming out of college, I got to see you at Pitt, obviously, in the Big East. And you were, all right, chill, chill. All right, all right, listen, you need to relax. And they just posted Darrell Revis's punt return. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean, they, that won a fucking ESPY. It won an ESPY. It was, uh, it was unbelievable. But we saw you at Pitt. Coming into the NFL, I think a lot of people thought you weren't going to be able to transition. You did. You dominated and you changed the game, man. It's a, it's an honor to have you on, sir. Oh, I love being on the show, man. Hey, and real quick, when we beat West Virginia, right, when they were going to the, the championship, yeah, yeah. I felt bad. Oh, right? did you? I yeah. felt bad because yeah. I'm like, damn, we just spoiled this whole thing mm -hmm. for these guys, right? Yeah. And I know it was a rivalry. I was a freshman, so I didn't know how, yeah. how big it was, right? Yeah. But I was mad about that. Like, damn. Yeah. Now we had to win the game, but I did. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My life was was ruined there for a few days after that, and you know I'm happy you guys had a hell of a time. But that's why the rivalry was so damn good. By the way, it's such a close drive. I hope they bring it right back. There. Yeah, I hope they bring it back in full fashion. And college football now is insane. Do you follow college ball much anymore? I do. Every once in a while, I play a little bit. Every once in a while, huh. but no, I, I I love college football. I remember. Our rivalry was so special. I remember going on after we beat you guys. I went to party in West Virginia, and they wouldn't let me in the club. Look, I had to call Pat White. Pat got us in the club. Oh no, no, it was on Steve Slayton. Steve, he got us in the club. yeah, Steve. By the way, we uh, Morgantown was a good time. I, I partied a couple times in Oakland there, you know, because I'm from Pittsburgh and I went to West Virginia. So I'd been to Bouquet Gardens and a, a couple oh, other. Bouquet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been in a couple places in Morgantown. I'm ha I hope it treated you well. I do like the fact that our our bounds uh, you can't fucking come in. Dude. I do like that that happened. And then a display of chivalry was uh, uh, taking place there. LaShawn, you were with the Bucks. Are they dead? What happened? How did they come out of the bye week worse? How, how did the Bucks come out of the bye week worse, you think? And are you worried at all about what they have going on? You're in there. No, nah, not, not at all. I think um, they're, they're a great team. They're, they're coached well. They played bad. They had a bad game. Um, I, I think it was just a freakish game. Once I've seen, like, the beginning of, like, little stuff, like the fumbles and the, not the, fumbles, the turnovers, you know, interceptions, you know, guy catches the ball, gets hit, pops up. You know, guy when hit, hit the foot, pops, like, all the little stuff. It, that, that won't happen. I mean, that's the freakish game they lost to the Washington Redskins or Washington football team. I'm sorry. I mean, but yeah. hey, get hey. <laughs> get it, they, no, they get everybody back healthy. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. A, a B, Gronk comes back. The secondary comes back. They'll, they'll be fine. Okay. Hey, LaShawn, what's it like playing for Bruce Arians down there? And they have a pretty veteran staff, too, it seems like. And obviously Tom Brady at the quarterback position. Like, what was that like day to day? It was special, man. Like, you're having a player that's like a coach, right? He's so dialed in. He's all the small details, um, so intelligent, so prepared. And you have an a, a, a older veteran coach, right, with B.A. Um, by the way, he's a Pennsylvania guy. And he, he, he lets, he lets you know, Brady run the show for the most part. But he's strict. I like he's strict because he's fair, right? Like, do these things right, and I let you guys have freedom, you know? And I love playing for B.A., man. And I think a lot of guys, they, they're bought in. They've been bad for a long time, but they're bought in and, that's why you see the difference within the team. Philadelphia, Buffalo, Kansas City, Tampa. Am I missing any there? Nope. You got the last two rings. That's all that matters. The last two <laughs> rings. I know that. Yeah. I got, I got all my stats early. I got my last two rings late. Yeah, you dominated for a long time, though. And I think you were, you know, the football gods were like, hey, this guy deserves a championship or two here. And you made it happen in the last two years. But when you talk about the Tampa building versus other buildings, what is the difference, you think, in success and, and maybe not as much success? Because you've gotten a chance to be at a couple of different places. <laughs> other than Tom Brady, because also in yeah. Kansas City, I guess Patrick Mahomes, is that is that the answer there? Or is it a bigger I think, than that? No, I, think, I think, well, I think the number one thing, right, is Tom Brady. Like, the Patriots are having a good thing going on right now, but it's not the same without Tom Brady, okay? So you bring him there, right? And then the second thing is, that's the first team, right? And I've been around some good teams. Kansas City was a great Tom, great players. Everybody liked each other, great coaches. Philadelphia, Andy Reid and that staff, we were really good. We really was cool, everybody hung out. The Bucks is the only team where everybody get along. Like, like the backup players, the starters, the, the practice guys, the kickers, especially everybody, we all get along. We love it. Like, they enjoy being around each other. Till this day, I still text all my boys, all my guys. That's why they're going to be so successful. They love being a team together. Is that, you think, because a lot of them are at the tail end of their career? Because I think, and I'm not, this is not obviously everybody, but I think a lot of people potentially have this career 
trajectory where you come into the NFL, I'm in the NFL. Okay, holy fuck. Then you get in the NFL long enough that you get jaded because you learn the business side of it. You understand that there's stupid situations happening in a lot of places. There's decisions being made. You go, this is the dumbest thing. You kind of get jaded. You're just going to work now. I, th I think you're just going to work. And then at the end of the career, you kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you know, I'm going to try to enjoy this now. I'm going to try to enjoy like the meetings. I don't know how many more I have. I'm going to try to enjoy the practices and the lifts. Is that what it felt like there? And how do you do you think that is a trend for success for other places like Miami or L.A. that's potentially trying to do the same? Well, I, I think um, to be bought in, right, to a team, you got to have something to be bought in for, right? And I think that goal they have is is reasonable because they won last year, right? But Brady made it such a special moment where, like, yo, this is what we're going to do, right? You can see it. You can touch it. We're, we're going to win games. We're going to practice together. We're going to be prepared. Like he made it fun for everybody to to love to to be a part of, you know, playing ball. It's bigger than just scoring touchdowns. Like they really have a, a real chemistry and a bond. And I think how you get that is you have like a real goal that you can achieve. And I think when players really believe that goal, it, it, it means something. You've been on bad teams where we just can't win. So to be bought in is like okay, come on. But there's like it's reasonable. We can win and we can have a dynasty team. And you see it. I think that's what makes that team go. That's what makes that team a real team. And that's why you have zero, you know, like uh, you have the utmost faith that they're going to get it right because of that. That is the oh, ultimate yeah. X factor, you know, and that's the that's the difference between good teams and great teams. I think you can't measure it. How much does everybody get along? How much are they playing for each other as opposed to just next to each other? That is a, a real thing, I think, whenever you're building any type of team. Let's talk about a team that I think has been tight through a lot of adversity, LaShawn. This past offseason, obviously, the Aaron and Green Bay Packers situation was loud, okay? We were right in the middle of it. It might have been louder for us than for everybody else, but that shit was loud. They were talking about that everywhere. Every pundit had an idea. Aaron's not happy. He never said anything. He comes back, and this is after he did an interview where he said, I love my teammates. I love my coaches. And they've almost rallied together in that almost like a bunker mentality. What do you think about Aaron Rodgers, the Packers, the team, and what they potentially have going after two NFC Championship losses in back-to-back -back years with a lot of drama that has been outside the building? You know, I, I really can't stand how they make this big deal about Aaron Rodgers like my thing is with Aaron Rodgers like he is what he is he, he doesn't change right from how he was in the league to now he's the same and I, I, his teammates love him right he's going to win games and I'm sure he might do things a little differently than other people but like he's he's a leader and you can see all his every time he has anything going on with the GM had the issue with the GM or if he the last dance he talked about like all these things his his team rallies behind him like they believe in him so everybody makes this big thing about like a distraction or it's an issue he is who he is, bro, and and they follow him. And he's a leader, and he's he's a great player. He's a great player. Like most great players that I know, right? They have their own thing about him, and that's okay. Like, cause cause if they didn't have him, right? They had Jordan Love, and we've seen how that. Oh, 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 Jordan Love just taking ricochet shots since. I'm just saying. So I'm now, saying, Sean, like, listen. So, to, hey, think about Jordan Love, dude. Draft night. Okay, he has that moment with his family, puts the hat on, he's excited. Then he opens his phone, and he's immediately being compared to Aaron fucking Rodgers. Like, that is his entire, what a life, that guy. What a life. I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, like, bro, you got to, it's, it's some good and bad with everything. Any relationship, work relationship, you know, relationship to lady, whatever. Like, yo, this, like, here's what he is. And I, I respect Aaron Rodgers because he doesn't play that game. Like, listen, bro, like, even his little, like, apology was like, hey, I'm sorry for if I misled you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sorry, but I'm sorry if I misled you. And that's who he is. And that's okay. Because we need him in this league for the league to be the NFL. And I love watching him every Sunday or Monday or Thursday night. I'm betting on him because I love the way he plays. Yeah. LaShawn, do you think it's possible to have an elite football team that is contending to win the Super Bowl to where everything doesn't run through the quarterback, to where that quarterback is far and away the leader of that team and it kind of goes through them? Well, that's, that's how they build it up. I think, like, most teams, you, the quarterback is the main guy. You know, he's the guy that you follow. That's why he gets paid all the money, right? No matter mm -hmm. if a guy can be average, but if he's the leader, they're still going to pay him because we want you to lead this team. You're the captain. You're the pitcher. You're, you're that type of person. So I love that they have it like that. I think um, only time it doesn't work like that, if you have a great defense with great leadership on the other side um, and you have a solid running game with a, with a manageable quarterback that can manage the game, if you don't have that, then you need a, a, a pretty, like, 
big leader as a quarterback to lead this team. Isn't it interesting that in the locker room, though, in, in the quarter, you only go as the quarterback goes. We all know they touch it every single play. That is that is just how it's going to go. Even if it's a run team, checking which way the ball, like there is the quarterback is going to be important. But there's some teams where I don't think the quarterback is necessarily like a lot of situations probably where the quarterback is not the vocal leader of the locker room and everything like that, but you got to be able to respect the quarterback. I, I think that's a big deal. For instance, LaShawn, LaShawn in Indy right now, Jonathan Taylor's a fucking guy. Hey, he's a fucking guy. He got introduced last. I was at the game. Uh, there was a Thursday night football game uh, against the Jets two weeks ago and, you know, intros were happening and it was the offense. Carson Wentz got introed and I was just watching. I was like, oh, that must be it. And I was like, oh shit. No, Jonathan Taylor got introduced last, right? Like this guy's coming yeah. in and it's his show. It's the way it is. So when AJ, it's, it's his yeah. show, he's the main, could he lead? You think that team could go? He's, they keep feeding yo, him? Listen, he's, he's the real deal. Like, let's not get it crazy. He's, he's probably, in my opinion, if you take away the injuries, like he's, he's top three, yo. Right now he's young. I never do that with the young running backs, but he's top three. He has talent, like he's fast, he's strong, he's physical, he's shifty. They can go, they can follow behind him, I think so. But this is how the NFL works. Like, for example, if he doesn't play, right, like it's a big deal. But they make a bigger deal if Carson Wentz doesn't, doesn't play, right? Or if yeah, yeah. he has two fumbles that doesn't play well, 40 yards on 22 carries, a fumble or so, that's a big deal. But it's not a bigger deal than Carson Wentz, two interceptions. You see what I'm saying? Throwing like, a he's the main guy. So the quarterback is always going to be the main Win or lose, you know. Answer, I, I think, with the NFL, that's how it works. I it's think some bull. It's some bull, but it is what it is. <laughs> and there's a half a billion dollars being paid to those guys, so it's almost like, hey, you're going to get all the winning and all the losing hate, and you just got to deal with that whole thing. Go ahead, Tom. Lashawn. So in Baltimore, Latavius Murray, Devonta Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, they're all 30 years old. Devonta Freeman's looking good. Latavius Murray's looking good. Why do you think? And Lev arguably had the best career out of all of those guys so far. Why do you think Lev was the odd man out and getting cut in uh, Baltimore? I can't, I can't answer that. I, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I was looking at that the other day, like, why did they let Le'Veon go? And I was just looking at all the numbers, maybe because the yards per carry. But I, I, they're all got low, low per carry, yards per carry. They all have their low averages. You know what I mean? Everybody you just talked about. So I didn't really understand that. I'm going to ask him to, to find out. But this is what I will tell you, though, right? Because I watched some dudes play. I can go out there right now and, and give you and give you some yards right now. <laughs> right there. I was about to say, hold on. I was right about, now. I was about to say, as you got older, what did you notice in your game? Did you know what went first? What did you notice as you got older? What what did you have to evolve and change in your game as you got older? As I got older, right? This is something that I really noticed. Like it jumped out to me. I was so used to making guys miss so easy and like looking for big highlights. That was like my thing, right? But as I got older, I was like, yo, it, it, it's not worth it because um, I might not get the same opportunities. Like, so back when I was younger, I might get 20 touches a game. When you're older, it might get 10, 11. So I got to make the best of them. So me trying to juke a guy, make a miss, look bad, you know what I'm saying? I might only get eight yards where I could hit the hole and get going for another 12. Those are little things that I, I think I, I've learned um, um, as I got older. So you had to sacrifice the excitement for the production. And this is something, yeah. as you get older, you kind of realize that and evolve as a player. How come some of these quarterbacks can't stop throwing interceptions? <laughs> How come, as some of these quarterbacks get older, they just can't flip the switch and be like, oh, it's better for my team not to throw it into quadruple coverage every time? How come that doesn't happen, LaShawn? Yeah, I, I, that's a hard question, man, because they do it a lot. I don't know. I think <laughs> it's a passing league, bro. I just they, I watched Mike Mike um, White. I mean, he was just – like, he was doing – I think he was doing that shit on purpose. Like, I'm about to just throw <laughs> picks, right? Right? I'm not going nowhere, but that's a hard question. Yeah, I, I think another thing is – to answer your last question is, is being more in shape when I got when I got older. You, you're younger, you can just get up and just run and roll. Like, I just miss Frank Gore. We just sparred. I'm at the gym right now. You can see him. He's boxing. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Hey, how's he look? Hey, he looks. He's going to fucking dominate, right? I mean, this Ooh. is. Listen, listen. Listen. If you're a bad man, bring your checkbook or your wallet and put the money on Frank Gore. I'm telling you right there. <laughs> So we've got hands of stone, baby. Hey, we've been saying this. The dude played football running back with no pads, basically. He didn't wear pads. I saw the shoulder pads he wore. Do, do, do you see his face? He, he ain't playing. Look, <laughs> man, he ain't playing. Listen, <laughs> he ain't playing. So we train, we train every year, and then we just started boxing. And uh, he's good, bro. You'll see. Watch. I'm going to the fight. 
How long has he been uh, training, do you think? And is this something he's been looking forward to and excited about? And he also came out and said, hey, if any teams need a running back, I can still do – I'm in great shape right now because yeah, he's Yeah, like, listen, listen, hey, hey, by the way, right, I can run the ball too. But in the meantime, I'll knock some guys out just to let you guys know. <laughs> oh, that's that's an athlete. Oh, that's but, but, no, he's in uh, – I won't talk about how many years. Cause, you know, I don't want to get no tips. But he, he's doing good. I mean, he looks good. I'm happy to see him. He's going to put a show on. Uh, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, LaShawn, uh, you obviously were in KC for the Super Bowl and Tampa. Is there anything that tops a boat parade, or you know, can you also say that the Kansas City one was just as good? I didn't say, say the last part. I'm sorry. It was, was the- Kansas City as good as the boat parade? No. Yeah, okay. That's no. a little chilly. I mean, I mean like, it's cold. It's, it's, the weather was different. It was a lot colder. We was on a boat. You know, I mean, let's, let's be real. How many times do you think you've seen Tom Brady wasted? <laughs> True, yeah. I could have made two hundred million dollars off that NFT on that picture with him. You know what I'm saying? So we had a ball, bro. We got in the boat. All the teammates, and I, I said before that we all were a great team. Everybody loved each other. There was a lot of stuff going on. I can't talk on the air about, but we had a great time. Oh. Great time. Co- look, look, look. Coaches included. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we don't need to burn every bridge, I guess. Go ahead, Todd. <laughs> LaShawn, what about a team like the Titans? Do you think, like, they've continued to win without Derrick Henry, but he's like, he, you know, he was accounting for 75% of their offense. Do you think they'll be able to keep winning with him being out for an extended period? I think I think so. I, I think they find a way to win. Like, they're, they're, they're the old, like, fashion football. They run the ball over and over again. There's some games where, where, where Derrick Henry would have, like, 20 carries for – 40, 50 yards, right? And he'll bust a long one because they, they run it over and over again. They wear the defense down. Their defense plays very well. They get turnovers. They play physical. They, they stop. That's what they did with the Rams. They just play physical. And then Tannehill, bro, he plays solid enough. He controls the game. Like, he's one of the best game managers I've seen in a long time since probably Alex Smith. So I think that team is there for real. Before, I didn't believe so, but I got to tip my hat to them. They're, they're pretty good. That was always the saying about that Tennessee Titans offense with Derrick Henry is it doesn't matter how successful the run is in the first mm-hmm. half. We're going to keep doing this because in the third and fourth quarter, they're going to be so beat down that one of these is going to go. As a running back, can you see it in a team whenever they can't take it anymore if you guys are, are running all over them? Like, for instance, the Niners the other night against the Rams. I assume they all knew, like, hey, we can just physically dominate this Rams team. Do you, do you have that feeling? Is there conversations about that? For sure. I, I think they knew, right, that we're going to physically beat the hell out of them. They showed it, that they ran the ball all game. And it isn't like my style. See, like, every style is different. But when we have a team where we run the ball a lot, um, I can see it. And it works for me because I'm not like a bruiser. So when I know you're tired, I'm going to the side. I'm in the edge. I'm outrunning you, right? I'm cutting back because you're fatigued. You're tired. You, you're getting double teamed all night. Then, then you know, guys run it to the left. Then they play action. They roll it out to the right. AJ, you know how that is. Like, you chase somebody over and over again. It's third and short, third and three, third and two. You got to get a stop. Oh, they get another first down. You know what I mean? You got three, four more downs over and over again. It's like a snowball. It's like a snowball rolling downhill, and you can't – whatever you try to do defensively, you're like, all right, we, all right, here we go. Let's load up. Boom, they run a counter or something. The dude's wide. Like, that's – it's it's a brutal thing to be on the other side of if a team can run and you know you can't stop them. It's it's tough, but like a guy that can't be stopped, Nick Chubb. I know I I saw something where you listed your top three running backs right now, no, and Nick like Chubb. That. I don't know if he was one or two. He was in the top three. Would the he, would was he get more? He was one. Okay. <laughs> would he get more pub nationally if he was like he was louder and celebrated more, and he wasn't such just a seems like he is the most driven, focused professional. I will say this though, like. <laughs> I've never heard the man talk. <laughs> he was and good then, on this then, show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then he, he came on. Oh, he, yeah. yeah, he was yeah. good. He, he gave us a great conversation. Yo, he, he doesn't his, – his outfit looks like the, the mannequin, the, right? He doesn't the poster. Yep, he looks like the poster. But, and another thing is, like, I mean, it's you switch him and Odell Beckham. Like, if, if he played for the New York Giants and did the same stats, right, he would be like the man. You see what I'm saying? So, that he's with the Browns. It's like, okay, I mean, it's the Browns. He's a great player, yo. He, he, he looks the way he looks. I mean, you might judge him, and, and he don't really talk as much. You don't really see him, but he, he talks very loud in the game, on the field. I love his game. He's he physical. He's tough. He has good eyes. A lot of running backs don't have good eyes. And he has good feet to be that strong. So he's, he's for real. Do you go into a game thinking if you break that first uh, level, like there's nobody on this team that can catch me? For instance, it feels like whenever Chubb gets through, he doesn't get caught. He's gone. Jonathan Taylor, same thing. Is there some games you go in and you're like, okay, if I can get through this first 
this first wave here. It's off the races. And then is there some places where there's like a very fast team that you change the way you you run or anything like that? Yes, yeah, I think the team base, depending on like, you know, uh, like, okay, for example, so like the Rams, you got to run at them. They're fast. They're fast up front and they're fast linebackers. So you got to go right at them. There's some of the teams that's bigger, stronger guys that are not as fast. I always think about the team and like who I'm going against. My mindset, the first guy is always going to miss. So I'll, I'll run the ball and, you know, defenders coming. I don't even see him. I'm looking at the next dude because he's going to miss me. So I'm trying to, how can I miss him and then make him, you know, go deep? You know, how can I get a break along with So I think a lot of them guys, man, especially like Chubbs, he knows that the secondary don't really want to tackle him. Like that one long run he had, the 60 yarder um, against the, um, what was that against? The Bengals. Um, the Bengals. He didn't want no parts of that. <laughs> you know what? And, and real quick, I remember when uh, back in the day, right, I would watch Marshawn Lynch tapes, right? He'll have 130 yards, 40 yards, and I would see a guy come up to hit him, right? And he would be tipped on to hit him. And look, Marshawn would run right around him and score, right? I would play the dude. He can't wait to hit me. I got to, like, shake him up. <laughs> and I would, I would be like, yo, my man, I watch you on tape tackle Marshawn like a straight. Mm. Yeah. Why are you trying to tackle, you know, why you trying to tackle me? Yeah. So that's a great example of dudes that, when you a physical game, you wear and wear it over and over again. You know you don't want to get tackled. Where I'll make a guy miss. Now the next time I go against him, he's stuttering his feet because he don't know if I'm gonna shake him. He's he don't want to get shook. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. How many times you get tackled by that first guy? How many times you get tackled? Never. Not Never. One, <laughs> not one time. Not one time. Hey, am I lying? Am I lying, dog? <laughs> no, you are not lying. Sir. <laughs> what was is that from basketball? What was your? Is it just natural shake? What did you have? I'm a basketball player, bro. Like, I was a huge Allen Iverson fan, so I had a ball out so wild because I'm, you know, like Allen Iverson. It just can't, it just, I don't know, man. Just, you embarrass, you cool. embarrass people. And then even when I, the snow in Buffalo, and I, I assume oh, yeah. it's because you grew up in Philly or whatever, and there's not great weather, you just were able to have a balance while that nobody else, it seems like anytime people get outside of their frame, it's over in slick conditions. For you, it seemed like nothing affected you. It was... It was really, it was rather remarkable, to be honest. It was pretty, and you, you know didn't what? Fumble. There, it made no sense. I never, like, the first time I played in the snow was in the NFL. People always ask me that. I was like, nah, my first time was the Eagle game, and the second time was just, was the Bills. I just, I don't know. Uh, Zito. The, the, uh, the, the football guys was watching me, right? Achilles <laughs> and, and Hercules. <laughs> for Achilles. Me, you know? Achilles. <laughs> and Hercules. Uh, Zito told me in my ear before we get you out of here, and we can't thank you enough for joining us straight from the gym after sparring with Frank Gore, who will be fighting uh, Darren Williams yep. in a couple. Hey, Darren, he look, he look kind of chubby, man. Like, oh, I think, you see him? He like a little wedgie and all that stomach. I, man, look. It's easy win for Frank Gore, baby. Let's get it. Hey, I thought the height differential was going to be different. I thought the height differential was going to be different. NBA guy, NFL guy, and it wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. So I don't know about the reach either. Yeah, you know, he's, nah, he's taller. He's taller. Yeah, certainly yeah. taller, but I thought it was going to be, like, much No, uh, no, I think, yeah, D-Will, he was, he was, like, big. he was a big point guard. You know what I mean? He wasn't really super. He like 6'3". Yeah, it's I can't wait to watch cool. it. I, by the way, Frank Gore played football with no pads for like 20 years yeah. in a position yep, where you had yep. to get hit. No, uh, no shirt, no socks, no knee pads. No, the original CTE helmet. I mean, it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, right, yeah right. this dude is, you know, just an absolute boulder. Uh, Zito says he has a photo before we let you go that they found on. Oh, AJ. Ooh. Oh, oh, no. no. I think I made, I think I made that time. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got me. Though. He might have got me. I think on that one. I think so. Really? Yeah. By, yeah. Probably by the way, I, I, had a, I, had a, I had about one, about one forty-five that game. Just to be honest. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't two forty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it could have been I, if you I didn't make that, that tackle right there. Oh man, that is awesome. Uh, Lashawn, thank you for joining us. You absolutely crush today and for us. So we appreciate it so much, man. Yep. Thanks for having me, guys. Yep. I love your show, man. You guys work well together, brothers. Oh, us, me and him. Yep. You like the crazy wild one. He's like the conservative, chill, relax. There we go. Uh, toxic. Yeah. The yeah. adult. Yeah. I'm the adult in the room. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Ladies and gentlemen, Lashawn McCoy. Thanks, man. Yeah. 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 Hey, don't be trying to spin his words, okay, into a shot. I don't think that was happening there. That was a little bit I mean, rude. that's a shot. Would there's hey, guess what though? There's no adults in the world. You know that. Oh yeah. As we grow older, we do learn that those who we thought maybe were the responsible ones. Aren't yep. not so responsible. After that's crazy, all. but LaShawn, well, unbelievable. Well, well. I yeah. mean, that's a great conversation. Go ahead, Tom. Age, would you rather, like in your career, would you rather go against a back like him or against a back like Frank Gore? 
I, I honestly used to think about that. I think it depends on the day. Sometimes Weather. I'm like, all right, I don't want to. Ch- I don't want to chase this dude around. And then some days I'm like, all right, I don't want to even touch Frank Gore. So I want to try to chase the scat back around. So just like the running back probably feels faster some days, and a quarterback feels like he's throwing the ball better some days, even at that highest of high levels. Was there some days you showed up and you're like, oh, I feel fast today? Like, is there? Was there any of that? I There's definitely days you feel better than others. Absolutely. When it comes to game day, yeah, that happens. So for me, my leg would feel stronger some days. Like, oh, the ball seems to be flying today a little bit differently. And then you look at the stats and it's like .001 yard different. But <laughs> in my head, I'm like, oh, it seems like it's really going. For you, was that what it The body felt good? You felt quick? You felt smart? Like, what was the – was there a different feeling? Yeah, some like all of a sudden you've been playing in cold weather forever, and then you're down, you find yourself in Miami at warm ups. Like, geez, this is amazing. I feel like I'm 15 again. Like that kind of stuff <laughs> definitely happens. But then, you know, second quarter starts, and you're looking at it like we got three quarters left. This guy, I am so <laughs> tired. I can't breathe. It is the hottest I've ever seen. This, this is really thick air, isn't it? I mean, this is <laughs> unbelievable. That is. Hey, because you were so good at football, and we forget that because the toxicity that flows out of your yeah, mouth. That's right. That's right. You know what I mean? I, I think we, we're talking about LaShawn McCoy's stats <laughs> with how much he has done. And it's like, oh, this guy's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. We get to talk to a rock for brains guy. That's yeah. right. Every single yeah. day that should probably be in the conversation at least as well. <laughs> that's right. And you never, ever would say that. Ever. Which is another reason why let's put this guy in a goddamn Hall of Famer. That's right. Right now. Oh, no. Zito sent me a pick. All right. We're back. I made that one, Zito. Is it not a tackle? <laughs> <laughs> he had about 145. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did have 145 that night. He does. Two lace tackle, I bet. Hey, yeah. AJ. Yeah. AJ. What's up? Thank you for your service, dude. Hey, oh, it's a playoff game here. We won this one to advance. What's, What's the I'm final score? That's the uh, the Revis touchdown. That we punt, won. I don't know. That punt return by Revis that was going around the internet, and friends of mine were liking it. Jeez. Oh, come on. Come on. What's that all about? Revis retweeted it, obviously. Come Derek on. Kinder, the one in hell of a block. The one in 0, or 07 that he was talking about when I was a freshman, he went for like 150 against WVU. Yeah, yeah. He was, LaShawn did very well, but Revis, that return happening, you know? Yeah. yeah. A lot of dancing on my grave because I was the 12th tackle he broke <laughs> sure. that game, Come whatever, on. There, that play, however it was. Um, we won the game. Oh, okay. there you go. It's all matters. It's all matters. It's all that matters. Wish we would have won a different one, but we won that game. <laughs> We're back right. in four minutes with Jordan Poyer. I can't wait to talk to him. How about LaShawn, man? Yeah, Fucking yeah. thank you, Shady. We awesome. appreciate that. We're back in four with Jordan Poyer, AJ Hawk, the Toxic Table, the Hammer Dime Cowboy, and all the boys in the back. We'll say you fuck. Staples? Is that what it's still called? It's going to happen. I was actually thinking that last night as I, oh shit, this game's on. This is awesome. I'm like, where are they? Oh, they're at the Staples Center. I'm like, that's a hell of a sponsorship deal by Staples, by the way. Mm-hmm. That that building is just known as the Staples Center. If it changes, I think it would be pretty, it's like Sears. The Sears Tower. True. Yeah. yeah. It's like Sears. Oh, yeah. Which is now Seattle changed too. The Willis. What's that? Seattle changed. What is the, what's the Seahawks new stadium name? Qualcomm. No, Century Link. The yeah, Link. Century Link. Yeah, but I think Link Staples anymore. has been. Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't think that's as like. I mean, it is a loud place. I understand Staples Center. Yes, it, it's Lumen Field being a now. Sponsor thing. It's not like hey, MSG is Madison Square Garden. That's not a sponsor. That's the name of the building. But yeah, when you hear Staples Center, you just think that's the building. Yeah, you think that's a building. That's how long they've been the sponsor of that thing. But everywhere, just like to your point, what you said, Seattle's changed their name. We used to have the Bankers Life Fieldhouse, and yeah. now it's like. Grander field. Grand, right like whatever it is, it's like kind of an in- Lucas Oil Stadium. When this changes, that'll be an interesting change. Yeah. Mm. It feels like Staples Center in LA with the one of the most popular teams in the history has remained some. Does anybody go to Staples? You guys still go to Staples? I just I assume they was. closed like 3,400 yeah. Staples yeah. every single year. They, and it's just, do, they just try to get as much money as needed to remain the sponsor yeah. of the Staples Center. They still have paper. I don't go to big box paper stores. I get it from a nice <laughs> local establishment. That's very nice of you. That's very nice. What, I mean, hopefully they've gotten their an online game going. Man. What's that? Hopefully they've gotten their online, you know, they have they sell enough online to make it because you know they're brick and mortar stores, I doubt. As Dig says, he doesn't visit big box stores like that. Yeah, that's classic. <laughs> this is classic like red box best buy that's right. uh stream situation. I just saw it on yep. here, uh, lifetime agreement. Oh, so oh, nineteen ninety nine they changed it. Two thousand nine it was due up, and then they did a lifetime right. To do the they have center. any money on that? Uh, do they know what the number? Uh, it just the first number on here says a hundred million. So per that year. I don't know how long that would be. Lifetime. Paid out over what fifty years? You think? 
Yeah, what's lifetime? Is that at the, as long as the building stands? So they would have to build a new building? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, if they the want out, I guess, it. what do they have to do? Yeah, especially if the company's out of business. Mm -hmm. And let's say like a sports book company comes along in Los Angeles and has the Lakers in there and goes, oh, I would like to make this building our building. This would be an awesome FanDuel Center. Mm. Yeah. How much does that cost? Well, we got to dig up the Staples Company. They're out. They're dead. Let's go find out how much this would be worth. That's a fascinating thing. But no matter what the case is. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Coaches Up Chuck Wednesday, November 17th. Hell yeah. Just had an incredible conversation with Sean McCoy. Can't thank him enough for his time and joining us now as a man who Zito has told me one thing and one thing alone about his appearance today. He is yoked. Okay. <laughs> that is what Zito said. Sense. Zito said, wait until this dude shows up on the screen. He is absolutely yoked. He's a stud safety for the Buffalo Bills out of Oregon State. Leads the Bills with four interceptions and second on the team in tackles. This dude flies around. This weekend, he's going to see Jonathan fucking Taylor, though. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Jordan Poyer. Yeah! What's up, dude? What's up, guys? How you doing, man? It's good to be back on here. It's good to see you guys. Hey, it's a fascinating week for you to come back on the show. You know, Colts are traveling up there. You know, there's a little bit of that going on. How's preparation going for the week? It's you guys great. struggling? It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> come on now. Come on now. It's great. We just had practice, man. It was a good practice. Uh, understand, man. We just, John Taylor's is a damn good back. He's coming in here. We know what type of game it's going to be, man. It's going to be a physical-ass game, so... I'd be ready to play. I feel like you guys enjoy that, though. That's why I think a lot of people have rallied around the Buffalo Bills and this team that has been put together by Bean. Whenever we watch you guys play, it seems like you guys are doing it in a fashion that you would want your team to be doing it. You guys seem to have fun. You seem to be very physical. You seem to be a tight group. And it seems like no matter what, the Buffalo Bills will always be an underdog story. This year, you guys had a couple setbacks, right? You lose to the Jacksonville yep. Jaguars. Nobody expected expects that Pittsburgh Steelers early how has the ride of the season been and where are you guys at now going forward yeah that's exactly what it is man every NFL season is a is a ride really you think about it, I think all the teams I mean you saw Baltimore uh, uh, the other night losing losing that game this and really um, you know the season is all about Sean I remember Sean in 2017 he said you know it's not it's not the most talented team it's a team that can stick together the longest through the ups and downs of a season you know through the ups and downs of the game you think about it, every season has ups and downs, and obviously ain't nobody want to go to Jacksonville and lose all out in that fashion. But you know, it's always ways to find ways to bounce back and get better. And and uh, you know, it's not it's not you know about last week. It's how you respond in the next week because you know you win, lose, or draw the week before. You got to get your ass ready to play next Sunday, next Thursday, next whatever day you got it is. You got to play, and nobody's gonna feel sorry for you. So it's a good group of guys to be around, man, and, and guys really understand you know how to win how to lose because there's a way to lose too you know it sucks but you know it's a way to lose having to you know learn from the tape and really move on so it's a good group of guys to be around and, and you know it's uh it's a, it's, it's a fun team to be on hell yeah jordan do you and uh and fellow safety micah hyde ever sit there in the film room and watch some old clips of what safeties used to be able to do in the nfl and just <laughs> decapitating people and think like man what could have been 
Right, and the the game's changed a lot too. Obviously, since then, you know, obviously the the style of play, um, off offensively and defensively, and obviously the rules now, um, with with all the, you know, we could probably hit a guy, you know, this, yeah, you know, with this. Uh, hey, you know. how how do you do that? How do you judge that at that max speed? Because it is your position that is, and now linebackers obviously have to hit on any crossing routes, but the safety position through the history of time was normally the highlights that are completely banned from right. the game. Now, how do you do that? How do you adjust that? Is it just being an athlete? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of that. You know, I think just you know understanding your target line when you're coming in to make a play. Um, and sometimes it's unavoidable, unavoidable. You know, the game happens so fast. You know, I've gotten. You know, I had a I had a, uh, against Travis Kelsey. He ran a seven route, and I, and I and I hit him pretty good. But it was just kind of a bang bang play. I got fined for it. Um, you know, it wasn't intentional or anything like that. But it's just the game of football is a violent game, uh, and you know, it, it's times where you know I feel like I got to make a play either on the man or the ball, and I got to hit him in order for him to, to, to not catch the football, obviously. But, you know, bang, bang plays happen. The refs see it certain ways, and that's just the game of football that we live in right now. Do you appeal those fines, and do you get to explain oh. yourself? And what do they say? Do you represent yourself in court? What do they say back? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a process. Uh, and obviously explaining, you know, what happened in the in the play, uh, a little bit of a process, and then you get it, you get, a, you get it back about a month later, and they tell you whether or not, you know, what you said was was right or what was wrong so you kind of put the hand put it in put it in their hands and they then they decide what to do with it after that so but, uh, have you had success in the courtroom or not i haven't haven't uh, <laughs> <laughs> about 50 50 right now um, you know, i got some good people representing me but it just hasn't came my way a lot of times so, uh, uh, that's time, you know. Uh, the, the safety tandem you and Hyde is talked about as like the best safety tandem in the league. And you two obviously know each other well, and there's been a lot of success there. How does that help you? What is it? Does that change anything? Do you guys recognize that? Is it something you take a lot of pride in, or is it just a natural thing that has happened immediately? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy how it's all came, you know, full circle since we came in here in 2017. Because when we came in here in 2017, I remember we were picking out our jerseys. And we were like, dude, like, you know, like, let's be the best. Like, we could really be the best, you know, doing this. And let's, you know, obviously our goal we got here is to win a championship. And we're still on that ride. But, you know, um, we're still, you know, we, we've we known each other for so long. And it's crazy. Like, our families are close off the field. And we've been playing for, with each other for so long. You know, it's crazy to see things come full circle. And we just want to continue to get better, man. Um, we still feel like the sky's the limit for us. We still feel like we're not talked about enough. We still feel like, you know, we're the underdog. Um, we still feel like everybody else wants to talk about the Jamal Adams, the Tyrant Matthews, the, you know, this, that, and the other. That's cool. That's all. Awesome. Hey, they ain't saying so shit about guys. us. <laughs> That's awesome. But look, but look, you know, you look at what we've been doing the last five years here in Buffalo. You know, you compare that to a lot of other, a lot of other guys around the league. You tell me, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we're not allowed guys like that. We, we understand we got to come in here to work every single day. Um, and, our, and our game is going to speak for itself. That's awesome. Hey, what's it like? Play, practicing against Josh Allen, like does that dude? When you guys are going ones on ones in camp, I, I would imagine he likes to get creative and try to look you on. Like, and obviously uh, his arm strength is unbelievable. Like, how difficult is that? It's crazy to see how much he's grown up since he first got here in 2018, and like seeing Mike and I's looks, you know, in our disguises, like during OTAs and then training camp, and then now he, <laughs> we'll get back there. We'll get we'll get back there and say we're doing like a two minute drill. So he's got to read the defense, and he'll he'll be back there like, all right, I see Micah here. He's going to do this, and Jordan's over here. He's going to do this. <laughs> it's like, dude, like, all right, you understand. You get it. All right, cool. But no, he's I mean, he's grown up so much in the last three years he's been here. It's amazing to see his growth. And I'm, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, how far he continues to grow. You guys paid him. That's huge in the locker room, right? And like, huge, knowing man. that's a big deal, right? Huge, man. He's a huge leader on our team, uh, fun guy to be around. Um, and, and just it, it's just huge uh, to know that, you know, he's our guy. Did you ask him about, like, DeForest Buckner, or Darius Leonard or anything coming on Sunday? You know what I mean? Arr, arr, arr. You know what I mean? <laughs> Your dogs are barking. You know what I mean? I'm sure, they got, I'm sure they got a good game plan. I'm sure they got a good all game plan. Right, all right, all right. Go ahead, <laughs> Jordan, obviously you guys have kind of taken one more step each year. And last year, you know, you were right in the thick of things. Like, could you feel, like, that the expectations were different going into this season? Obviously you expect to compete for a Super Bowl, but, like, you know, then everyone in the media is picking you guys to go to the Super Bowl. Like, is that something you guys could feel in the building? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just we understand that we're a good football team. You know, we understand, obviously, the talent is one thing. But, 
um, the camaraderie of the guys offensively and defensively. You know, guys are really – we grinding for each other, man. And, you know, win, lose, or draw. Like I said earlier, we found ways to bounce back off of, off of bad losses and, and come and show, you know, the NFL what we really are about. And so, uh, you know, you definitely felt the energy in the beginning of the season. And, you know, obviously you, you still got to put the work in. And that's the difference – that I've seen between this team and other teams that I've been on is just, you know, yeah, we have the talent, but also guys come in here. I mean, guys are in here an hour and a half before our first meeting, doing their lifts, doing, I mean, just doing the little things, you know, to, to, to be the best version of ourselves, be the best version team of our, that we could be, you know? Um, so like I said earlier, it's a just fun team to be around. And we definitely felt that energy early on. I asked this question earlier. Why do you think some teams are like that in some art? You know, because it seems like it's a very easy recipe. Hey, you if you guys like each other off the field, you're probably going to play better. If you put in extra work, you're probably going to play better. Like, how come that doesn't happen everywhere, you think? Yeah, I think there's, uh, you know, and I've been on teams where I've had, we've had plenty of talent. Um, I've been on a couple teams in Cleveland. We had plenty of talent. Team in Philly, we had plenty of talent. Just, you know, I think the work, ethic, the work ethic and then obviously the camaraderie of the guys, you know, obviously we've been in this system, our defense for four or five three, four, five years now. And, you know, no, 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 no slander on Buffalo, but there's not a whole lot to do out here. In Buffalo. <laughs> when we, you know, when it's, when it's, when it's time after a game, everybody's kicking in with each other, you know, during the holidays, families are all kicking in with each other. So it's a really, really close group uh, of guys out here on the team. And when you put that together, you know, when it's, when it's crunch time in the, in the, in the fourth quarter and you, you're not looking at your teammate, man, you're looking at your brother, you know, this is really my brother that I've been grinding for. So, like I said, it's a fun team to be on, and, and we're not perfect, and we just want to continue to get better. Sounds like a great group. Sorry about Sunday, dude. It's coming up. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Jordan, I'm not saying I'm not saying this week is one of those examples, but like, do you get excited going a week when you know that a quarterback potentially, you know, well, may give you a couple chances well, to uh, to take one the other way? Wow, well, wow, well, well. I feel like that's a that's a trick question that I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay away from that. <laughs> I think I got a little, a little trouble with Mike White last week saying some stuff, so I'm gonna stay. Away from that. <laughs> what did you say? I didn't hear it. Uh, right, no, no, you don't have to say it again. We don't need to get you in more shit. But isn't it fascinating if you were as an established vet now at this point who knows the game? If you were to say anything that would potentially be a little bit out of a standard box answer, everybody would think, "Oh, Jordan Poyer's cancer oh, team. He's, he's motivating the other squad. It's unbelievable." Right. Right. And it's, I mean, it's tough, you know, but at the same time, you know, you understand that. You understand that. Hey, you don't want to give them no fire, you know, because I, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to give anybody any fire. I know if I heard somebody about something about somebody saying something about me, that just, that would just piss me off and be like, <laughs> all right, let's go. You know, well, let's go. Then. Hey, we're going to, I guess we're going to have to do this, I guess. Carson, Carson, by the way. Much bigger than he looks on film. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. he is. Yeah, he is. Hey, he's big boy. He likes to run, too. Spray oh, down. He run. Hey, show him how he runs, Pat. Oh, he lumbers out there. I mean, he's <laughs> like, he, he is a lumbering <laughs> guy. Yeah, watch those knees, though. They come flying. Uh -huh. They come flying up there. Uh, we, can't, we cannot thank you enough for joining us in the middle of a work week. Uh, I appreciate you, you so much. Time, yeah. And awesome. I literally, when I found out you were coming on, uh, they told me about your store. I checked it out this morning and we pulled it up. I want to make sure we pub this. How much yeah. time, how much time are you putting into this? Because there's some very good shit in here. I see you modeling yeah. too. Oh, hey, model. Oh, oh JP21. <laughs> this is awesome. You got a great line in here. I appreciate it. Yeah, we did a lot of content in the off season. Uh, uh, and, you know, I have my group Avalon Sports and, and shout out Daver. They've been busting their ass, God. just putting it all together. And I'm able to just kind of, you know, just say yes or no, drop it, don't drop it. And, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been going well. So if you guys, you know, check it out, jporter.com. Uh, I got a big dove sweater. I got a JP hoodie. I got some hats. Hey, Ooh. holiday Ooh. season. Yes, holiday. sir. Yeah, let's go. Holiday season's coming out. <laughs> Hey, yes, have you thought about the future after football? Is this something you would want to get into, or are you so focused on uh, being the best football player you can be? I'm definitely focused on being the best football player I can be. You know, I'm 30 now, so obviously it's still, it does, you know, click in my head, you know, a lot of, you know, you know what, if, what if that ends tomorrow? So, yeah, I got a lot of stuff in my head, but really I'm just I'm focused on, on, on trying to be the best football player I can be, best father I could be, and, and, best, and best husband I can be. Yeah, maybe be, maybe be an incredible husband and father on Sunday. Take the day off. It's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. Oh, okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. Because that would be a bad example, bad. obviously, right. as a father. Yeah, oh. bad. yeah okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, have a great one. We appreciate Thanks, you guys. so much. Uh, Shop.jpoyer.com. Get the absolute fire flames that this man has put together. We appreciate you.
issue. Safety for the Buffalo Bills, Jordan Poyer. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, man. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Don't be awesome this weekend. Hey, there's a lot of <laughs> you can tell. There's a lot of really good dudes in the NFL. Never get talked about, right? Because yeah. negativity hogs publicity, and it's always an easy catchphrase to be like the the good far outweighs the bad or whatever. It's like no, for real though. Like the story in Jordan Poyer. I don't know how often he does interviews. I have no idea. I I, I don't think I fully knew who he was until he came on the show. And by the time he came on the show, he already had an incredible football resume. Mm -hmm. He was awesome. I'm like, the NFL is filled with so many fucking cool guys. Could you imagine being teammates with Sean McCoy? That would have yeah. been hysterical. He, I mean, I would not have liked to practice against him, especially in training <laughs> camp. You're doing like one-on-one -on -one pass routes with the running backs. Good luck. Have fun with that one. AJ's going into the season with zero confidence. I've made no tackles. <laughs> yeah, for real. I, mean, I can't cover anybody. I can't do it. I don't even know how to tackle with him. Instead, it was you and Kuhn running your big Hell heads yeah. into each other yeah. every yeah. single day. I don't even think about that because I was just watching those periods. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it was fun for you. You're like, oh, good. These guys are killing each other. Let's oh, go watch. These guys are <laughs> fucking getting after it. Oh, did you see the shake? That was yeah, that was actually on me. And uh, the next four plays, that was the only thing I thought of. And I got dumped <laughs> yeah. on three times. Like that. I don't even think about that. Much different football life, you and I. Uh, and as this... Beautiful coaches up. What a fucking day. Yeah, yeah packed yeah. show. Great show. I, coming, Juice. In, coming into the show, I, no, I'm like, what are we going to talk about? I was like, well, idiot. Everybody else is going to do the talk. <laughs> <laughs> we had it. There was some really good stuff that happened today, AJ, and I'm, I'm very, very thankful. I saw a little bit of Jay, by the way. Sorry to cut you off. I saw a little bit. I thought that was really cool of him to talk about his whole, I don't know about his book or anything, but I just caught the little part when he started talking about he and Strahan. Yeah, very thankful for the Strahan relationship, and he was he was about to start crying. I think like yeah. breaking down in there. I thought it was awesome. Like Jay, no one thinks of Jay as that guy, but I'm like, hey, there's a lot of different angles to everybody, man. Unbreakable coming out January 25th, I believe it is on pre-order. Shop .com. Lashawn McCoy, he has a couple. Uh, he has a couple podcasts, doesn't he? He does podcasts. He, he should if he doesn't, because that dude is very hey, well spoken. Hey, ASAP, by the way. ASAP. That is a. Yeah. He should be. See, LaShawn McCoy probably never get on TV, right? Because of, as soon as he gets. He was on, on NFL Network like a week ago. Was he? The full time gig? He was doing, no, uh, no, no. Good morning. Good morning. Football. football. Put him in there. Remember, yeah. he, was, Remember, he was rocking the sweet bandana with. with him. Oh, Brad Michaels. Michaels. That's yeah, right. Because that is just not. He's not the classic TV. I don't think he's going to start burying people. You know, like, I, I yeah. don't think. It seems like he is a story. He's awesome. I fucking love chatting with him. Same with Jordan and Chuck. Whenever Chuck starts diving Chuck's in there. Awesome. Yeah. All right, let's get to the phones. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up on the phones, which I have been teasing for two hours. <laughs> and I do apologize for that. Let's go to Corey in St. Louis on the 5-Hour Energy phone line. Go to 5 Use promo code MACFI. Get 10% off your order of any 5-Hour Energy products that are there, including 15 beautiful flavors. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Yeah, if you need a little energy from here in the next five hours, go ahead and hammer a 5-Hour Energy that tastes much more delightful than they did when they originally came out, although the effectiveness is still just as damn good. Go ahead there, Corey in St. Louis. Hey, Pat. AJ Boys, how you doing? Keep, Keep it moving. moving. Lifelong Packers fan, but I've always respected Matthew Stafford. However, it's pretty obvious what's going on with the Rams. Stafford was traded from one cursed team to another because Kroenke screwed St. Louis by moving to L.A. Oh, oh shit, dude. Is that lawsuit that's going to end up probably costing billions? And billions of dollars between St. Louis and Kroenke, who said, how about 100 million? <laughs> and they said, no, nah, no, nah, that ain't going to be it. I wonder how that'll end, AJ. Will uh, uh, an expansion squad go to St. Louis? Ooh. Ooh. Well, I, I know they're talking about expansion teams, but I don't know if it's St. Louis top of the list. I saw they're an, on there. an absurd number thrown out by four mm -hmm. D forty total. Yes. Oh, I, I thought you were doing a D's nuts thing. Like, a, no, 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 I thought you were saying no, like no, no. A, a person named no, D too, said this too thing, old for that. and I was like, D, I know Dan Zeus. I don't yeah, know. No, uh, the <laughs> guy that Gumpy likes to call Doctor threw out the number forty. Oh, really? So the NFL, the, is like, end number. the NFL is like, hey, listen, all these other minor leagues that are going on are showcasing that there ain't no way there's that many NFL football players yeah. on the planet for the quality of football that is in the NFL. Teams are already getting, you know, turned yeah. over yeah. Uh, at a, a rapid rate. Eight more teams? No, that has, to be, a, that has to be a negotiation. It's too much. And maybe shoot for Not stars. Not one year. Like, no, you mean yeah, in yeah. the next 50 years? Or what do you mean? Yeah, I didn't click on the article. I just saw the number. 
<laughs> yeah, the one you're talking about was St. Louis, Toronto, London, and San Antonio. Yeah, San Antonio. And Toronto, by the way, the Canadian whatevers. Yeah. Have you ever clicked on the article, Diggs? Sure. It's a great question. Diggs, Not this one. Diggs is the picture of the problem in the world right now. Though. Have you noticed when you retweet articles nowadays, it says, have you read this article? No. That's what a new mean? thing that Twitter oh, yeah. does now. Really? Really? So like what Tony just did. <laughs> hey, have you actually read this or are you just looking at the clickbait title? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like before you can retweet it, it asks you that? How yes. about Jack yeah. being like, I'm fucking fed up with all this. Uh, let's just start asking. And are they going to release the poll results? Like will we at some point, <laughs> Twitter goes, uh, we found through our survey that 0.0002% of people <laughs> polled actually said they read the article <laughs> yeah. although everybody on earth which is a natural tendency when taking a poll is you give an answer that you think is the right answer so people yeah, of course say in I those polls it. all the time yeah twitter should know though me? you say yes and you didn't click on it twitter should know and be like absolutely not cancel the game. it's oh. like when you do the checkbox for um like when you no, when no one reads the agreement, the thousand-page agreement, yeah. but you have to at least open it to check the box. You just go to the bottom. Uh, the contract. <laughs> Apple, and I believe the yeah. way that was described in South Park is hopefully much different than how it actually is. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? In those agreements, because I do just agree, okay, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Have to. Isn't there a documentary called, like, Terms and Conditions or whatever? Did uh, the guy from West Virginia that ate McDonald's for nine months, nine years? Morgan where, Spurlock? Yeah, did he create it? I don't know. Seems like that would be his type of thing. Uh, yeah. Diving into investigative journalism. Uh, show's ending here in 20 seconds uh, on radio. What do you? Anything for tomorrow's Thursday Night Football Thursday, AJ, that people should look forward to? Big game. Looking forward to that one. Hell yeah. Patriots are playing the Falcons. Boom. There we go. I know. Well, this show Patriots. will be much better than this man alluded to yeah. just yeah, moments ago. Yeah, huge Wednesdays, too. We'll see you in... He and does. See you in the show. We can't even tell him see you yeah. in 21 mm -hmm. hours. That's been my new thing. <laughs> Jeez. Don't like come a, to me then. Well, it's like a math send-off. I'm real proud of my math send-off. And do it without coming to me. Damn you, AJ. Damn it. Damn you to hell. Ooh, window Slide went down. down. Good. We were on the other side. <laughs> it's like talking to your limo driver. Uh, what's yeah. that? Okay, can you send her up? <laughs> can you send it back up? Sorry, I already switched to this one. Ooh. Ooh. That one's cool. Ooh, French doors. Can you shut it? Can you oh. shut it? French doors. Uh, let's see. No, like a saloon. Whoa. Oh, oh, How about that? Oh, oh. Can that's a zoom in, zoom out. Diamond. Yeah. Oh, oh, diamond. Oh, Baseball. Circle. Oh, I love Golden that. Eye. No, okay. yeah, it was. Oh, oh there to there. there. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that's there. crazy. This show, man. <laughs> We're going to have a good one tomorrow, I bet. <laughs> I oh, wish we were on serious still, and they could, people are just listening could hear that. <laughs> Yeah, that's serious situation. I mean, it's not like seeing it much better for anyone. That's serious situation. It's an interesting one. Oh, why? What happened? I don't know. It's not like good vibes. I don't think. How many? How, they just bury how our long show is the deal? Up. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it is in the okay. area of when an extension would probably be talked about. And, you know, it's coming up. There's a little shot clock on it. Not really, I guess. We still got some time. We don't talk to anybody over there. The only people we hear from is negative to us. Uh -huh. That's really weird. Yeah, I feel like. you know, it is, it is a very it interesting is. thing. And I'm like, uh, we we love the listeners. We don't know if there's any of them. We, uh, mm -hmm. we appreciate the opportunity to be there, but we don't know anybody over there. Mm -mm. Nope. And we get 7,000 emails from the left hand, and the right hand yeah. doesn't know what's going on. Oh, there. yeah. It is a very fascinating thing. Who knows how that whole thing pans out. But now that I'm the one that's sitting at the end of the table, you know, I'm excited to hear how those conversations go. Oh, so, yeah. Sup, dude, we doing this or what? You want to extend it? We use it for nothing business-wise. We really don't see the benefit in it other than there's potentially people that listen. And those people, we appreciate. How do we, what do we do? Do we go forward here? That's, that's kind of how my thought process going in there. And uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know anybody. I don't even know who I would do that conversation with. Who this takes point. this spot if, if this isn't here? Who knows? There'll probably be a bunch of drama around that, too. I mean, Good luck. Uh-huh. No, not good luck. They'll probably do great. Remember probably the writers of South Park. You think Trey? Trey and Matt? And yep. Matt really? will get that? They don't do a Mad Dog So channel. hold on. Just, just so I get this clear. You heard me say South Park earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and it was still just cooking in there. And you were just figuring out how you could shoot your shot about the creators. <laughs> no, it just popped in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was cooking in that, in that calculator. <laughs> 
All right, let's get to some oh, <laughs> things just rattling around. Dude. That's awesome. What a take. What a take. Maybe, though. Hey, maybe. Uh, they could. The, the Book of Mormon, anything they, mm -hmm. they've made a billion yep. dollars, I think, off of that. Yep. You know? Serious, like sports Sports radio is really the only thing they have. <laughs> so, yeah. Now we're the talking. The last pillar. And we know they're sports fans because of baseball. <laughs> By the way, do we know if they're sports fans where they literally just created a game and made an incredible movie about it and know nothing else about anything? I think they know. Yeah, yeah, they know. They're big sports fans. Maybe it would be them if we were to leave. Yeah. yeah. I'm not 100% sure. Now, I don't know if Mad Dogs would be pumped no, about no. it. Probably not. I mean, they'd prop Zubin. Well, as long as they go to Mad Dog and say, they, is, they give Zubin 50 mil. For, thank you. you know. <laughs> thank you for the channel. More like 100 no. mil. And maybe in, on the. But Chris I listen, Angel. I would listen to both these shows that you're speaking yeah. of, but it's, it's a fascinating relationship. It's a very fascinating relationship, but. I mean, they have no idea who we are, what we are, why we are, how we are. They have nope. no idea. And I appreciate that, but I don't, you know, it's not necessarily at this point needed. Mm -mm. Maybe. Well, that's weird because if you go to the Super Bowl and do Radio Row, maybe. maybe. wouldn't it be a serious setup? No. Bum, 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 bum. Wouldn't they, I would assume they would want you to be like on their stage. I don't know if that's accurate. Probably, potentially, but there is... We are going Radio Row. I think we do have a pretty good setup. We've done that song and dance before, yeah, too. We serious. get there and fucking Joel Austin oh, had a goddamn <laughs> mega stage at the Super Bowl. What the hell does this guy know about football? Hey, there was Joel Osteen, th what's he doing? No, well, I don't know about Joel. He's not he letting did. anybody in the house. But, like, he, um, <laughs> he, uh, we had a desk. We had a desk that was about this big. Yeah. For four of us on the side of the side of a stage. Just big enough for Drew Brees to elbow Ty right now. It yeah, was tight. And this is where Drew accidentally hit Ty and rested it on an it. accident. I, I was where I forget you know, <laughs> that happened. But the radio row, you're right. That is an entire conversation. I don't think we are the in the serious real estate area, though, as of now. Although that conversation's <laughs> happening currently. I think we're It'll doing it, right? We should do it. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of time out there, though. I, mean, I, mean, I know. That's a lot of days. Do you have to be there the whole time? Could you go out there, like, Thursday, Friday? Well, that's. I don't know what the agreement will be for the space, you know? Because if we just say, you know, hey, can we get to space? <laughs> I don't think anybody does that. Most guys try to get out there earlier, probably. Than yeah. they, like, and listen to us. Listen to us. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to go. <laughs> we could do a cool Friday show, though. We could really wrap the week up. What's California rules like right now? Uh, now or in fact? Oh, great point. Who they'll, knows? They'll be different. It will, we, will, it will be different. Will it be? Do you I think we'll have to? They might be worse. They might be better. Maybe here. Let's let's brainstorm here. Let's go. Maybe you got. We put like an LED board and we send this feed to it. Oh. And we have, <laughs> you know, Mitt sitting there. Yeah. yeah. You know, and everybody oh. else. And we can. Yeah, that's a good idea. Man, Mitt can. Hey, come on over and sit on this yeah. massive stage mm -hmm. that they potentially want to build to be on this show that is. That would be awesome. That is not coming until Friday. I don't know. I think we that that hair dye is starting to seep into his fucking brain, dude. Mitch? Yeah. <laughs> Why? What happened? So Mitch he's, is the he's executive been acted weird lately. Mitch's the executive producer of Hammer Don, so mm -hmm. he, Tone, and Gumpy have a different relationship, I think, <laughs> than me and Mitt. But there has been some alarming uh flags that have come out of the Mitt aura yeah. as of late but i think he got hit by a dump truck like a month ago I well, mean, yeah. was an 18 -wheeler. that's true it was an 18 wheeler yeah and he, he <laughs> i mean he <laughs> still needs a new door that. <laughs> yep. on this car. pat i don't want to sidetrack it too much but just a pure ballpark how much do you think a a cow would cost if you were to purchase if you were oh, a farmer oh, oh is this 4-h yeah. no just no your standard just, cow. just a cow to mm. butcher it i have no, no idea just, just to have one i honestly could not or even guess it. just I, throw one out yeah ballpark. throw a number would you guess two hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> no, no, no. I would, I would ballpark a few hunch, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe a couple uh, thousand. Mitt said just like two a to three. Standard dairy cow goes for a hundred and sixty k. Well, why is maybe. everybody in the horse racing business? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, in the milking cow business, is that right? He was a fucking cowboy. He, he's from Utah. That's right. Uh -huh. It's yeah. not right, by the way. It's about it's five. like two to three thousand, yeah. I think, or something like that. Yeah, I, because state fairs have all those four H's. You guys got a state fair over there in Ohio? That's awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know how awesome it is. I've never really been to it. I'm sure it's good. So it stinks. It's unbelievable. So I grew up in Pittsburgh. We didn't have state fair. We had a couple community Local. festivals that took place that were very small. 
The Indiana State Fair is fucking magnificent. I mean, it is. Actually, yeah, Ohio's is very nice. It's I haven't been to it, but it's huge. Unfortunately, I think someone died on one of the rides year, five or six years ago. You're going to yep. get that, I think. I think gonna that, that is going to happen, I think, at a state That's fair. The carnies. Because the, <laughs> yep. the people that are working on the rides are the same people that travel around and That's take right. the rides uh -huh. that you have heard. Incre incredible speakers. You know, just have made a couple decisions in their life that have led them to that particular. But some of the greatest salespeople oh, yeah. of all time in those things. But it is beautiful. It is absolutely gigantic. Some of the best people watching you will ever do. I, I really love it. My wife and I, uh, we didn't get to go, but that was like almost a yearly thing. Like, hey, we're going to stay fair. We're mm -hmm. going to stay fair. Mm -hmm. You walk around, you eat all the, the incredible fried stuff, but then they have all these 4-H you got like the 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 goats and the, the don a thousand of these donkeys and there's like the fattest pig on earth Ooh. is there and they're all competing in these 4-H things and they're going around then auctions happen I've learned a lot about it I've never stuck around for the auction part but I always assumed that the cow that was uh, trotting the best around with its fat ass greased up mm -hmm. around there yeah, yeah. was going to go for a good amount of money. Mitt thought the same thing. That's yeah. probably why 200, 300,000. That's, that's <laughs> what everybody's thinking whenever you're walking yeah, around. Yeah, he's there. a real cowboy, all right. Uh -huh. yeah. Absolute buffoon. Maybe the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Too, when he said that. It's up there. Oh, yeah, wow. Go ahead and run that well. I'm from fucking Utah, dude. I was born in Utah. Oh! Dude, he's from fucking Utah, dude. That's right. There has been some alarming developments with Mitt, though. Why did he bleach his hair? He was uh, Halloween. MGK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. He had nail polish on everything too. He did. Good costume. Cool. He, he had like a uh, his girlfriend with with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And he also puked in a car too. It was real rock star. Yeah, yeah. right on my car. It was awesome. Real, real like in the car? Ace Venture out the fucking window <laughs> like a dog. Yeah. Yeah. We have a video. Of him. Do it in the car. Uh, well, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. That's Bill right. actually yeah. took care of throwing up in the car the week <laughs> after. <laughs> So, don't you worry. What the fuck? Like right in the car? You couldn't, you couldn't give you a warning to stay. Oh, oh dude, have, blame me, the have warning. Have you not heard this? Have you not heard no, this? No, oh, this not. is coming back from the Jets-Colts game. <laughs> this is coming back from the Jets-Colts game. We did got, someone poison him? Why did he puke? So, we don't, we're don't. we not 100% sure what it was. Probably Connor's driving, if I had to guess. It, no, it seems no, like he drives yeah. pretty soon. Foxy similar. had diarrhea that night. No. It was yeah. something that was in the food. Yeah, well, Connor, you know, is a terrible driver, noted, but... To leave the Colts game, you had to go all the way around. We had to drive like down a highway. Yeah. And we're defeated, by the way. We are so sad. This is the last oh, yeah. risk-free same game parlay Thursday night football, Thursday night <laughs> yes. at this point. So we are, as we're walking out, we got 50 people telling us, Hey, sorry, man. We, we so close, six yards. Like it was, it was a very devastating time. And then we hop in Connor's car, and we're driving around. We can't just get up the street to the office where we all parked because they shut down all these roads. And Bill's sitting on the hump. Okay, Bill's on the hump. I'm in the trunk. Okay, I'm sitting in the back of the trunk. You know, uh, sideways with the leg extension. And Connor's, you know, ramping over railroad tracks, trying to get home. I'm hitting my head. I'm hitting my head, obviously. And Bill just very quietly goes, "I'm a puke." Okay, and I thought I was maybe the only one that hurt him because my head is right next to Bill's head because I'm in the trunk. And then all of a sudden, Zito goes, uh, uh, Bill, Bill's going to puke or whatever. And Connor goes, what's that? And then before he could even do anything, Bill lifts out his hoodie and goes, <laughs> it is explosive puke, vomit yeah. into, his, into his hoodie. And then we pull over. There's no side. We're on a highway at this point. We pull over into the right lane, uh -huh. put all four uh, the blinkers on, you know, and he gets out. Takes the hoodie off, takes the shirt off, three to four more mm -hmm. explosive vomits, hops right back in shirtless. We fucking go about our yep. day. Question. Never so he puked in there and then he then had to take it up over his face. Uh, yeah, but I think he did actually uh, the, uh, the, the bend the over. Oh, okay. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think he did. Still, the yeah, his belly button was full of puke. It was crazy. <laughs> oh. yeah, it was. And here's the reaction from the vehicle immediately <laughs> oh, afterwards. I guess we have the video. What the fuck? Bailey! <laughs> Bailey, you're right, man. Connor is a terrible driver. <laughs> what? What the hell? Is what? It? Hey, are you puking? Are you puking? <laughs> I, I almost guys. hit my head a couple times back here. <laughs> Michael Cole goes what? Oh, Michael Cole goes <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Yeah. Hey, you're right, Bill. Yeah, you're right. Get a lot. And then I would call Trey and look so cute. Bill's the best. <laughs>
<laughs> Bill's the best, dude. <laughs> Absolute best. What a good warrior. For Bill going I will say I did like... not notice that Bill actually got back in the car with his sweatshirt. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I checked the sweatshirt. There was no puke in the sweatshirt. It was all contained in the Colts shirt. Uh, so. okay. oh, I thought we yeah. left. I wasn't going to throw still Bill reeks. under the yeah. bus that day, but I... Directly saw him keep the sweatshirt. I thought we just him. left it outside. No, yeah, I thought we too. tried to throw it away, Bill. I said, How bad did that smell? <laughs> I guess terribly. <laughs> I don't My recall. car still <laughs> smells like <laughs> shit. And now I don't know why. That is sweater. Hey, I you wouldn't think mess this with Bill. Look at away his Colts hoodie. <laughs> we told him we could order a new shirt. It wasn't a Colts hoodie. It was one of our hoodies. Yeah, it was charged to the game. This same hoodie. No! Bill! I'm not the fall. I'm a pit. I'm a pit. The worst part is I grew up such a big WWE fan. This is the first time I met Michael Cole. <laughs> I just emptied it right in front of him. <laughs> God damn That's it. Life. What it's the fuck over. happened? Oh, uh, puked all over myself. I met Michael Cole. Did you get car sick, Bill? What happened? Yes, for yeah. sure. It was the okay. fastest I'm going to puke to puke situation. I think you said that the day after. Of all time. <laughs> Ever. All, I mean, that trigger. Yeah, normally your mouth starts to water a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Try to get somewhere. I think Bill felt the watering and tried to swallow it for that normal yeah. preparation period. Yeah. And then once he f he found out that the battle was not going to be won, yeah. he tried to alert in town cry <laughs> to everybody. And it was a quick turnaround there. But, hey, Bill, I mean, kind of disgusted that you kept the hoodie yeah. because it's one of our hoodies. Yeah. Could have got you one really Could have got you one so <laughs> And there was a trash can sitting right there. Right but there. I appreciate you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Bill. Thank you, Bill. You owe me 50 bucks to clean my car, by the way. So. <laughs> well, two people puked all over your car. I'm sure you had to explain Yeah, 25, that. 25. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, are you the worst driver of all time? Why is everybody puking on and in your <laughs> Did car? Did you hit a bird? Why is there all this red <laughs> stuff on the side of your car? <laughs> That's what the car wash people told you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Like, no, it's MGK kid puked in it, actually. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you know, uh, Kourtney Kardashian's uh, husband. Yes. MGK, he was actually here just mm -hmm. a little bit ago. No. Uh, puking Connor's car <laughs> is what he did outside of the bonfire. Megan, Megan at the, Fox, dude. Uh, what's that? Travis Barker's. Oh, yeah, I apologize. They are two different people. Mm -hmm. Very similar styles. And friends, I think. Yeah, uh, definitely. Good friends. friends. A lot of this. Mm -hmm. A lot of this. A lot of this. Yeah. 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 Talking Brett Michaels? Well, in MGK, no, no. not Brett. Well, kind of, I guess. MGK actually played drummer, right, in the oh, uh, yeah. the Motley crew. Oh, yeah. And he's very, very good. The Dirt? So I apologize I mean, for that. Talking Remember that he's not allowed to do rap anymore because Eminem told him he's not allowed to anymore? No, nah, that is not what happened. That is not <laughs> happened. He explored other avenues because he is an artist. Okay. Yeah. Good actor. That was a fascinating <laughs> shot, though. Kill shot, I believe, is uh, uh -huh. the one in return. <laughs> Everybody says, hey, just don't go after Eminem. Mm -hmm. You know, that guy literally will just write seven billion rhymes about you <laughs> yeah. and unload them all. And he's proven that yeah, is did. the case every single yeah. time. <laughs> time Stats time have shown. Uh, with the holidays right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Don't you need to be comfortable, AJ? Mm -hmm. Always. Well, why don't you get some goddamn bird dogs joggers for uh, yourself? Hell yeah. yeah. Why don't you do that, AJ? These joggers. I'll get one size up. Yeah, yeah well, Smart. one or Smart. two, potentially, depending on if you have good thighs or grew up in a city with any hills at all because it is a little bit tighter and i had to go two sizes up but i have what we like to call a very thick midsection i'm not sure my body type is similar to a lot of people definitely go one size up maybe two if you got a large can mm -hmm. yeah, well bingo said. even foxy's wearing a large bingo yes. yes oh boy okay yeah that's Perfect what we're saying fit for me that's what we're saying so but what she's like mon your mannequin size you're like they oh they make clothes for exactly. fun actually yeah he walks into yeah. like h&m and every one of these stores like Abercrombie Baby Gap. that's basically what they make them all for foxy <laughs> yeah i actually got i got bullied back in the day because i couldn't fit into any abercrombie airpost or american eagle jeans because my yeah. legs were too big sure you know abercrombie just was the sizest place uh -huh. they wouldn't let any of their very beautifully beat up pants <laughs> being sold from a store that smelled so good oh, with yeah. tunes that were just so ooh, catchy. Mm -hmm. I couldn't wear any of them because it was uncomfortable. That's what we're telling you about these bird dogs joggers. If you have a big ass, go one size, maybe two up. But once you put these on and once you find your size, you're going to say these are the most comfortable joggers we've ever worn in our entire life. They come in plenty. 
different colors because you can wear them on so many different occasions. They come in khaki, what? navy, what? black, and they're what? just as comfortable as the bird dog shorts we're shipping this year. You got to get on this now. We all know supply chain is a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. What is supply chain? Mayor uh -huh. Pete's got it. Come on. I don't know what Mayor Pete Buttigieg said about supply chain. I don't know what you were referring to there. All I know is I saw a 60 Minutes piece uh, before Adele came on yeah. on CBS where uh, 60 Minutes actually interviewed every single piece of the supply chain nice. from the boat to the uh, the docks, mm -hmm. to the shippers, to the warehouses, everybody blames everybody else. Oh, no. So this is never going to everybody. <laughs> the docks are blaming the boats. <laughs> the boats are blaming the warehouses. Uh. The warehouses are blaming the workforce drivers. Jeez. Everybody, and, and I saw this and I was like, what the fuck? This is never going to be fixed. But I assume somebody will figure it out. Yeah, so for sure. Bezos. The, and I would like to let all of them know, and this is the real world stuff that we don't dive into because I don't know enough about. When you're pointing the finger, guess what? There's three pointing back. That's, That's right. right. That's right. So the supply chain from the, the shipping, the holding, the docking, the staying, the moving, the freighting. Listen, unions are all pointing fingers. There's three pointing right back at all. You figure it the fuck out. Oh, yeah. But until they figure it out, you got to get on this now. Yeah. Go to birddogs.com, enter promo code PATSBALL. That's B-I-R-D-D-O-G-S.com, promo code PATSBALL, P-A-T-S-B-A-L-L, -L, no space there, and they'll throw in a free Bird Dogs Whistle Tip football with your order. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> that was really good left-hand throw. Thank so you. fast. That was that was Carson Wentz. Caught yeah. off guard. That was Patrick Mahomes. Like mm -hmm. I was trying to throw it into the Bird Dog joggers. Oh. Yeah. Like a I think it's, do it again. Like I think it's, you got it. Do it again. Well, make it whistle though. Sir! Yes. Ah, fucking nailed it, dude. Right, Are you kidding nuggets. me? I can do a Tim Tebow impression all day, any day. Yeah. Uh, Let's see it. I, mean, you threw it a lot. I just did it. You threw it a lot better than talking? me. Did, you did. That was a very tight spiral. Yeah. And you heard a whistle too, right? Yeah. What about Tebow blocking? Can you show us how he blocks? Well, I don't think we've ever seen a successful rep, and I would like to judge him on his success and not his failure. You couldn't block just someone fall on Twitter. Off that stage. How come the internet did not put? Any good Tim Tebow Couldn't blocking? Because there weren't any. Yeah, he was he was only very good at blocking the Same devil. Same reason why you can't find mind. a good clip of him catching a fly ball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, very true, Connor. Yeah. You said blocking the devil. Mm -hmm. Tim Tebow. What is the devil? Connor? Tim Tebow does not deserve this. Okay. I love Tebow. I love Tebow. Yeah. Tim Tebow. No, no, yeah. He was dude. just singing He's on camera. He was crushing it. I love Tim Tebow. He's good He's on first sweet. take. Yeah. He is. He's very good. He's good on TV. Keep He's holding those bird dogs. Yeah, he think birddogs.com, <laughs> probably good Pat's ball, throwing a free whistle tip. Good work, boys. Hey, good work, right, boys. Hey, great right. read. Right. Hey, good work by bird dogs too, creating incredibly comfortable Thank joggers you, that you bird can wear dogs. everywhere. The they took their innovation mm -hmm. of underwearless, <laughs> built-in underwear shorts, took them to pants, dominated the entire thing. Yeah. Boom. Let's wrap up with some phone calls here, shall we? Yes, love phone calls. Yeah, they're always good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they are always good, aren't they, AJ? That's something whenever we decide to go to the calls, actually. I say I'm going to go to the calls a lot, and I do mean to, but then something comes up, and it's like, well, I'm, I apologize, caller, but we got to talk about this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that is, that is something that I do feel I can oh. get better as a host at. I don't want to cut off the callers here. Oh, really? But you... I did. We forgot to bring this up Monday and Tuesday, what? so what? I wanted what? to bring it up today. You accurately said that Kristen, Christian Pulisic would come in and win the game for the U.S., and he did. Oh, yeah. Mm, good point. So let's talk about the stupid Canadians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? So the stupid Canadians beat the Mexican national team in soccer last night in 50 degree. Negative 50 Celsius yeah. in Canada with an entire blizzard. Now all of a sudden they're sitting atop the Concafa standings for the World Cup chase because we tied Jamaica. Listen, when Christian Pulisic mm -hmm. is the focus of the team, this is just like Zion at the Pelicans. Yes. Remember when Zion was down at the Pelicans, uh, we got to protect this guy, we can't get him hurt, we got to limit his minutes. Yeah. And then finally he started, it was on national TV, and they had him get intro second or third. And it's mm -hmm. like, you, you sacks of shit down there. Put this guy, have him be intro last. This is the reason. 
reason why everybody's watching. But then once I met the team, I was like, okay, Drew Holiday is a great guy. He's the elder statesman. He'll go last, whatever. But whenever he got in, I think they told him, like, hey, you don't need to be the star. He was passing the ball. Mm -hmm. He wasn't greedy at all. He was just doing it. Once they say, hey, Christian, you're the best player on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. you're, the, you're, the, you're the greatest soccer player on the planet. Hell yeah. yeah. We need to put you know, the armband on you. We need to go ahead and feed you balls. We need to go ahead and strategize to go ahead and get that guy goals because as soon as he gets on the field, he's the guy. But instead, old Bogarden, this guy, uh -huh. is, is bringing Christian in off the bench and not putting the best team forward. We're trying to win the World <laughs> Cup around here and finally bring that World Cup Lombardi home, Gumpy. Why, why is this happening right now? And how are the stupid Canadians, Gumpy, the soccer Canadians, number one in the bracket when we were number one in the world just two days ago? Yeah. Burhalter saying that he wasn't healthy enough to start. This guy. He this is know. just like Zion. Hey, clear the ass, Burr Halter. You stink, Greg. And if Eric Winona, <laughs> you know, <laughs> great soccer player, guy wants to continue to attack us who's trying to promote the game. Come That's on. all we're trying to do. Trying to promote the game and promote, promote the best player in the world. Let me Exactly. <clears throat> Let me tell you how we get more eyes on your game, Winona. You said I'm allowed to call you, Winona? Hey, Winalda. What? If we tell the world, most, you know, our world, the United States of the world, if you tell the United States that we have the team that's the best in the world and we have the best player in the world, maybe somebody will accidentally turn the game on. How about that? that would be pretty sweet, wouldn't it? Well, and it's funny that you bring up the Zion comparison because it does worry me that he goes back overseas and starts eating fish and chips and shows up right before the World much. Cup weighing 450 nah, pounds nah, and we have nah. another Zion. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. What you just did right there. Not on this show. Well, I, hey, I don't want it to happen. I'm just saying, Whoa. God damn, I can almost see it happening in front of my eyes. Come on, on dude. There are a couple communities of fandoms mm -hmm. that get very upset. The soccer community does not necessarily love our coverage. What? Yeah, I can, I can attest to it. I've been in there a couple times. It is never good. It's fair. I think we, we call it how we see it. We have the best soccer player to ever play soccer in yes. Christian Pulisic, okay? He was Is he really though? Is that like like yes. does everybody think that? What? <laughs> yes, I'm asking a question as somebody that doesn't watch much soccer. I'm asking you a question. Well, you should watch. And then as soon as you watch, you'll be like, oh, Thank that you. fucking guy's the greatest soccer player of all time. Our big fours never played together. Not one time. Not one time. And they're undefeated. We got four? Yeah. yeah. That's what awesome. Pulisic. And then, by the way, they all grew up over in, in um, you know, we we sent them behind enemy lines to learn how right. we do this thing. Uh -huh. We have a massive country. We invest heavily in soccer. There is enough people playing soccer that we should be able to be great at soccer on the world stage. And then finally somebody said, fuck, ship our guys over there. Yeah. Have them grow up over here. It doesn't matter if they, you know anything about the American culture. Let's just learn how we went. Reina's over there, yep. Polisic's uh -huh. over there. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah, Kenny's over what? there. The yes. boys are over there. Yeah. There's people on our team now that are gonna bring the soccer Lombardi home. But why, right. why well, we said. send them over there, we got Winalda here to teach him. Well, Winalda knows. Did any well, of these guys play college soccer here? No! no. no. That is not how, you, that is no. Not no. how soccer works. They're all 18 years dude. old, dude. That's not how soccer works, and that's what we had to learn. The American soccer players were doing too much American shit, you know, like enjoying high it's like, school. It's like hockey, Ben. So they go yes. and they play at these yes. schools, but they're doing it overseas. Yeah. yeah, and by the way, hockey, pretty European as well, right? I mean, that oh, yeah. seems to be the European all model. So like, yeah. And they're all young, and that's why in 2026, on U.S. soil, it's coming up. We're, we're going back to back. Back to you back. Throw yeah, back to back. Qatar? Yeah, yeah, back what? to back. You throw in the towel? No, 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 no. no, no. Listen, we're going back to back, dude. Yeah, Don't back you even back. think about trying to do that. <laughs> back to back. 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 We got one. Well, how about you, dude? We'll You're going to root for Canada or England in 2022. Yeah. Oh. Who did you root for in, in the Euros, Tony? What did he say? Who did you root for in the Euros? Well, there's only one team available in the Euros because you guys are scared of the United States playing no, in the Euros, no. and you wouldn't even put your pink slips up against don't us. Even, don't even let him take credit for that. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah he bet on Slovakia. Yeah. Turkey. Uh, He's a big Turkey First guy. off, He's gambling, gambling is much different than rooting, and we all know that, okay? Don't be marks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use, believe, I use it. speaking of Mark, Mark Madden, I think, is coming on. What? Oh, super genius. What? What's he been up to? Uh, I haven't, I, we, we haven't had him on. Well, listen, he, <laughs> I get all the, I'll get like a tweet 
He's banned. And that he's shadow banned. He's banned. Him. Mark, I wish I had enough time and energy to shadow ban people from the show. I just, this seems like the perfect thing for Mark to talk about. And I apologize, obviously, for not having him on enough. But with a Boston group buying the Pittsburgh Penguins, <laughs> who also own Tottenham, which is his team. Mm, if you. Yeah. And Roush Keselowski racing. Yeah, so. it's it's perfect thing to talk to him about. <laughs> and the Penguins. So it's great to have him on tomorrow. We'll talk about it, but we will talk to him about soccer because he pays attention. And when the soccer Lombardi comes home in Qatar, uh -huh. I, I mean, I just don't know what the world's going to do. You think the world's going to quit the game of soccer? They're not going like to like it. Turn their eyes on the cricket or it's something gonna be stupid. It. Soccer's going to take over the NFL as the number one sport probably. No, no, no. no NFL's no, no, no. Actually, NFL's going to take over soccer over there probably whenever. Yeah, yeah. when the uh, fucking NFL team comes to Dusseldorf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Because <laughs> well, yeah. Dusseldorf is real. <laughs> perfect. <You're> right. <laughs> What's the name? What's the like team name, though, Ty? Big Dumb Dorf. Fucking okay. Defenders. Yeah. Yeah. Dusseldorf yeah. Defenders. That's pretty good. Yeah. Big old shield on the chest. Oh, my God. Anyways, I can't wait for us to win the fucking... You know what I mean? Lord oh, Stanley's yeah. soccer There's cup. 700 tournaments. Like, which one do you yeah. care? We won them all. Yeah. We won them all. Every single we won, won, won them all. About, are you mad about the U.S.'s power rankings right now? That's why you're all Well, hurt? the U.S. power rankings aren't the Dan Zeus power rankings, Boom. so it's hard for me to take it very seriously. What about the Moz? Sure. Are they the Moz power rankings? I don't know if oh, Moz, Moz is doing is any problem. soccer. I don't know if Moz is doing any soccer rankings. Maybe. I know Winalda's not, but I would like Winalda to maybe start doing that. Who the hell is Winalda? You know. Oh, uh, you know who Eric Winalda is, dude. Come on. He was a five tool player in his day. He yeah, attacked. he was. He's a hell of a soccer player. None of them were any coach. sharp. He attacked this show pretty heavily. He's not he was not what? a fan of our coverage of the of the world's game. Is he a coach? Is he a TV person? Who is he? I think he He's, uh, I think he's a media person. A former player, though. I've seen Get him. Twelman on. Twelman's great. We'll it's Twelman, you prick. Have some respect for the New England Revolution, please. There's no ER. Taylor Twelman. <laughs> Damn it. Listen, we do not mean to be this dumb. This Are you sure? Because he's awesome on TV, by the way. Yeah, I agree. I'm sure. I agree. I'm going to check it. I think there's an ER in there. <laughs> My favorite player growing well, up. Well, now they think like you guys mess up Tony Mioli. When all is a coach. No, we don't whoa, mess up. Whoa. You mess up. It, it? You, you got to put the eye in No, it's Miola. <laughs> you got to put the eye It's Tony Miola. I'd well, like if we called you we'll AJ see. Hawker. Yeah. Yeah, how about that? Oh, oh, that's yeah. Whatever you want. That's fine. Hawker 9. Nah, we would oh, never shit on Pistol. Great playing the Hawker. That's where I knew. Hawker playing is a great playing. The Las Vegas Lights FC coach Eric Winaldo fired for rules violation. Oh, Gina! We're not getting into this. He's in the we're national. Not, not dude, this. he's in the national soccer. Hold on, dude. He's when trying to happen? win. Oh yeah, please. Oh, so he's the Pete Rose of soccer. Copy. What is the? What is your problem? He, that's not what happened. Jeez, Louise, dude. We're not a. This is supposed to be a positive on, thing. Come on, yeah, well, he's know he's, oh, come on. I know he's right. cheating. He's in the Hall of Fame, dude. Oh, he should be in the Hall of Shame. No, no, no. no, no, no. He's got when all the talks football on Sirius XM FC. That's what I'm talking Feels about. Feels like he's the Balco of the I love MLS. That guy. No, that ain't. He just probably uh, paid too much money to his players. He respected too much. If I had to guess, I respect Can't that. Do. Yeah. Anyways, Jay's Louise. What did he do? Why'd you bring up the soccer? You, you said I don't want to change the subject, but let's go ahead and just go into a soccer conversation. I I was trying to avoid taking phone calls. Uh, <laughs> I would say, Pat, didn't they tell you? Like, I feel like from the callers that call into the show, I would say 90 to 95 percent of them should probably have their own show on series. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. I'm on your side here. I think we have a much higher quality call than a lot of the other shows. I'll yeah. I'll be in a rental car. I really don't know. You know, I'll be in a rental. <laughs> I'll be in a rental car and they'll have like local sports on or whatever, like an AM channel on. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want to connect to Bluetooth, which becomes an entire process with my phone, I update my phone and somehow it remains the worst one out of everybody's. I don't know how that happens Wild. all the time. It makes no sense to me. But I hear some of the callers on other shows. I'm thankful for our callers versus what Thank I hear on some callers. other shows. Yeah. Me the too. other shows just let them run. They let the callers take over the show and just go on on diatribes and moronic rants and every, anything and everything. Oh, uh, that's why I did for uh, one caller named uh, Aaron Rodgers, they said. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> one caller. We had one caller that did that. Uh... Let's go to Bill in Washington. Uh-oh. Well, Bill, what's going Bill. on, dude? Oh, no, Bill. Look at that. Oh, no, Bill. Bill. You don't say. Oh, Hello? Bill! 
How you doing, William? Oh, sorry, guys. I was stepped outside for a second. Just taking a shit. Oh, that's all right. Hey, don't uh, worry, buddy. How you doing? Hey, keep, keep it moving. moving. Hey, um, I, like I was just calling because I wanted to see what you guys thought about the Niners' chances of making the playoffs since the remaining schedule that we have is a combined 27 and 37, oh. and we only play two teams with an above 500 record, and only one of those is the Titans, who is week 16, and they could be resting everybody. So theoretically, oh. we could win out. Oh, Bill, I like where your head's at. And I will say this. The NFC West is obviously going to be a dogfight. Yeah. All right. Cardinals sitting at eight and two. Rams at seven and three. The Niners' best record can be what? Uh, 12 and five. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. That can be their best record. Let's assume the Cardinals are going to get there. Let's assume the Rams are going to get there if they can figure it out. So they would have to defeat every other second place team uh, in the rest of the NFC. It's going to be tough. But if you get 12 wins in our world, you're going to make it into the playoffs. Yeah. With that being said, I did not know that they were going to come onto the field with three people carrying the largest boom boxes I've seen in 30 to 40 years. I didn't know they were going to be dancing on their way out to play the Rams. I didn't know the team was going to look like the Philadelphia Eagles team meeting two days before the NFC Championship. They seem to be very loose. I think they've hit their point where they know that it's going to be a long haul. Maybe there's no more fucks to give. There's been a lot of conversation outside of that building about them being dead. If I would have seen this video of them going out to play the Rams, I would have bet on them immediately. Yeah. Boombox, camaraderie, confidence, and it feels like a freedom that it should be able to propel them to some success. Will they be able to keep it going for the rest of the season? TBD. I liked seeing that video, though, AJ. That's my first time seeing that. Is that Trent Williams leading everybody yeah, out? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Right, good move. Smart move. I'd put him out first, too. Yeah, first okay. one out the bus. Yeah, please. Scary human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know about that. I wonder how that came to be. Like, who who came up with the idea? Who ran it by Shanahan? How it worked? Yeah, and it, there's lights there. It mm-hmm. feels like this is an entire show. Look, what if, the, what if Jimmy's back there? What if Jimmy just see he is. all the way out to the Hold front? on, I see Jimmy. He's uh, third row, I think. I think he's I third row when they turn the corner. But this is something, and this goes to the point that we've talked about today a lot, about the camaraderie of a team. Right. You know, the camaraderie mm-hmm. of a team. If you can see a team like this, it's, okay, this team's going to win. That, yeah. that is just how I honestly feel. I'm sure it's not like 100% of the time, but this is a great sign of what's happening behind closed doors when there could have been massive amounts of, you know, turmoil or drama. Finger that, pointing, yeah. finger pointing. Oh, well, if the offense would score points, then we wouldn't have to be on the field. So, like, yeah, that stuff usually happens. Trey Lance, Jimmy G, mm-hmm. uh, Shanahan's worse than Nag. I mean, it was just – that was all of that. So, that team doing that, I think, was a big indicator, and I didn't see it until after I – Hammered everything on the Rams. Oh, damn it. Everything on the Rams. What's that, Tom? For the NFC, let's assume. We can assume, right, Packers, Cards, Cowboys, Bucks, Rams. They get in the playoffs. They all have – they're all good right now. But then six and seven seed right now have five wins. That's Saints and Panthers. And then the Vikings, Niners, Falcons, Eagles all have four wins. Like, they're – Close. Tight everyone, race. Everyone's still in it. And with the way the yeah. season has been going with some teams showing up and not showing up, there might be – because remember, with 17 weeks, that means an extended week of teams not having a yeah. fucking shot, right? Mm-hmm. If, and you those, get, if you get 10 wins, are you in? No. No, I think you got to go 11. Yeah, probably. You know? Last year, if you had 10, you didn't get in. Colts were the last year, and they were 11-5. and five. So that might even be 12. Yeah, everybody's mm-hmm. alive. You're right, though. There's so many teams alive still. Yeah. Well, and that's the – even when teams are dead, they steal wins mm-hmm. somehow. And there, there's like those last four – Normally, it's like three weeks, I guess, when teams know they have no chance. Four weeks, maybe, for some teams. Like, hey, we have no shot in this thing. And I guess there was some head coaches in the NFL that even though their team did have a chance, they were telling their team, we got no chance. There's an extended week of that as well. How will that affect teams? And he talked about the Titans resting that last week. That also potentially plays into it, especially if a playoff berth is in there. The 17-game season will affect some things. And a lot of it's the stats on when you're dead, how you're dead. And I guess we just kind of have to wait and see how it all plays out. Hey, if the Niners didn't win that game, do you think we would have seen that video? No. Oh, no. Because then you're like, oh, look at these. Like, These guys are clowns. Look what they're doing. They got <laughs> rocked by 40. Yeah, because the NFL released that. 
right? I think that was uh-huh. NFL Films that put that out. And the NFL Films probably tries to pick and choose on how to embarrass people, aside from the I'm seeing ghosts thing that slipped out. Yeah, Yikes. still is. Yeah, it seems like it, he is a haunted individual. Uh-huh. You know, they say some people, just spirits follow him. Yeah. Sam Darnold seems to have spirits around him at all times. Mm-hmm. He's like the uh, angels with that uh, in the outfit. In the outfit. Yeah. But it's the opposite. It's Joseph not angels Gordon. helping. It's actually ghosts hurt. Hey, you stink, man. Yeah, it's the ghosts because they put on the, the jersey of the other team uh-huh. and make him think that the players are somewhere where they're not, and then he throws it right to where they are every time. Mm-hmm. Tough playing ghosts. against 17, 18 guys every week. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, we, I mean, maybe even nineteen twenty, depending upon what city he goes to that's, with how many ghosts are potentially available. That's true. So maybe he should be a starter going forward. No, because the ghosts, they're never helping him. Okay. Well, how do we? Let's get the ghost to help him, man. Well, that's he's gonna have to figure that out. Ghostbusters <laughs> coming out, <laughs> coming out soon. They're coming out soon. <laughs> it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, it is. It's probably gonna be real good. I saw Kelsey's commercial with that. That's a good way to promote a movie. I love Kelsey. Yeah, he's a man. What do you have? A gun? A little ant gun? He was Ghostbusters. He and Paul Rudd. I think. Yeah, Paul Rudd's in it. And yeah, the kid from Stranger Things. Ant Ant Man is right. Paul Rudd. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. That gun was not an Ant Man gun. No. Mm-mm. Oh. Noisy. It's a Ghostbusters gun. I thought it was an ant gun. You hit it and boom. You, you, go, it. you go tiny? Yeah. No. Nah. Did you see Ant-Man? He's got a button for that. No way you did. You Obviously. seen Ant-Man. You, you get it. <laughs> You're you talking mean? about how much you loved it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I fucking love it. He's so small, man. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets massive. Oh, there's power. In... What? I didn't it's know. It's like, honey, I shrunk the kids. You were like, I love Michael Douglas' his Ant- performance. Yeah. Boom. Old Mikey Doug. When, what Wall he did Street. in Ant-Man, people, not enough people are talking about. That's a good point. Exactly. Exactly. What uh, what was Ant Man in just the other day? I seen with Will Ferrell. He's yeah, in uh, Shrink on. Next Door, on Apple TV. I did fall asleep five times during that one. Oh, you yeah. tried? I tried. Yeah, I got through a couple episodes. Did you finish Red Nose? I haven't got the Red Nose yet. Uh, I heard. It, I heard it's okay. really really bad. I heard Dope Sick is good. It's oh very yeah, good. it's Connors. Oh, very very good. good. I'll finish Red Notice on Saturday. That's that's what me and Sam do on Saturdays. Next. And I'll also watch the rest of the uh, Shrink Next Door. It's amazing that that, that got okay. Oh yeah, it's pretty crazy. There is, it's an incredible story, but there is that is just two people having conversations, basically. Yeah, I don't know how they really made it like a comedy genre. It feels more like a drama before a comedy. It, it is a dramedy, though. Yeah, exactly, a dramedy. Yes. Don't, hey, didn't you guys? Ty would know this. Ty didn't Michael Douglas uh, allegedly say he. Got throat cancer from uh, oral sex. Smoking. Oh. Yes, that is allegedly <laughs> that is part of how he got smoking. Throat I thought he was nah, smoking. eating though. pussy. That's what he said. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> too much. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he was fucking eating cigs too, but apparently eating a lot of pussy as well. Conalingus. Michael Doug. Yeah. Doug? Yeah. Catherine Zeta Jones. Catherine Zeta Jones. Just. It was his wife. Yeah. It was. It's, it's, it's a love story, basically. That's cool. Catherine Zeta Jones is from Entrapment. Yes. Mm-hmm. Shark Tale. Sean Connery. Yes. Yes. That Ocean's ha- 12. That, Boom. That hallway. Ocean's 12. Great movie. Yeah. yeah. She is the old dude's daughter who Brad Pitt takes to see her father at the end. Oh, in the beach. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know all these people. Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. Ant-Man kind of tied it all together. Yeah. That's right. Good movie. Let's go to the fence. Three, You've three. seen the movie posters for Ant-Man, too. They're pretty cool. Yeah, I have seen the pictures for him. Yeah. I've seen people tweet about Paul it. Rudd's uh-huh. the man. I love Paul Rudd. He's got he's he sexiest man. man alive this year, right? He is. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. He was. See, look, there he is, massive Ant Man, not a tiny. Oh, so that's not in like one. Oh, he's taking up a full river. Is he walking across a river? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Man, think about how good that had to feel as an ant. You know, just finally getting to the size you can just walk across a fucking river. Dude. Yeah. Does that is this something like he ate his spinach and this happened or? And it's where he just does the opposite of the shrink. He thing. hits a button. Oh, yeah. he knew that this happened, or is yeah. this his first time? No, he knew this was happening. Oh, so he was always going real big to real small. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, the well, he, was going, he also goes in the middle, too. Yeah, he goes normal to small. Wait, then, in the costume or just as in a In the ring? costume, in the costume. you got to be in the, in the ant suit. Do they show him? A, does he, is he an ant when he is small, or is he no, a small no, human? No, he's just the size no, of a human. Yeah, size yeah. of an ant. And oh, so like, he doesn't have weird-looking no, legs. No. no. He rides ants. He talks to ants and shit. How do the ants do? The ants are actually very efficient. Exactly. They yeah. can carry things that yeah. are... Way too large. That's right. 100 times their body weight. Strongest animal. Wow. Mm-hmm. Do they just go to the queen, too, like the bees? Yes. They go to him. Mm-hmm. Really, the ant. Because yeah. he's kind of the king. Paul Rudd. The, the man? Yeah. yeah. The ant man? Mm-hmm. King of the ants. How about when he gets real big? they not get scared they're going to get stepped on? <laughs> no, because they talk, and he's like, I'm not going to How's he not? jeez. Oh, is that a bee? No, yeah, that's it's an a ant. flying it's ant. ant. Where? There's the, right what, there. And the one next to him is the wasp. That's his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Ant-Man d- dates Wasp Woman? Yeah, yeah, Ant-Man in the Wasp. 
So yeah, you remember the movie? Wait, who's riding the <laughs> Ant Ant Man's riding? <laughs> the wasp can obviously fly, I you watched, idiot. Yeah. I watched this movie. I love this movie. Yeah. I, I didn't know there's flying ants. We have flying oh, ants oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. the world I'm in right now. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Where do they go? They were around. They fly. <laughs> You've seen them. They I'll probably went away. south for you know. They always end up on your screen door for some reason. It's like the cockroaches that can fly. Cockroaches, cockroaches can fly. Can fly? Ah. Some of them. Yeah, no, those are a, land animals. More of a hover, you, kind of goofy, see? like a peacock. Yeah, and man, like the fainting one. goats. Hey, those things yeah, can those climb things. trees. Yeah. yeah, can they? Oh, yeah. Hey, you should, yeah. hey the, the Coliseum's going to be uh, fenced, right? Igloo, yeah. Come on. What's some animals out there to, to, you know, you don't have to eat the weeds? That'd be sick. Like oh yeah, like the big green. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, like four minutes. Let those two hundred thousand dollar cows just yes. move along. Yes, bingo. <laughs> Thank you, man. Get a chocolate milk one too. All right. Oh, yeah, I could go for some time. You know that that challenge where they say you couldn't drink a gallon of milk or two ten gallons? minutes? Yep. Yeah, uh, and keep it and down in an hour. Mm -hmm. In an right. hour, I thought yeah. it was ten minutes. No, no. Well, that would be absurd. Uh, you someone can't do that. pranked me very good. Though. I did. I tried it in ch uh, chocolate milk. Oh Ooh. yeah. Because I I love chocolate milk. I enjoy. I was on like a chocolate Maybe milk kick. Turners? Uh, I don't think it was. Turner's in chocolate Morgan. milk? Oh, they got great, great chocolate milk. I bet. They do it all. With the iced tea. Oh, right? it was so good. But I puked that up so good. That That's the best puke that I've ever had. The cold, cold really? chocolate milk backup. Cold oh, pukes yeah. are all time. All time. I wasn't able to accomplish the feat that I thought I was able to do, though. We just drank that thing down and yeah. ordered it in. I tried like a very cold water one time and then smoked a cig and I puked like, immediately. <laughs> and it was like. Was it the cig that got you? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Is that what happened in Bailey, you think, in the back of your car? Or was it your driving? Maybe you puked because you were driving yourself? Uh, no, I never, I've never puked while I was driving before, actually. But I think Bailey Congrats. puked because he had like 74 uh, cheeseburger sliders. <laughs> 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 Bailey didn't deserve that. AJ, you puked while you're driving? Is that why you said congrats? No, I never Now you sleep, you, you almost start fires, you try to burn places down while you drive. You've never puked while you've driven. I assume you're driving with you is probably oh a lot of. Oh, my God. Oh, that, that, no, that, it's not. Right I've heard I was in traffic in New York. That foot right foot. That foot right foot. That foot right foot. That foot right foot. That I foot. feather that brake so nice. Like my brakes probably will last 100 years how I use them. Yeah. I tried yesterday. Actually, I thought of you while I was driving home because yep. I had an itch. Your big, dumb left foot didn't work? Whoa. Excuse the, me. My left thing? foot, although was not very impressive in my NFL career, it was just a peg. Basically, hey, don't get in the fucking way. Why are you hurting right now? Okay, you are doing nothing. You are along for the ride. This left foot is talented. You give me a soccer ball. You give me a football. I'll be able to kick with it, but it just ain't worth the fuck. It is, it is good. I could feather it a little bit, but I just don't know how – so you just drive and the, the brake lights are on the entire time? Never. I don't touch the my, my foot only my left foot only comes up off the ground if I'm gonna be stopping. I, I don't sit there and hover over the brake. So this is you literally operate like it's a clutch. Like you have that thing waiting waiting and then ah it's coming over there. Yeah. So why, do you do you think the right one's just like look you see that? Look at this. Look at that. It's, I don't that's too far for me to travel. I can't reach the brake. Look what you and have then to you'll do. be on the gas and the brake at the same time. With your what? heel will be on the gas and your no. toe will be on the Oh, my God. Do you drive with your heel on the fucking pedal? No, my heel's on the ground, like everybody else, I would assume. And then my, you know, that's how it works, man. So dumb. It's possible his ankle is configured in a way such as his fingers that may make that sure. difficult for him. Oh, it's like a super strain on a lot of yeah. ligaments oh, to even okay. get from the gas pedal to the brake right over there. So he'd well, rather yeah, I mean, take the like, hammock. my ham foot left and right does not feel good. Yeah. You'd rather ham hawk it from all the way over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, let me go ahead and put this thing back down. Let me go ahead and lift it up. <laughs> all right. And let me put it back down. That's crazy you do that. There's a lot of you, though. Like, not a majority. Nowhere near a majority of people do this. But I've seen a lot of people come out in support of you. And I yeah. have never been more scared to hop on my motorcycle and ride around. It's terrifying. It's, it's very scary. Who thing. taught these people? Who taught you how to drive? Yeah, who teaches you to be a narcoleptic two-footed driver? Wexner. <laughs> I learned how to drive. My first car was a stick, so that I was always oh, using two feet for that. Obviously, so that makes no sense. That makes it that that, that makes it almost even no, worse. It was just seamless. I got out of the stick. It was just seamless. I'm like, oh, I, I'm bored here. I need something to do, so I need to use my left foot. <laughs> my first car that I learned on was uh, old Tim had a uh, a stick as well, manual, and uh, it's obviously. You know, I also floated some gears in the truck whenever it was mm -hmm. back in the day. So uh, I had uh, that's real driving what or about whatever. The Jake brake. Well, I can work the Jake brake a little, but you need that air brake. But that some bitch get real loud when it's coming down two eighty six there about night. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the um, 
I don't know how. It's crazy. You probably just, do you just, you just get in numerous accidents? Like you, like you think your car no, insurance has no. any idea that you do this? You think they're like, you oh, should not no. be doing well, this? Yeah, I actually get a, I get a big discount because of it. Yeah, yeah he has an Ohio State Legends license car plate. insurance no and rules. license plate. I forgot about so that. So he crashes into people. He says, I'm BJ Hawk, though. I played, I'm a Buckeye. And they let him go. Well, if you do recall, when I got pulled over <laughs> in Ohio, yeah. yeah, they actually said, if you were a Buckeye, we would have drove you home. Exactly. I There's mean, no way. They Legit straight face. What is it, 1976? <laughs> like, there's not a thing. That's Ohio. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is in Ohio. Is it not? It is not. Not in my experience, no. That's oh, bullshit. Sure, you dude. got max penalty? Did you get to sit down on the side of the road, handcuffed, while they asked you why you were driving where you were driving in a Cadillac Escalade on 24s that it's tinted from Indiana to Ohio? And you say, well, I actually got suspended. From what? My job. What's your job? I'm in the NFL. Why'd you get suspended? Well, I got arrested. When? Last week. You got arrested last week? Oh, we'll look into that. Okay. All right. And there, how many guns and drugs do you have in the back of this Escalade here? None. Are you sure? We got a tip that there is uh, guns and drugs in here. None. Okay, thank you. Sit here while we go Google, I guess. Is that what they did? They just fucking Googled this entire Probably. thing? Probably. And then they came back out and said, if you're a Buckeye, we would just drove you home last week. It's crazy that that's what you got arrested for. You want an escort out of the county? No, I'm just going my way. Okay, sounds good. 30 minutes. I assume... Whichever Escalade on 24s that had all of the guns and drugs, because it was built to house that original Escalade back in the day was just one so nice. massive open thing. They've changed it completely. Mm -hmm. They've ruined it almost. But I assume there was a lot of guns and drugs that could have been there, or they just completely lied and uh, just wanted to pull me over. <laughs> yeah. don't, be don't believe a word he was saying. He Last time he was in here, um, when you were in California, he said that he got pulled over recently. And he just rolled down his window and he looked at the officer and said, get you one of these. And it was the Buckeye <laughs> National Championship yeah. ring. And they said, sorry, sorry, Mr. Hawk. Yeah. And, and I, I, he told me the story before. And the way he told it to me is not only that, he also, he said, how about this pinky iron this at the, at the shoe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know what I mean? I broke this at the shoe. And he was like, you're right, sir. Sorry about that. Go ahead and fall asleep anytime you want to die. He told me in the bathroom that he went to this really nice steakhouse one time, and they claimed they were out of tables, but he said, I'm AJ Hawk, Ohio State. Get you one of these. They, they carried a table to yeah. the front of the band. There was a big jazz band playing and yeah. made a table for him. Yeah, on the at the window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like good fellas. I would legit put myself in prison for a year before I would ever try to tell someone, oh, do you know who I am? <laughs> Go to prison, man. How about those, hey, those cards the NFL gave? Those cards the NFL gave out, do you remember that when you were an NFLPA member? It was the actual yeah. card. Like, you actually had an NFL card now. They, they created yeah. it as a thing. And when they came and presented it as this big thing, like, if you're ever at a restaurant or uh, nightclubs, you can go ahead and use this, and, and there, it'll have benefits. And everybody I was sitting around was like, could you imagine me, me, walking up? Hey, I'm in fucking NFL, dude. Let me in this. Like, I don't to, know. Like, to the host, to the hostess at a restaurant or something, you slip, like, a $2 in your NFL card. I, there's people that do that, I guess. I guess there is people oh, that. Yeah, there is people that do that. I never saw how that was a productive or a good thing because now you're going in there targeted like okay they know this guy has a lot of money first of all so you're being labeled i wanted the complete opposite i, I wanted people to think my dad was wealthy and i had his credit card i'm just a douchebag son here trying to have a good time those there was guys though i guess that you know like they actually got in trouble because they introduced themselves as NFL. Hey, I'm in the NFL, this whole thing. And then they get in trouble 20 minutes later. And it's like, boop, all right, NFL player arrested. Got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that mean, seemed to be a massive backfire there whenever that became. If I had to take a guess, I know who in the NFL used that card more than anyone else by, by a billion. Oh, jeez. I who? know you're who? taking a shot. Huh? I don't know. Me neither. I you didn't know. He was come a kicker on. and he wore gloves. No, no. What's it rhyme? What's it rhyme with? No, 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 no. no. Who, who, who? He calls games on CBS. I oh Jesus! Oh, that's not everybody who, that knew is. Jay Feely was in the NFL. <laughs> that's not who I expected. Everybody knew. But I did not expect a Jay Feely shot. I, I think I'm past. I'm, I think I'm past it with Jay Feely. The. Uh... No, yeah. I'm just saying, like he definitely used it more than anyone. AJ told us uh, <laughs> since Bob Carpenter saved uh, college football that people actually salute him in part of the Star Spangled Banner at every right, and, restaurant. And we will to. salute everybody goodbye after that. I mean, it, it is act it is true. No, legitimately, yeah. I was because I was at that cult charity thing they had. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy. Every time Bob went up there in his Tarzan kit yeah. with his legs out and everything, and he is absolutely stacked. As he ran to grab the microphone too. <laughs> 
bless everybody. Honestly, yeah. every time he got up there randomly, nobody expected it. As he was running up there, everybody. Attend! And then as he ran by, like the people that were lined up, they were like, oh, and then H, I, I, and then they just repeated it as he ran by like 10 people. I, 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 he just ran by. Yeah. That's what happens in a while. It wasn't awesome. like when Tony Perkins was running down the aisles. Yeah, exactly. Bob would love that, honestly. Uh, he would really thrive in that environment. Come on, guys. Come on, do it. Attend hard. <laughs> He's the best. Uh, as are you, AJ, and the guests, and everybody that watches this. Thank you so much. Uh, Hammer dines in about 10, 15 minutes. They'll talk about gambling. I don't know what they're going to go with. College basketball, I think, has been very good to Gumpy. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hell yeah. Gumpy's unbelievable. He goes from one heater to another. It's crazy. And it just is. It's been fantastic to profit off of. Tone Diggs is hot, I assume. Mitt is doing his thing. He's from Utah. They'll have all the breakdown on where we should be making money from FanDuel in 15 minutes. We're back tomorrow at noon. And then on Friday, we'll go 11 to 2. Is that cool with you, AJ? Are you good going early? Yeah, I can come on at 12 if that works. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that'll be amazing. We appreciate you. All right, see you, everybody. See you, Mignogna. Bye.